Cool. Yeah, I'm coming in fine. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, everybody oh. is coming in fine. And welcome, everybody, to another, another episode of the BTR stream, Sewing Discourse, with James Healy, a.k.a. MK Ultra Money, founder, creator, host, co-host of the uh, MK Ultra Money podcast, premiering. When oh, is it premiering? Fuck. This is I what just, happens. We have to close all these windows. We have to make sure that all these windows are closed. That was me. That it, not, it was you this time. You did it. Okay. It was not me. And my audio, by the way, it should be Jeez. fine. It should mm -hmm. be beautiful. It is much different from before. Thanks to James. He had the balls to call out my audio problems in the earlier streams. So I really appreciate that, man. Anyway. Anyway, guys, all the newcomers who are here, don't forget to subscribe right now to the Break the Rules stream. We and bring people coomers. together. And you coomers, exactly. We bring people together from all different parts of this uh, world that we're in for the sake of uh, learning more about each other and getting along and peace. It's all about peace over here. It's all about peace and love and family. Love and uh, anyway, anyway, uh, getting down to business, we have a lot of great guests here tonight. We have some uh, newcomers as well. We have Beardson, a.k.a. Cool Hetero Gamer. Welcome, Beardson. Thank you so much for coming in. And we have the Terrence, a wonderful artist and Matt Bella oh, Mente. Bella Mente. Bella. Mwah. So, oh, up, guys? <laughs> thank you so much for coming in, guys. And as far as shilling, I want to do a little bit of shilling in the very beginning for the newcomers. So, Terrence, you've got really beautiful artwork that I want to promote. So, guys, oh, go you. to Terrence's site, which I'm linking to right over here, Sonic Night 007. So, go there and what, look at all of his what, uh, beautiful artwork. Wait, yeah, yeah, post his Instagram. That's where... Uh... That's where he mainly yeah. posts on his Twitter. That's okay, a... you post his Instagram. This is a new computer. I did not log into Instagram yet, so you do it. Anyway, uh, James, MK yeah. Ultra Money, some shilling to start to start this thing off with. Well, so first, go let, to let us. me pull up uh, Terrence's Instagram so I can properly shill that. That is not Ter Terrence. What's your Instagram? It's I just the, the Terrence 94. Oh, Terrence 94. I typed in the Terrence and I got some fucking bald dude. <laughs> There we well, go. Well, I'm not. I'm not bald. Sounds about right. Yeah. There we go. Hold on. There's Terrence's yet. Instagram. Excellent. And we are gonna have Noah Hugbox coming in later on today as well. So I'm looking forward oh. to that. So anyway, guys, we are here for the man of the hour, James MK Ultra Money, and uh, just let's start off by saying, like, James, why are you here, where you are right now, doing what you're doing? How did all this start, buddy? How did I get here is a great question. Uh, uh, I don't even. I still don't even know how I got here. I still don't even know how I got onto this stream because <laughs> I remember asking you that a few months ago. I'm like, why did you reach out to me? How did you find me? And you didn't even fucking remember. Um, so there's that. How did I get uh, to podcasting? Uh, well, that was something me and Matt were talking about for years prior to starting. And we would just get drunk together. And we would always be like, dude, we got to start a podcast. And uh, that's how every successful podcast starts, right? It's yeah. Two guys getting drunk together. And it's like the world needs to hear what we have to say. Yeah, pretty much. I mean, you need to have more Italian people of color uh, expressing their opinions online because we just have too many white folk. Amen. Um, Amen. Exactly. That are doing it. So uh, Italian pride. And yes. uh, you know, your last name, you know, your last name is Healy, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. All right, yeah, I'm just making sure. I'm yeah, making yeah, sure you know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm, just, I'm just keeping you in check. He's a yep, wonder yep. bread. He's a munchie cake, as we call it. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Um, yeah. That's what we're here for. And then it's like, you know, I started Bad Film Takes, what, 20... I think I started... I made the account 2017. I started using it 2018, something like that. I, I don't know. It's been so long now. Wait, you're Bad I, Film Takes, too? I am. Oh, I didn't know. <laughs> I <love that. laughs> Yeah, so I'm I'm also bad Impressive. film takes, which uh, I just stopped doing that because film has been dead. But that was going great for a while, and uh, I met a lot of great people through that. And then I finally was like, oh, I have clout on here. I'm going to use this to uh, to start the podcast finally. And so when I had when I hit ten thousand followers on there, I launched uh, what was originally called Bad Filmcast. And that was the uh, the original name of the podcast, and then uh, and then we went on hiatus. We we started uh, we launched August 2019. We went for over a year straight, not missing a single week. 
we started the Patreon during, um, you know, the summer last year of qu during quarantine, we had a lot of great guests on, um, we had on, uh, John McAfee, who everyone knows. Nice. Uh, nice. we had Josh, Josh Olson on from, uh, the movies that made me, uh, with, he does with, um, Joe Dante who did the gremlins movies and Josh Olson also, uh, Academy award nominee, uh, for writing a history of violence. We had, uh, Patrick Bryce on who did the creep movies. Uh, he did, uh, the overnight, which I love. And he has a new movie coming out on Netflix later this month. And then we had Daniel waters on who wrote, um, demolition man, Hudson Hawk, uh, Heathers. Uh, we had Marco curious on, who uh friend of the pod uh also named mark or not marco mark um hooked me up with him because he works with him and he was uh nick cage's stand-in um from the mid 90s to the early 2000s and so those are some of uh the the cool film guests that we've had on and then we went on hiatus september because matt was getting busy uh with moving and i was just getting a little burnt out and needed a break and uh and now we're rebranded as mk ultra money because it just is a cool sounding name and i want to move away from the film focus because i also that was part of the reason i was burning out was because we did a film every episode and there was just so many episodes we just didn't even talk about the fucking movie we're just a bunch of retard shit posting so <laughs> now we're still gonna do film episodes just not as the focus anymore um but everything from shit posting to films to you know whatever else we want to talk about really so. and uh, speaking of money don't forget to send super chats our way right now if you have any questions for james for beardson for jessix for uh and jessix how are you jessix i want to acknowledge the great jessix is here vegeta stan uh beautiful I could just person sneak by. inside and out <laughs> where's your vegeta figure uh, i have everywhere which one which one <laughs> Well, Beardson, where's your Vegeta figure? It's right here. He's, he's checking have, in. Look at that. I have that one on my Amazon wish list. Uh, if anybody wants it, I'm just... <laughs> Beautiful. So again, Shameless don't forget... as fuck. I love it. Right, don't my forget birthday's the Super next Chats. Week. Happy birthday. Send Super Chats for the sake of Jessica's birthday. You could ask her about the birthday, about what present she wants to get on her wish list. So you, you know the drill. Do that. And also patreon.com slash break the rules. Don't forget to go there. But speaking of money also, why call it MK Ultra Money? I mean, I get the MK Ultra part, but why the money? So the MK Ultra part came from because my previous at on Twitter was MK Ultra JC Denton, which just because it was, you know, I like conspiracies and I love day sex and, um, I had a few different names that I was going with for what I was going to change it to for season two and uh, just workshopping it with uh, with people in group chats. The the last one we came down to was MK Ultra Money because it just, you know, it took the MK Ultra I already had and the money just sounded cool with it. And I'm like, that's what I'm fucking going for. You know, all, all the best groups and podcasts have names that have no meaning whatsoever. They just sound cool. Million Dollar Extreme, Come Town. Chapo Trap House, stuff like that. Like they're not names that have any meaning. They just sound cool and they get people interested in it. And that's what uh, I was also going for. So, and do you have a specific style that you want to employ here? I know you got the great Fodcom who also did our logo as well. You yes. got the great Fodcorp to do the logo for you. Yeah, so shout out to Fodcorp. Man. Shout out to Fodcorp. Follow him on Twitter. I'm going to post his Twitter as well. But what is it about this kind of visual style? that uh, appeals to you? So I think one of the main theses of Bad Film Cast is, uh, well, I mean, what Bad Film Cast was originally was us defending films that are rotten on Rotten Tomatoes um, because critics are retarded. So, but a lot of the films were stuff from, you know, the late 90s to early mid 2000s. And, um, you know, I love that aesthetic. Um, it goes with, you know, the MK Ultra vibe, the Matrix vibe, Dave Sex, you know, all this stuff from that era. Um, ironically enough, we've never even got around to doing the Matrix movies, um, but the sequels are insanely underrated. And, uh, you know, well, it's that... supposed to be bad film cast, right? You what? wouldn't necessarily do good movies on bad film cast. Would well, you? The, the Matrix movies are rotten on Rotten Tomatoes. Yeah, but who the fuck who gives a fuck about them? I mean, that's well, that well, that's the whole point is that we were 
covering these movies that got panned by critics and explaining mm. why they were wrong. And here is an outfit of you that I am uploading right now, wearing the Matrix garb and yes. pro proving <laughs> to the whole world uh, how you know how how deep down the rabbit hole you've gotten by following with, with the, the White Info Rabbit. Wars beanie. Yes. This is this is my fault. I take full responsibility for this because I sent that to James. I also take full responsibility because I actually took the picture. Yep, and also <laughs> I mailed it to your house, Terrence. So what? Yeah, that's it was at your house. The fucking the Matrix hoodie. I picked oh, it up at oh, your house. Oh, I thought you said you just. I thought you said you mailed a picture. That picture to yes, my yes, house. Yes, yes, Terrence. Yeah. I mailed a picture to your fucking house. You retard. Yeah, same. It w wouldn't be the first thing you mailed. Picture, to my but house, no pants. Asshole. Yeah, I'm mailing a pipe bomb too in Minecraft here. In, in Minecraft. In Minecraft. <laughs> in Minecraft. I would never mail a pipe bomb to Terrence's house in real life. I love his parents okay. too much. Plus, every time I go there, his dad just starts roasting him. It's fantastic. Also, can I just say that it's super interesting to me that everyone just said in Minecraft like simultaneously. James and Terrence are the only people I know that are like internet affluent. So uh, that was very. That was a weird experience for me just now. Yeah, I mean, this stream is esoteric internet. That's retard, the new so. legal defense in Minecraft. Yeah, yeah that's what I. <laughs> you can't get you can't get arrested if you kill someone in Minecraft. What yeah, are they going to do? Yeah, you or, always or have in to. Or in GTA, it was GTA just ironic. That's yeah. why you always say in Minecraft, and you say, "I'm not a financial advisor. This is not yes. financial advice." <laughs> Those three things clear you of all guilt. You can do yeah. everything you you can say anything you want as long as you follow just up with rob all the three bank of those and things, then you just good. say it was in Minecraft. We have a comment from Buff, by the way, not a super chat. So Buff, be sure to fix that by sending us super chats finally. But anyway, Buff says. But wait, we also have a comment from Martin, who is a patron of Bad Film Cast. Now I'm really? getting money. Yeah. So nice. thank you, thank you for the congrats, Martin. Martin's fantastic. I talk to him all the time. He's in my group chats and stuff. He's Thank you, Martin. Awesome guy. So Buff's and, uh, comment is, uh, this new weekly sweat sucks. <laughs> so what is, what is the weekly sweat? What, what's going on here? I don't know. I, I guess uh, that, that, was, that was my show. The weekly sweat was my oh. show. So that's probably, that's probably what that's referring to. But And the jerk says, weekly sweat, new episode, yay. So the I guess this chat. Yeah. <laughs> Look, I can't be held responsible for, you know, those people or anything. I disavow. I disavow it. You yeah. Know, we're just, we did, but... we disavow all haters that uh, that come in because of Beardson. Yeah. yeah. So it's a we're rowdy gonna, crowd. It's a we're rowdy gonna make crowd. them like the elderly and the disabled in 2070. If you catch my breath. <laughs> Well, they are a rowdy crowd, but we welcome rowdy crowds as well. I think we have a way of turning them around when they see a beautiful picture of Jessix holding this uh, holding this cat. I think their did hearts this, are just going to melt. Does this count as women posting their L's that I'm holding my cat like a baby while I'm almost 25 and childless? Yeah. No, no because um, I see everybody do that. You, you definitely have some other L's probably, but uh, it's definitely not the cat. It might be the cat. It, may, it might be the cat posters behind you. It might no, be the Funko Pops. Yeah, it might it's, be definitely the Funko. it's definitely the it's Funko, Funko Pops. Pops. Yeah. Okay, listen, listen, all right? All right, no need, to, no need to go too hard, okay? We have all stream. Now, how did uh, women posting their all start? That honestly started because Game I just women. saw so... What, Terrence? What? What do you say? What? All right. He said James hates women. Oh, oh, well, besides that, just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, besides uh, the obvious. Yeah, but besides the obvious, um, the I just started seeing so many fucking tweets from women on the timeline where it's like, why are you posting this? What would ever drive you to publicly tell people this online? And uh, and then I saw an opportunity and I went for it. And now it blows my mind how many fucking other posting L counts there are now that have popped up. Like, I, there, there real was quite, visionary. For real, though. Like, I, there was quite a few that, like, uh, bad take accounts that popped up after bad film takes, but, like, the amount of posting their L's accounts is, like, unreal. It's just, it's, like, way too many. <laughs> how does it, it feel to be king of the incels? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, <laughs> what do you say, Jess? I said it's so there's so many redundant ones too because there's women posting their L's and then I have e-girls. E e e yeah. It's like really, 
It's like, what's the point? Why does there need to be two of them? I asked that account, by the way, the e-girls posting their elves to share the e-girl stream that we did, and uh, they did not go through with it. So there may be a bit of a rivalry <laughs> that they're feeling. I don't, somebody, know. somebody tagged them under one of my um, under one of my tweets about like I just shared my wish list on on Twitter or Twitch or something, and somebody sent like at e-girls posting their elves. I was like, you know, what? we're gonna ask the expert. So then, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, then you, James. you tagged me into it. I'm like looking at, it, I'm like. What is this bullshit I'm getting tagged in now? All right. There can only be there can only be the original. Like K Kandinsky, I mean Geo, you you know this. Kandinsky, he had his black square. After that, no, no, if somebody... no, that, that wasn't Kandinsky. That was uh, Malchek. Malevich. Malevich. Damn it. Yeah. Yes, you're right. Malevich. Yeah. My apologies. Yes. Yeah. Malevich after he did is the black, black square. square, then yeah. Or after Barnett Newman did like the strip, then that was it. Like it was it was done. So it was there. You go. Yeah, we know, have it's to funny move on. how the L accounts have sort of uh, become this like force on the internet. I think like it, I don't know. It, it reminds me of like cringe compilations back in like the 2010s. There's I'm something the modern day cringe compilation. Yeah, like oh, there's something yeah, so visceral are. about it, right? The like, only other one it. that I've liked is the Biden voters posting your. Oh yeah, the Biden one that is good. One's... And that the journal, funny. the journals, the journals one, yeah, yeah. Those are the only crazy. two I like. Those are great. Good ones, yeah. All the other ones fucking suck. <laughs> so. Well, did they come out too that like it was like some like uh, advertising firm was like running some of them too? No, the, yeah, that, that was, was the dudes, um, down dudes, bad. dudes who were down, who down, down bad. bad. Yeah, I yeah. That one. and they yeah, got well, suspended. What, what, so fuck them. Yeah. 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 What happened? I was that calling account? them out. They were run by a company that was just trying to prove that you can like grow your account really big for some marketing project. Yeah, yeah it was like right, it was like they faked they faked the DMs and everything. A lot of them. It I mean, was so obvious real, it was but, fake too. Yeah. It was oh, yeah. like oh, a yeah. social experiment. Yeah, I was calling channels. it out. Yeah, I was calling it out forever. And everybody's like, "What do you mean? I know someone that got their DM in there." I'm like, "Dude," okay. I, and the guy that ran it was trying to damage control so hard. He slid yeah. into my DMs on both accounts. He was like damage controlling on the timeline and stuff. And it's like, dude, it is way too obvious. Like, I also post the receipts. One of the things was I caught him. He deleted, they deleted a post from um, the other one, um, Lyric Shit Posts, where he made a post on Dudes Down Bad, shilling that in the tweet. So it's like, I, I you could obviously tell what's going on here because it was, you know, it was the same company behind both of them. But um, he, I think he, the reason he got banned on uh, Dudes Down Bad is for like exploiting the algorithm somehow. Mm. <laughs> uh, by the way, we have a super chat from Spiced five dollars and he says the following there's a crowdfunding campaign called auto blow 5000 using ai tech they inputted 7000 minutes of mouth on dick porno and came up with 10 optimal blowjob sequences my question to the panel is would a blowjob filled with love feel better than the auto blow look everything is better when it's filled with love baby well, yeah, when, that... when when uh as Heidegger said, when we lived when we live in the world of Das Mann, then uh, we can't expect these sort of authentic distinctions. So the the average pro, the average person uh, posting their L's on the internet won't tell the difference between the loving blowjob and the uh, blowjob machine. So you are Gazmatron. The loving blowjob is one with like a kiss at the end, you know, just like kissing the dick and showing love. Oh, I think that's wow. yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's I'm, well, I'm that's nothing of the past because me. that's emotional labor lab that's not existing yeah. anymore. And so. then, like Eskimo kissing, you know, using the nose, just anyway, I'm not gonna get in. <laughs> like, that. I, prefer, I prefer one that's filled with hate. I'm not a, I'm not a loving blowjob. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> well, like scraping the teeth, like, yeah, like using it. <laughs> yeah, just, uh, just piercing its the teeth. It. I want, I yeah, want a blowjob like, from a shark, saliva all over the face. You're just like having a bad time, you know. I'm just gonna play the fifth on this one. <laughs> there was wasn't that a South Park joke about uh the like the Eskimo blowjob was just like rubbing <laughs> the Oh my god. Well, there could be like a lady named Sally Iva, you know, and she would probably yeah. be really good at that part. Sally, Sally Iva. <laughs> Ivana that was a dad Ivana. joke. <laughs> yeah, I really was. I have plenty of them. See, I really want to be a father. Ivana Hump a lot. A... Austin yes, Powers. Yes, all day Austin Powers. That was the I mean, first episode we did. It was Austin Powers, a spy who shagged me. That one got really bad reviews on uh, Rotten Tomatoes back in the day? I think it was like 50s or something like that. But uh, that, that was the perfect episode for us to start the podcast with because me, me and Matt have 
been quoting Austin Powers, you know, since that came out, like nonstop this whole time. I watched all of the Austin Powers movies like as a kid, and I haven't watched them as an adult. And they it's not really a so movie. Well. It's not really yeah, a movie that so like good. kids should be watching because I feel like ninety five percent of the jokes went totally over my head. You know, I, I'm talking like ten years old, right? Like I'm not gonna understand anything that's happening, and I've yet to watch them again as an adult. But see, one one of the best parts about watching that as a kid is when you're my cousin Matt, and you start repeating the lines to people, and you go up to our grandma and you say to her. Do I make you horny, baby? <laughs> yeah, this is conjecture. <laughs> and there was a, uh, on the first terrible. episode, we were debating who actually said it, me or him. I knew it was him. And then we called up uh, our aunt, and she confirmed that it was Matt. I'm like, told you, motherfucker. <laughs> One of the first funny. One of the first things that I wanted to uh, write down after I discovered Austin Powers when I searched was autism powers. And I got a blog article, which I can't find right now, but it was about this mom whose daughter, when she saw Austin Powers, just started copying the same thing. She was saying, do I make you Randy, Randy, you know, on all that stuff, like in front of other adults. And, you know, it's difficult to explain to the kid that you can't really say this stuff when they're in this 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 other world. That's see, James. See, yeah, yeah. My my dad had me do the opposite. My dad, well, more of his friends. But uh, when I when I was like, you know, little like that, like we would go to um, like Outback or Boulder Creek or whatever. And uh, his friends would encourage me to as like however old I was when that movie came out. Um, <laughs> just go to the waitresses and be like, do I make you horny, baby? And whatever, you know, other quotes from it. But yeah, that explains a lot. That's yep. terrible. <laughs> Yeah. Well, it's not harassment when you're when you're when you're six. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know. Or it's, <laughs> yeah, or apparently it's not harassment when you're in your late twenties and you're using a six year old to say it to the waitress. So yeah, you can get away honestly, with I'm probably of... younger at that point. Like what? This came out ninety nine, right? So uh, I was probably like five then. Well, wasn't awesome. that the benefit? Five, of like... Yeah, I was. I was eight. Yeah. Hmm. I wasn't even born. I was eight. Yeah. Damn. I was like I was like twelve. Was born Zoomer. In 96. <laughs> Zoomer. Fuck. I am, Wait, Beardson, how, how old are you? Because uh, you look I'll older be... because of the beard, but... Yeah, I'm 32. I'll turn 33 this year. Oh, shit, we're the same age. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, yeah, I was born millennial in, gang. Uh, yeah, I was born in uh, 88 in uh, St. Petersburg, Russia. Where where were you born? Uh, I was born in Kentucky, where I live now, and where I'll die. <laughs> <laughs> Sad. <laughs> Well, now with the lockdowns and the eternal winter that may be coming, because, I mean, you see what's going on in Texas right now. Do, do any of you guys have friends who are living there? And what is, yes. wh yeah. what is going, yeah. what is going down with Friends who haven't them? had power for days, which, as a Floridian, I can relate. because Texans I've lived posting their L's. Texans, yeah. So <laughs> I have a friend that's in, I, I think Dallas has, like, the worst power from what I'm seeing. Like, I have a couple friends in Dallas, and their power has been out for a long time. But then other people in, like, other areas aren't having issues. So all I know is mm. I'm in Florida, and I went to the beach today, and it was 80 degrees. So it's pretty nice. I love the, nice. Uh, I love the Fed posting that is the state-sanctioned Fed posting by the, uh, the libs mm -hmm. about, like, how people in Texas deserve to die. And uh, oh, they wanted to secede, but now it's like, oh, no, you need the federal government's help. It's sort of like that same... Like, uh, you know, Ayn Rand took social security. I mean, not the Ayn Rand's a bad example because Ayn Rand's a whatever, but it's just I, the, the, the Fed posting going on right now against the Texans is really quite something to see. Like, literally, these people, like, I'm talking uh, genocidal levels of like hatred from uh, mostly like East Coast shit libs mm. against texans I but haven't so, they all moved yeah. but haven't they all moved to texas now well, they moved so to austin they, they moved to austin but. i try to block as many rad lib shit libs that i see come across my timeline immediate block so thankfully i've not been seeing the fed posting from them but i'm not surprised that a lot of it's going on Damn it. See, I was going to not say anything and relying on one of you people to say something. <laughs> and it was just this awkward silence that happened right now. I was and waiting. I, no I finished my thought. Okay, moving <laughs> on. It. I was okay, just paying attention to my cat, my other cat. Okay, mo mo moving on. James, yes. you also make films. That's or you, correct. You, 
can you take can you tell he, us a little bit about this? He makes porno films. Ah, uh, yes. I <laughs> with your with your action that, figures. I've been hearing that joke since fucking seventh grade. <laughs> <laughs> I, I always well, say I mean, maybe like, you should stop wearing that chain because that really does make you look like a pornographer. Uh, it's called being Italian. <laughs> <laughs> it's called the being Italian. Chain, one of the yeah. gold chain races. Italians wear gold chains. The right? gold chain is all. We have two. Also my just fault. <laughs> yeah. Um. What yeah, no, I, I always said uh, I could never direct porn because then I would prove those kids in seventh grade right. Um, also, porn is just degeneracy, so that's also another reason I wouldn't do it. But uh, right. what about something like Caligula, where they combined porn together with, uh, you know, w- well, whatever, that was erotica, Lev. That's there's a difference. I don't even know what that is. You've never seen Caligula? Nope. Oh, oh man, God. we are definitely gonna have to do a oh my God. stream. Oh my God! film or... critic, fake film. Is it just like, is it just like every yeah. HBO show where they pretend to have a plot, but it's literally just porn? Or... Yeah, Caligula was the dramatic. Yeah, that takes me uh, back. Yeah, Matt. It was James, produced like, by uh... the guy from Penthouse, Bob Guccione, who had Helen Mirren mm. in it, and I forget who was the lead actor. I don't know who any of those. Uh, Malcolm are. McDowell, was... the guy from Malcolm uh, McDowell. That's right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But the uh, so... but the thing about uh, the thing about Caligula. Is that mm-hmm. they shot the porno scenes with Separate. the director, yeah, yeah, and the actors? They didn't know that those scenes were going to be included in the movie. <laughs> so, <laughs> he just trolled him. That, but no, it's like the funny. best of raunchy seventies, like semi-pornographic, um, like new, like new art house seventies mm. cinema. L- like it's, what Travis Bickle was watching with uh, that girl in a taxi. Yeah, driver. it's like one of those. It's it's quite a monstrosity, but it's like one of those clever beautiful monstrosities we actually so, did mm-hmm. um uh the uh, for one of the la- the last episode of uh of season one the patreon we did the austin powers uh <laughs> porn parody oh uh, no we covered that yes oh, Honestly, surprisingly good it's so funny it was pretty funny it's like on par good. with gold member can't say that i've seen it it's worth watching <laughs> i highly recommend austin powers xxx is there one without the porn scenes, or Honestly, like, can I just watch the cuts? You can probably like, watch skip YouTube through cut. like the main <laughs> porn scenes, but like there is some stuff there with is the one porn video, that adds there to is, the humor. There is one movie that I watched with the scenes cut out on what's that one? That infamous one, boy band. You know which one I'm talking about. Oh man, if you look it up, I think you'll know. There's like a couple memes made out of it, but somebody had it on YouTube with. Like obviously the porn scenes cut out. So if you can find a version like that, I'll, ch- I'll check it out. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, but, the funny but anyways, thing back... was oh, what? See, well, when we were when we were watching it, uh, there was like at the end we kind of just skipped some of the porn scenes because not only did they go on for like twenty fucking minutes, but we actually wanted to know what was happening at the end. That's really crazy. I think that's like the first time someone actually watched a porno wanting to actually see the plot instead of the porn scenes. That's oh, that depends what kind of porn you're watching, my friend. <laughs> this one, though, honestly, pretty fucking decent writing. <laughs> yeah, wasn't it? They were making some jokes in that in that parody that rivaled the real jokes. From that's the what I'm saying. Like, it's it on par weird. with Goldmember. Yeah. But uh, but anyways, getting back to, to filmmaking. But uh, yeah, yeah. Filmmaking is something I've always wanted to do since I was like six. Like I would just, you know, take my mom's fucking, you know, camcorder and shit and just start filming whatever, whether it be skits with uh, my, my cousin Dana or with my cousin Matt over here filming uh, us playing Yu-Gi-Oh and whatnot or, you know, anything in between. Um, I was just always obsessed with that as a kid. And then... Uh, you know, eventually went to SVA, the same school as you, Lev, that's which right. uh, was dog shit for film. But that's where I met Terrence. So you remember uh, Reeves Lehman? Yes. Yeah. Fuck so him. Reeves, Reeves was the chair, and he he was a fan of the bottle. He was a fan of the glug 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 glug. Yeah. But it, but it may have been warranted, honestly, because he was a Vietnam vet, and he even I think made a movie about his experience in Vietnam, which I never saw. But Everyone it's hated all really. him. At SVA, but Everyone it is al- it. but it is almost like one of these things where the guy who was uh, running SVA at the time, like I believe Dusty Rhodes, his name was, and oh, um, the American Dream, Dusty Rhodes. Yeah, that- and uh, <laughs> he, uh, you know, he was a friend of Reeves. So after Reeves left, uh, you know, uh, 
uh, after he was stationed uh, in Vietnam, you know, he was in a bad way and a friend decided to help another friend. It's like, why don't you run the school or why don't you run the film program in the school? So I was like, okay. Uh, so in a way, the like, fucking I... ground. <laughs> well, wait, well, why was Reeve so bad? Because again, like, I wasn't that, I, I was I just, like 16 I just remember years old. When everyone I thought there. he was an asshole. I didn't really interact with him that I can remember, but I just. I always heard stories from people that he was just like a nightmare and like, just, you know, just really fucking rude to people. Mm. Uh, yeah, this is the James. This is the guy who ran the film department of SBA. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, oh, yeah. Okay. So, yeah, but I, I uh, but I think he was like in a cage too, like in Vietnam, like, you know, they had, they were poking him with a stick. So at a certain point, really? it's like, yes, I feel oh. bad that, that well, like happened, at the but... same time, like if you can't handle doing, you know, your dr- job running a fucking film department correctly, then like, you know, maybe you should do something else. I thought you were just say, if you're not man enough to like handle getting poked with a stick, maybe you shouldn't go to war. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like that's what you were going to say. That's what I, I thought I like, you were going to say. I like heads of film departments that weren't captured and poked with a stick. Okay. <laughs> I want to be president. Um, <laughs> you know, what's funny as we're saying this, I see that Scorsese is trending on twitter so you know it's going to be good oh what did he say about marvel movies now (laughs) martin scorsese and i quote the art of cinema is being systematically devalued sidelined demeaned and reduced to its lowest common denominator due to the name of films as content that's very true i feel like the brand image of film being the most important selling point rather than the film itself has basically killed cinema uh but he's i don't know he's telling as someone who's not into cape shit i feel that he's 100% 100% right, of course. Yeah, but, I yeah. think I think um, honestly, c- cinema's still fine. It's just like more of the the mainstream stuff, whereas like television is like I said this like last episode. I think is like complete psyop tier. Mm. Oh, tell don't get, don't get yeah. me started, man. It's just yeah, modern modern television, uh, contemporary television is just. I think it's purposefully designed to be psyoped and to. Uh, and wait, when you say television, do you mean specifically shows you can only that only like premiere and you can watch it on the tv i'm talking about specifically shows not a theatrical movie so Mm. whether it's on Mm. like an actual channel or it's on netflix or another streaming stuff i mean television as a whole so so like another sva Um, graduate uh who was in my class rebecca sugar she went i think she's a brilliant artist i no, i always gotta say i think she's a brilliant artist brilliant draftsman like she can draw like nobody's business but when it comes to the effect that uh steven universe and shows like that ended up having on the on the kids like maybe there would have been something else but it feels like it was at at the right or wrong time as it were wait, you know wait, broadcast wait, wait, wait. You, when tumblr was around you know rebecca sugar personally or i was in uh well we were classmates so we went to the same classes oh all the she time. hated lab by the way yeah what that's how the story goes that she hated you or something like that Wait, wait. Like <laughs> no, wait, who said that? What's you going on? You said this a long time ago. She hated you. The, you were like little rival. You had like a rival. No, 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 she was uh shut up she was in a different <laughs> click. she was in a different click than i was i wasn't really in a click per se like i had a couple of couple of friends that i was close with at sva but she was in a particular like other click and she was hanging so she, was, she was in the clique she was in with uh she was in like the uh, scott hall scott uh, triple h clique and you were in like the uh, undertaker clique so you never had <laughs> i don't even think i had a clique like how many people does it take to have a clique like i had maybe like two friends there that i was uh, pretty close with and that's kind of it the rest were just like you know people who i saw and interacted with but there wasn't really a strong Dude, i thing. literally i have and, and all those SBA. people that rebecca sugar hung around with now they all have studio jobs and lev is on actually a, a couple of them do <laughs> <laughs> but, making but, indie shit on new grounds instead but, of but, being with but, rebecca sugar hold on hold on jobs. but i wouldn't want to hold on and honestly look, this i is feel not... like you got the better end of the deal <laughs> I agree. I agree. Here's the thing. I, this is not sour grapes because personally speaking, like the environments that are in the animation uh, studios from the people who I've talked to that are in them right are now, it's not great. It's uh, not a kind of environment that I would want to be in. So in a way, what I'm doing is I've managed to get into more of this 
underground internet community where a lot of these questions are forming up as far as, uh, you know, what are these problems that uh, people who are within the mainstream don't really acknowledge or are scared to acknowledge. And there are still some people who I respect who go out there and talk about them. Like there was that recent thing with, um, you know, um, Obviously, we have Barry Weiss, New York Times, and I know Gio, like, you could say whatever you want about her. But still, there are people who are within the mainstream who are sort of defecting, and they don't want to be part of this woke nonsense anymore. So there is still a, b a bit of hope there. But I still think that the kind of circle that exists on the internet where people, especially if they're anonymous, can freely express, you know, uh, things that people otherwise wouldn't, I think that's very important. And uh, more of this interaction between them and the mainstream, I think, should happen on a uh, daily basis. So this is what BTR pretty much is. This is what I'm trying to do. Bring all these people together who otherwise wouldn't, uh, would never sit in the same room with each other and would have nothing in common. I would sit in the same room as every single one of oh, you. I'm that just is kidding. So Probably nice. not. I don't sit in rooms with strange men. Sorry, not going to lie. Well, well, well you, here's a strange... Apparently, if strange... you work for a big animation studio, this is what other people didn't sam hyde say something apparently a lot of these studios are filled with sex pests that you wouldn't want to uh sit next to that's there's the whole a lot industry of, yeah there's a yeah. lot of sleeping your way to the top that goes along uh, goes along with these positions so i don't know i mean i don't want to speculate about rebecca sugar but yeah you know and again rebecca sugar she's a great artist so i'm not nothing against her i'm specifically but talking yeah, about the right. eager she, was, she came the eager a gore. Moment yeah that was just perfect at that time of that like era of like 2010s tumblr culture that was Love, like, you know. uh, what year did you go to sba <laughs> I I went to sba my first uh my first year was 2006 <laughs> oh okay what is All sba right. yeah what school is it uh, okay yes it's a, yeah it's school so i was there when i was six i was there when i was 16 years old i couldn't I couldn't drink yet, obviously. So my first Wait, you were there when years, you were 16? Yeah, when I was 16. That's when Jesus. I went there. And that was the same year that I also went to the Ottawa Animation Festival where I had my film uh, uh, Piper the Goat in and it won for Best uh, Secondary Film, which, as you know, Geo Secondary School in Canada, that's like what? That's like hi high school, right? Uh, I think so, yeah. It's like around there. So it was it was already kind of like a hostile environment as far as, you know, here was this fucking kid who just came back from a fucking film festival. And, it's, you know, like there was a bit of a weirdness going on from that alone, which I think never really went away while I was there again. Like I managed to make friends, but then there was always like a force. of It people. never went away after you left. There yeah. was always a force of people that I would say it's like either people really liked me or people really didn't like me, you know? Oh, I mean, that's literally SBA. me. <laughs> SBA was 100% like a fucking high school with all of its cliques, because I uh, I majored in cartooning, but oh, nice. even still, that whole that whole department was, it was just a bunch of cliques. Like, a, some people would just act like children, and it was ridiculous. Like, I managed to meet, like, well, a few including the teachers, there. too. Including the teachers, yeah. too. Oh, my oh, God. God. Let's be fair. I remember, wait, Actually, I, this, I remember um, a teacher once, I, I posted some political post on Facebook. This was, uh, I think this was after I dropped out. I can't remember, but um, it wasn't even that bad. I can't remember what it was, but uh, this one fucking shit lib teacher I had like freak, had like a freak out on my post. And it's like, dude, you are a fucking like 60 something year old man talking to like a former student on Facebook. Relax. <laughs> And then he and blocked it, me and shit. But and, yeah. and there was that, that's there actually was... the <laughs> yeah. well, that's actually the funny thing though, because I actually when it came to SVA in my classes, I actually had better relationships with my teachers than I did some of the students. Like obviously, I, I met a few friends there, but a lot of the teachers, at least in the cartooning industry, were were pretty chill. Um, and obviously, before COVID, I would usually uh, meet up with them every Comic Con, but. Uh, it was just the some of the some of the students there were just it's like they were just a bunch of rich fucking snobs. It was ridiculous. I mean, and that's pretty much what it was. No way. No way. <laughs> I find that hard I mean, to believe. I there. Have, there. I have four but. friends from SVA. Terrence is one. 
my friend Joe, who's my only friend in film, uh, who's uh, actually on the the first Patreon episode of this season. Um, and then two other friends who I just have not seen in years. I, and I loosely keep in touch with on social media, but like I would hang out with them if they asked to hang out. But other than that, that's it. And, uh, you know, my, my only regret is not dropping out a year sooner from SVA because I met Terrence my freshman year and then my sophomore year um, I found out about this program called uh, the American Pavilion which is how I got to Cannes my first year in 2014 was through an intern program with them so uh, you know in, in college I made I think five short films none of them very good one of them became meme status which uh, uh, became 4chan meme letterbox meme People will still try to harass me on Twitter about it because it just got so much hate. Um, can we have a link that, to this? Uh, what? Can we have a link to this uh, film? Yeah, no, I, <laughs> <not. laughs> I tried to scrub it the best I can. It's still up there. Like you know, I'll find it. I'll yeah, look just it. like the Mario. It's not too hard to find. Out. The only reason I, I scrubbed it is mainly because it's like the stuff that I've I've written post college is one so much better and two so much different that like I don't want this low quality stuff to represent me as an artist. I'm going to go make a James posting his else account and just only tweet that video. There's <laughs> probably someone that's already done it. <laughs> I also have a few screenshots if you need them. Terrence. Hey, you James, do you later? have a farm? Do you have a Kiwi farms by now or no? Don't even know what that is. Is that what? You, oh out. my God. Is that, is that like so, Mole Cow? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Kind of, but yeah, it's like the basically. original. I, ju I just recently discovered that ki the, the word Kiwi Farms is a play on words. It's, it was uh, based off of the word Wikipedia. Yeah, yeah, it was. Yeah, I, I have uh, From, some mutuals yeah. that are on, uh, that have been posted oh, well, my, a bunch on yeah. locale, but what my up, Brit you know, Brittany Venti, she's on, on Kiwi Farms, and they, they haven't <laughs> talked about me that much, but I was, like, doxxed because of this. Mm. They didn't get the information right, but they were, like, trying to dox me just because I was friends with her. Fuck. Oh yeah. Arms oh, by the way, Beardson, uh, Buff wrote uh, uh, that uh, you know Emily, and uh, I got high with Emily Yukas back in 2016 at the uh, office party in uh, Philadelphia of Newgrounds. Oh, that's awesome. It was a pretty interesting experience just to have all these different uh, animators there, and I found that atmosphere to be better than uh, the uh, atmosphere in um, uh, SVA. Like a lot of these people, they grew up with the internet and uh, there was something uh, to that environment that didn't feel like, even though I'm sure there were clicks there too, people felt a lot more open to talk and there wasn't that, you know, that edge that I felt from, again, like I understand what uh, Terrence is saying about the teachers and I think I got along with a lot of teachers as well. But there were some teachers though who were just really like, uh, like there was this one lady I remember who, when there was this Asifa East screening, if you guys don't know what Asifa is, it's this uh, animation festival in New York. No, what I'm Bofa is. Bofa. What is Bofa? Bofa these nuts! Uh, I should have I should have seen that <laughs> coming. But I, God is it! But anyway, in, in Asifa, they have this thing where um, you get a slip of paper and you write like from one to ten the score that you would give to a film in the audience awards. And I had a film of mine, which was like, I don't think it was Only Love. I think it was Piper the Goat. Anyway, I had the screening there and I saw that lady, you know, and it was a really nicely done film. And that lady who was like a teacher at SVA and she was friends with a lot of my friends from the animation world. She gave it a fucking zero. Oof. What? She was sitting right in front of me and she gave me a fucking zero. And it was like, it's high school, man, like for, for some people. And it's hard for people to uh, to get over that mentality. But I guess, I don't know, I guess it's fun. I guess people like gossip, people like, uh, you know, intruding into other people's lives and seeing if they can manipulate them in some way. I don't know. It's all it's all fucked up. I, I, I try not to aim close to that, but I, like, I, I'm sure everybody here has gotten their fair share of that kind of thing. And like, what do you do? Do you like meditate do you just try to find a good circle of people to deflect from all that drama like what is the recipe you guys employ in dealing with uh, any of the drama you immediately I masturbate. <laughs> well there, there's that take. try to avoid drama but... um the you i immediately block anyone who is even a minor annoyance to me online um out of sight out of mind do not give any sicko 
attention that is uh, harassing you or hating on you because that's what they want. So blocked immediately. My block list is uh, close to 2000 now. So, and hopefully yeah. by the end of the year, we can pump up those numbers out of the rookie, uh, the rookie numbers. I have one friend that I think he has, I want to say 30,000 blocked. Jesus Christ. Is, it, is this person, by the way, Paul Scholas or no? No. <laughs> <laughs> That's so much like easier said than done, though, in my opinion, because I feel like people, when you block them, like if they're constantly coming after you and then you block them, they take it as like a W that you block them. Yeah. You know what I mean? Who cares? It's, like, it feels you don't, like, you don't even get to see yeah, it. I mean, they even yeah, like them in their Twitter account. That's true. Like some yeah, of the they'll, resist... make it like they're, they'll make it like they're yeah. hair, like blocked by someone. So, you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah well, it, well, that's it, lame, though. Like, that, it, I don't think anyone thinks that that's cool. You know what I mean? Every like, it's like, wow, you got blocked. Like, wow, awesome. I mean, if if you also see a person doing that, they're most likely some sort of pathetic loser who probably just works at a dead end job and is planning on killing themselves. Exactly. Yeah. In Minecraft. I, see, no, I don't. Yeah, in oh, Minecraft, yeah. No, in real life. Yeah. No, real life. I don't. I don't typically like block right away. It depends on their follower count because I, you know, I'm a guy. Uh, if people are familiar with me, I'm, I kind of thrive off of confrontation a little bit. So, mm. oh, I depends. know you do. That's, that is an understatement. Holy shit. <laughs> Speaking yeah. of Brittany, well, we mentioned Brittany Venti. You had a bit of a tussle with her as well. So, you've, uh, on the, before she got banned, uh, why did she get banned from Twitter again? I forget. Called DMCA. She was, oh, yeah. Yeah. We're, we're trying to get it unturned, but like obviously Twitter is going to take this as an opportunity to just leave her off the platform because she's banned mm. everywhere else, basically. So, what did this chick do? It was just a false DMCA report. Me and a bunch On of other Twitter, people were though, hit with it. Oh, yeah, crazy. yeah. There's there's one person that's been harassing a bunch of people, and we just mm. happen to fit in that circle as well. So she, but everybody else has gotten theirs unbanned, like except her, basically. So wow. kind of sucks. I think her, if you put yourself, else? but in general, if you put yourself out there in any degree, you're going to get yeah. at least a few people that just irrationally hate you for whatever. Of reason. course, yeah. yeah. It's... Now I don't have a uh, I don't have a bone to pick with Brittany Venti, but there was an incident not with her, but with some friend of hers when we were at uh, Skankfest, and I didn't really get to meet her. I wish I did, but uh, this was in Queens. There was this festival, this comedy festival called Skankfest, and this was the fourth oh. year in a row that I went there. It's with Louis J. Gomez, Big J. Okerson, uh, Dave Smith. So the three of them they're called Legion of Skank. So they have this uh, they have this wonderful festival where they invite a lot of co comedians to. Louis C. K. was there uh, last year that I went so that was pretty interesting uh but anyway uh there was this uh, open mic night and there was some comedian on stage who wasn't that funny but a friend of britney's who was sitting next to her just started talking in the middle of this guy's act not even heckling not even like good heckling so i don't know who this person was but that is the only bone that i have to well, pick. it wasn't me uh but i, I don't no, know it was, was. A, it was a dude it was a dude <laughs> yeah, i don't know but either way, Brittany seems nice. I like her in the um, in the bear suit that she wore in that picture that was circulating around 4chan back in 2016. From the Hindu, yeah. Yeah. What? They I, cannot divide it. I, I feel he will not divide us. I feel it's good that that well, I mean, despite her flaws, I feel it's good that there's an agent of chaos among the uh, e girls that transcends the level of just the usual. BPD nightmare of being an e-girl, but actually causes some damage to the egos of other e-girls. I think that's especially with Twitch streamers. That's uh, quite a feat. Uh, mm. So I will, I will tip my hat, tip my fedora to uh, Brittany Venti in that. Oh, I'm sure she appreciates that. We, we oh, and that. by the way, well, I want to acknowledge <laughs> Jeff um, Poland is here. I did not acknowledge yeah. Jeff yet. Jeff, welcome, uh, yeah, buddy. Well, I was waiting. I was waiting for a moment to slip in. Hello, everybody. Hello. Can you also can welcome. you also tell us a, a little bit about yourself, Jeff? Uh, yeah, I fucking, <laughs> I post on Twitter and I'm friends with, uh, James and Mr. Terrence and also Jules, who's, I guess, not here today. Is Jules coming, James? Uh, well, I, I sent him the thing, so, uh, we'll he, see. uh... <laughs> it depends <laughs> if he's working or not, so... Yeah, and I like the little monkey man on your, uh, avatar, James, by the way. I don't know well, who that... that's not a monkey man. That's, uh, that's from, like, an old, uh... <laughs> That's like a psychic from this old uh, uh, like call-in psychic show uh, from Harlem back in like late 90s, early 2000s. Wait, but it looks like... Hold on. I I'm going to post the no, photo no, hold, right hold now. On. I'll, uh... <laughs> I don't know if it's my cache, if I did not refresh it. Your, but your anyway, volume's this... a little lower. So. I'm, uh... Here we go. 
I don't know if this is happening to anybody else. I've been hearing the same thing. Like, like people will talk and then I'll hear it. I'll hear them say the same thing like 20 seconds later. And it's well, like you're not wearing headphones. Long. I don't know if that has any, uh, ha has anything to do with that. Although that usually would come from uh, your side. But anyway, uh, your name is Poland and uh, somebody posted the Pol Polish flag right now. Are you from Poland? Is there any connection no, to Poland? No, I'm Albanian. I just, uh, Jefferson Poland is like this fucking guy who, who like, he had like a sex cult back in the 80s and then uh he got fucking like arrested for for being a pedophile and i just thought it was funny that like if i ever make it big people will have to like every time they try to look me up they're just like looking up a pedophile <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, oh man that's amazing but uh mm -hmm. our, our send now has been on the podcast quite a bunch although um for for season two although the the first episode is called uh our send anthology because it's literally three episodes he's on combined into one Shit. that I took like three hours and cut down to like an hour 20 because we were just all so fucking drunk for all of it that a lot oh, of it is just like not be on just the air. nothingness <laughs> but but I, t I turned three hours of pure bad retardation into an hour of 20 of good retardation F so. finally uh finally squeezed retardation fine like i don't know finally filtered retardation it's just distilled. getting yeah it's distilled yeah. In its purest form. yeah <laughs> distilled it's retardation fermented. yeah well speaking of distilled when did you first i don't want to turn this into an intervention but when did you first start drinking who me james oh. but you can answer <laughs> too if you want At 16 I don't know. like a normal high schooler <laughs> So was it was it peer pressure? Late, was it buddy. your friends wanting to go out and they, you know? No, get... it was me being a sixteen-year-old high schooler. <laughs> that was it. But uh, but what was but what was the motivation? Like if you can like, did there, your parents? It, that also... was the motivation. I was sixteen and in high school, and I wanted to get drunk for the first time. The first time I got drunk actually was at uh, one of my best friend's brothers older brother's friends party so i was 16 everyone else there was 26 and my friend wasn't even there and it was just me hanging out with a bunch of 26 year olds and the only person that knew i was 16 was my friend's brother and my friend brother's friend that was hosting the party and uh <clears throat> I, I told everyone there that i was 20 and i remember um being convinced that i was going to hook up with this 26 year old teacher that night um when i was drunk and uh I mean, how did that and then when work? it didn't happen because now. what you don't even look 20 <laughs> now how did that even pass <laughs> <laughs> right so there is no way she believed me but i was convinced she believed me at the uh retarded age of 16 also being drunk but then the the cops came and broke up the party eventually and so i blamed it on that i told my friends i was like guys i would have got with this hot teacher i swear to god if the cops didn't show up you probably would have. I mean, look at all the hot teachers that are being arrested today for, you know, the uh, the daily nice, as they as they call it on 4chan. That, that is true. I mean, look, who what 16 year old boy didn't want to get molested by a hot teacher? All right. Listen, <laughs> I don't know. That's kind of a uh, that's like. Well, hold on, Gio. The, the this is actually trad. Reversed, no, this is trad, that. and I'll tell you why this is trad. Because back in Imperial Russia, they used to have the uh, governantka, as they called it, uh, for the uh, kids of the nobility, for, like, the boys. So when they turned, uh, you know, like, 13, or I remember, like, in their early teens, basically, there was this lady who would teach them French, she would teach them manners, and she also taught them to fuck. And that was considered, you know, back in the day to be That's something that... That's uh, yeah, that comes be... that comes up a lot actually. In, that's, like I mean, TV that's... shows about rich people a lot. Kind of cool. <laughs> there was this uh, one. It's a little no, bit no weird. Not gonna lie, just a tiny bit gross. No, nobody, just me. Just a little bit. Oh, gross. No, but here's the thing. Back back no, in the day, no, 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 I mean, yeah, that's really thing. gross. That's... Back in the day, they had Terrence, like six... shut up. <laughs> they had six. <laughs> <laughs> Terrence, the most degenerate person I fucking know, hiding uh... his power level like a little fucking shit. <laughs> Yeah, he's wearing, a, wearing, a, wearing a shirt with like two like 14 year old anime girls on it yeah <laughs> well, Terrence is like there's a girl on the stream I must hide my true power yeah, yeah, yeah. oh yeah Philip Daniels he has a boyfriend Terrence way. you can be a degenerate it's fine Yeah, Philip Daniels was... comment was a governess that's what it's called a governess 
that was the uh, title of the lady who would do all these things, you know, triple threat, you know, French, uh, manners and fucking, you know, uh, putting the, uh, putting the books on your head. And then and anyway, uh, there were nobility, uh, you know, youth who also became, I mean, this is from war and peace, but I think this is also something that existed in the real world as well, where in war and peace, one of the characters who was an ambassador to, uh, Germany, he was like a 15 year old kid. And he was already the rank of, you know, like this great ambassador figure. And that was commonplace. Everybody grew up fucking fast there. I mean, people died young, so you had to grow up fast. Peter the Great himself, he had a fucking uh, a, uh, a war reenactment uh, thing when he was like a tiny kid. He outfitted all his friends in like mini versions of the military uniform that all the soldiers had in Russia. And he fought mock battles with them, you know, using actual weaponry. And there were, like, deaths, and there were, you know, there were accidents Ooh. happened, but, you know, oh. he was the emperor of Russia. <laughs> you imagine, so, like, you're friends yeah. with, like, literally the kid of the emperor, and you just get fucking domed, like, <laughs> playing, like, like, uh, playing, uh, like, an actual gunfight, but, like, it's real instead of pretend like you imagine that. It, was, it was a good strategy, though, because he was able to create really royal loyal troops when he became an adult. So like all the people who served with him back when he was a kid now served with him as an adult and he could rely on them for anything. Like they got the Spartan training from, you know, since they were like six years old. Yeah. I hear Hit uh, Hitler did the same thing when he's seven. He put his friends in ovens. <laughs> <laughs> you got to start them really young. Weird. You got to teach them while they're young. <laughs> but uh, their theory was that if you, yeah, these kids of the ruling class, if they like, just had like some old crone like basically teaching them about uh sex that they get it out of the way a lot of rich people it comes up in like cinema like there was a show with um richard gear what was it called father mother son for the bbc or some shit where it's like the same deal like the the ruling class they have like that same ethos of like well you know you have to get it out of the way which is kind of weird and fucked up like mm -hmm. how depersonalized it is it's almost like what Chris Chan believes should be like uh, kids should go through his form of sex education uh, where you like, you know, you have sex with a teacher or something. He believes that that's a way to like, you know, get it over with. So no one will become a loser in cell yeah. boyfriend free girl. Well, with, well Chris like, Chan's family was royalty. Wasn't, weren't they like her, his Chris, mother's Chris side? Chan Weston? wants to fuck Terrence. Please stop. <laughs> But uh, but anyway, when it, when when it comes, I mean, to, it's uh, true. <laughs> he wants to uh, give you a little kiss, a little peck on the peck on the lips. There was a good comment, by the way, from Super Iron Bob, our great patron, Super Iron Bob, who says we over infantilize teenagers, which goes to why they act like children. I mean, that's pretty mm, true today. I'd true. say. I mean, and it may have been less true the further back we go. Like, do you? Uh, I don't know Beardson. Do you think we are living in an infantilized, in an over-infantilized state right now? Oh, yeah. I mean, look at me. I've, I've got a Vegeta figure in sitting here on my desk, and I'm 33 years old. Okay? Maybe? Like, I am a walking argument. <laughs> <laughs> you know? I'm not going to No, I mean, that's, that. a good, that's a good point, though, because, I mean, like, back in the day, you know, you could be, like, 15, 16, and the head of your own household, you know? Yeah. So things are just different in modern times. You like, obviously, have a job you're... by the time you're 14. But earlier than that 14 like yeah. back then i mean you'd be lazy. like not if your dad was a blacksmith you were working as a blacksmith at like six years old you yeah, know yeah they, I mean? they need those little That's hands to, to, to get into the areas okay, where exactly. adult hands can yeah, you know yeah. like, there there is a use for you know kind of like why they have a dachshund you know a dachshund is like a long wiener dog because you can get a dachshund through the hole to get the rabbit you know yeah. same thing with kids they're small they can work on those little factory yeah, ammunition I mean, it was, things and... it was the same thing with like women too like obviously now i don't think 12 year 12 you know 13 or 14 year old women should be married off to have children but back in That's the day i mean trad. you were most yeah. likely you were most likely not going to survive through childbirth mm. or not going to live yeah. past 30 or 40 I mean, you, you know what yeah. i mean so it was, it was no not uncommon time, back then, but obviously now is a totally different story. Well, but it, it, <laughs> even now, it's still, I mean, not, you know, not getting married at 13, but like getting a, you know, getting a job young still works today because, yeah. like, you don't got to fuck it. Because I started working when I was 14. Like, I didn't have to ask my fucking parents for money. I didn't have to, like, steal money out of my mom's wallet to do drugs. I just earned my own money to do drugs. My mom just gave me drugs. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
There is a uh, there is a strange thing though when it comes to Americans, which I don't find is as common for uh, the English or for some European, like especially not for the Italians nor for the Jews. When it comes to Americans, have this whole mentality of I must evacuate the nest, I must start my own nest, and you know the the grandparents would then go into the old folks' home and everybody would be separated. This is yeah, actually like some fifties atomization type. Yeah. Of- yeah. And I'm not a big fan of that. And I think you can have both. Like you can both, let's say, start young as far as like I got my first job when I was 15. I was painting cells for uh, independent for the independent animator Sigmund Bauman. I think I was one of the last That's cell cool. painters on Earth. But uh, anyway, you know, like you start young to focus on a career and stuff like that. But at the same time, just this need to completely differentiate yourself from your family. I think there's something waspish about it, even though I don't find yeah, that to I, be the I case in England. Very much so. I agree. With yeah, that. I don't get the you shame. Europeans do. They don't. They don't usually leave home until they're like thirty. I mean, yeah, it's easy to think about when you consider the fact that the divorce rate is literally like fifty percent. It's like, what am I going to do? You know, if like if both yeah. of my parents were still married and we've lived in this one house together for my whole childhood, it would be one thing. But I think the problem is a lot of people, especially in the United States, like their parents are renting an apartment. There's no such thing as a family home. The parents are divorced, so that kind of thing is just not as common. Like for me, my parents were divorced. I think I was fourteen when my parents divorced. And Damn. we lived in separate houses and, you know, then my mom was renting an apartment. It's like, where are we going to live forever while I'm having children? You know, so it's like moving out as 18 is like the ideal at that point. Yeah. So I think that's that's part of it. It's well, funny because for me, it's like the opposite um, where right. my parents still together. Amazing relationship. My, they have a house that's paid off. And I've, you know, lived in my apartment now since uh, 2014 and friends like have called me crazy it's like dude your parents have an awesome house just go live there and live rent free i'm like honestly i love them to death and they're the best parents i could ever have but like nothing beats living on your own it comes yeah True. but it, it yeah. comes from that anglo wasp sort of uh, ethos like sending your kid like the british model of like sending your kids off to boarding school there's like that level of detachment from that like, for example, us Mediterraneans can't understand. There's sort of like that purposeful hardness, but I feel that that's becoming a thing of the past now. I mean, they call us millennials, the boomerang generation, because like the boomer, like socioeconomic uh, reality isn't there anymore. And especially now with the whole um, bullshit, uh, you know, because we're on YouTube, let's call it the Chinese imported delicacy uh, <laughs> because of that. I don't know, man. The last time we imported yeah. a Chinese and delicacy, f- it fucking ruined the world. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, well, yeah, yeah, I guess so. Um, but yeah, it's uh, that, that reality is quickly becoming like untenable for most people unless you're going to like, I don't know, live in some fucking pod complex, like yeah. uh, some tiny home shit. Eating the bugs. Telling the hipsters. Yeah. So. so will these be the eating two realities bugs then? Or eating Oatly. Apparent, well, Oatly is going after some big Twitter accounts. Is, have Oatly. you seen this? It's like the commercial with like the fat kid. And being a fat kid myself, I mean, I felt uh, it's this like company where they're selling like this bullshit ice cream, but they're trying to go after uh, right wing Twitter. It's like really mm-hmm. this really weird. Just type up Oatly UK on Twitter. They're like this, like the... The, the intern that's running the fucking thing is just going schizo. It's hilarious. But uh, if you know what if you're in the know. Fuck you. Uh, Thank you. But yeah, you're going to eat soy. You're going to eat uh, seed oil. You're going to eat uh, what bugs. What is this thing with seed oil that I just started hearing about? Well, because they, they, want, they don't want you to uh, bask in the nutrients of the uh, pure Mediterranean olive oil. They want you to... Uh, Eat uh, seed oils that promote uh, bodily inflammation and uh, excess Same thing fat with vegetable storage. oil. Vegetable oil, if yeah, you look at like no the good. chart when vegetable oil was introduced to the American diet and when the rate of heart attacks went up, it's like directly linked go. to vegetable oil yeah. and not like butter and red meats like well, everybody it's like, says. But I think it's because but they had olive to is like a fruit. Uh, olive oil is supposedly, it's supposed to be better. What, I think what about uh, what even about straight up fat better. is supposed to what, be better. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, lard, lard. I've been on a, I've been on a straight carnivore diet for two years, like literally full on carnivore, like only meat. It's the best thing I've ever done. Yeah, no vegetable be, oil, nothing. So you you're gotta Michaela, be the, you're uh... Michaela Peterson pilled. <laughs> Basically, well, I learned Michaela it. Peterson. I learned it. Michaela Peterson. Else, hey, Michaela Peterson looks yes. great. Uh, 
when to go yeah. psychosis do not research yes. do not research jordan peterson <laughs> when to go psychosis well, but, one, uh, of the, one of the benefits of, uh, of uh of fake pandemic real virus is uh terrence <laughs> lost a lot of weight and stopped eating carbs because of it well, yeah because i i to this day i when was it uh december 12th was when i got it and i still don't really have my sense of smell or taste up to 100 percent I have really? it back. Allegedly. I have it back. It's just not strong. It is still it is still very weak. Yeah, My but you barely eat carbs thing. now. Right? But yeah. Huh? You barely eat carbs now, right? I mean, like when it comes I've been eating a little bit more because like I said, I do have a sense of a sense of taste back. So yeah. like I can if I had a pizza, I could probably taste it. But it's like, you know, I've just been drinking water straight uh because for like almost a month flat i didn't taste anything so i was like fuck it i don't care i'll just drink water so how and much now i've actually just gotten cia paying you to say this what <laughs> how much is the cia paying you to say this <laughs> trust my me my sister said the same thing though she only lost her taste of sense and smell but no no other symptoms like that was her only symptom basically oh, no, she no, couldn't no, no. smell I got it taste wild, i got sick. that was my only symptom as well yeah well, I, had, my, yeah. I had some muscle pain in here and there i haven't and, gotten uh, it <laughs> I'm what like, is this screen over here? Breathing for like maybe a couple days, but the uh, the government told me I had it, but I didn't. Seventy five percent of men. Uh, this is the 75... only company that has this really strange, like cult like commercial. It's really weird. It just it t it ticks all the boxes off. Put it that way. Um, Interesting. We're gonna have to take a look at that later. Uh, but, but yeah, uh, when I had it, like you know, thank God I you know me and my folks are all right, but. Then I kind of knew the whole thing was a psyop, but uh, <laughs> no, I just had like a few muscle yeah. pain. No, but to, to, be, well, no. to be fair, we also have a relatives who have had it, and well, relatives like friends, of relatives who have had it, and one guy who uh, died, who was like a really fit guy, like he was, you know, like in his fifties or something, but he was fit, and he ended up dying from it. So it is a weird thing. Like, I can't say like just because you. Yeah, but there's experience... always going to be those exceptions. Yeah, there's people always going to be outliers. Flu. Even people that are healthy can do... die from the flu. People yeah, if you if you look up the flu death rates from like 2016, 2017, and compare them to the COVID death rates it's right now, the they're they're almost yeah. exactly. I was hospitalized from the flu at like 17. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, oh, it sure. happens. Yeah. I was healthy. I mean, yeah. I was active. I was in all kinds of sports. It happens, you know. You know who doesn't get COVID? Smokers. Sorry. That's well, true. That's exactly. That is true. That's probably what saved my old man because he's been smoking for 40 years. For like 10 years. Do you miss the, uh, the the jewel vapes, by the way? Because are, are those uh, still banned? Yeah, I don't even want to talk about it. It's a sore subject uh, for me. So in, in city right now, you can't get the you can't get any flavored jewels. No, just Unless, like yeah. the shitty really? tobacco. It's just menthol, right? Can you yeah. can you still get menthol? No you, can't, no, you can't get menthol. You can't get menthol can't get, either. Nah, Jesus Christ. Unless unless Man. you got, this is why that, that that is menthol. That's why you just gotta smoke those extremely healthy cigarettes. Are you going to send your volume is low, dude? Your guy trusts you and he gives you the shit he got under the counter. Yeah. Yeah. Are you up your volume a bit? There is also a stream that we are going to be doing this Friday with the uh, Raw Egg Nationalist. And uh, his diet is one that I have been trying out here and there. How it's done is you get a bunch of milk, and I have raw milk. You get some, actually, no, you, I use raw half and half. That's what you got to use the raw half and half. I put like seven eggs in that thing, raw eggs. I put that in a blender. Ugh. Also, I may add some, um, uh, some sweetener, like a, um, uh, a high quality uh, maple syrup. I put that in there, and then that is the thing that I drink, and it tastes great, and I feel good. Now, the only problem, though, is that my body's still getting used to raw milk. Milk in general, it's never really been that good tolerating, but this is like A2, A2 milk. Eventually, I think it's going to get better. Maybe it's a matter of supplementing on certain enzymes. But anyway, the point is, is that these are things that people are rediscovering right now and seeing, like... You know, we don't need to eat all this fucking bread all the time. I mean, Gio, like, I know that you're a fan of, like, you know, Italian cuisine, you know, pasta is really nice. Yeah, I, but... think, I think diet is based off genetics and uh, genetic yeah. memory, in my opinion. I think, like, you know, someone who is Mediterranean, 
genetically as opposed to someone who is from, I don't know, sub-Sahara. Like it, you shouldn't be eating grains if you are of a particular genetic stock. It depends on your ancestry. Yeah. That's a hundred percent true. It depends on yeah. where, mm. where you develop your That's racist your diet. though. So yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, but, all, but though, uh, as an Italian, that's like you need to eat when, uh, a certain amount of red sauce a week. Well, yeah. see, you know what sucks? You just gotta plug, you know plug it sucks? into your veins. Yeah. I'm Italian and we eat lasagna for every Christmas. Like I've, I've always, I've been raised in my Italian family. I have a gluten allergy. Oof, that sucks. Brutal. Mm. Ready to pass? Yikes. Yeah, that's like when your parents, Bugs. when you were younger Bugs. and your parents told you to like, oh, finish your dinner because they're starving kids in Africa. And it's like, actually, mom, uh, those kids can't process pasta. <laughs> Check me. <laughs> Libs owned. <laughs> but, but even though that's the case, we still have like uh, North Koreans who are in height different from South Koreans. It doesn't take that long maybe to change a lot of these uh, genetic factors. Well, they're, too. they're just malnourished as shit. And they have yeah. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Like they don't fucking eat over yeah, there. If you're malnourished, yeah. you're not going to grow to your potential height. I don't know if you've yeah. ever seen that guy. Uh, it's a Russian guy, Anton uh, Anton Gerzen. He like fucking smuggled himself into North Korea as a lawyer rather than a journalist. So he got way more like freedom to, to actually go around the around the country. And he goes to like the countryside and shit. And he's literally like, yeah, here's guys like they have no jobs and they're fucking like clipping grass with scissors and yeah. eating rats and shit like they have nothing right. over there they have absolutely I, I bet this cat would love to eat some rats about now right <laughs> oh she's so annoying <laughs> she can't just sit in my lap if she's here with me she has oh, there's another, another one yeah she's she bothering you <laughs> I mean, oh, we talk about a Russian guy smuggling himself in North Korea. This cat snuggled herself yeah. into uh, your lap of love. <laughs> yeah. That was a horrible joke, but I like it. I've got plenty of them. No, this is my training to be a dad. I think if you tell enough dad yeah, jokes, yeah, of you bring it out into the universe. You, <laughs> you know, gotta have the dad bod, the bod though, though, too. Dude, dude, you're ready to be a dad when you're like ready to like fist fight people over like forgetting the lights on. <laughs> <laughs> like one of my roommates does that shit. I walk in the living room, nobody's there. Living room light is on. Hallway light is on. Kitchen light is on. Bathroom light is on. Complaining about this last night. Only light in the neighborhood. That or you you feel somebody touch. You can just have like spider sense when somebody touches the thermostat. That's the other side. I don't have the thermostat. I wish I did, dude. My my (laughs) landlord keeps this shit at like seventy three degrees. Like I I, dude, sweating my balls off in my room. Well, the uh, the worst. I mean, there is something that certain dads have when it comes to not liking when the uh, heat is on. Like when yeah. a radiator is on and somebody opens a window. Now, yeah, yeah. I, but here's the thing though: the radiators, from what I read, they were invented like their particular, you know, that that whole style of radiator. It mm-hmm. was invented in the twenty, uh, no, pre twenties after or you know, like during the plague, you know, yeah. because we did go through a plague back then with the Spanish flu for the express purpose of having circulation in your room right. while still having uh, the room be heated. So what the fuck, like? Tell me how it works, because I am not an engineer. <laughs> when it comes to the window being open and the radiator is on, how does that affect the bill? Or what happens? So it's all it's all heat transfer because mm. uh, everything moves from hot to cold. So when, like that's like how you can develop a draft in your house is if there's like if you have any sort of like temperature gradient. So like it's cold outside, it's warm inside. So the the heat from inside is literally just going out. Like that's just mm-hmm. how it happens. That like mm. the air circulation thing sounds a little sketchy, where like the windows are closed, the air is still circulating. Um, are you t- you're talking about like the big like metal grate radiators? Yeah, right? you're not yeah, talking yeah. about like you're not talking about like air vents. No. Yeah, no, that's not gonna or that's not gonna circulate air because it's not it's not going anywhere. Like you'll have like some minor circulation if let's say uh, your only one room has the radiator in it and you need to heat the whole house. Then yeah, eventually all that heat is gonna like very slowly transfer throughout the house, but. If if the if if you have like the exact same temperature throughout your whole house, there's no temperature gradient, so there's no there's not going to be any airflow. Mm, I see. Yeah, I just cool like science air. lesson, nerd. Fuck <laughs> <laughs> you. This was the this was the dad portion <laughs> of the uh, sewing this discourse. This is the gayest part of the whole screen. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Dad. Shit. Come shovel my porch. <laughs> <laughs> if you were wait, wait, doing wait, that hold on the podcast, why would you shovel like, your porch? Oh, it doesn't make any sense. Easy ten minutes to cut. <laughs> what the wait, fuck? Uh, it doesn't have an awning. <laughs> James, it doesn't have an awning. 
Sure. James, do you, do you want to be a dad? James, do you want to, you know, have Dude, kids? I can't even think about ever being a dad until I actually have enough money. To, to hey, do James that. would be a great dad because he already gets pissed off at the littlest shit. It's true. This guy but runs women the posting their owls. Like he has to find a woman first. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you know, like would you? Would you? Like dead ass no, want a child up, from any of the women like... that you've screen ca- or sent screen caps of that are on women posting their L's. Well, have you as question, that thought ever have you would you ever uh have a child with one of the women that you've posted on women posting their L's? Um I mean look, there's there's definitely some women on there that um that the only I one post- I could think of was the one where it said uh I nutted inside of her and she's handing me crystals. Yeah. That one. That would be uh, the only one. But uh. there, there's definitely some um some women on there that are have not taken too hard of L's that they are not uh ruined. They're not totally irredeemable. Yeah, they're not totally irredeemable. And I totally so. cut off Jessica. So I'm very sorry. Yeah. I don't remember what I was saying. It's fine. Woman, woman, ignore me. <laughs> James, so she's posted if you... her L right there. <laughs> James, <laughs> she posted quite a yeah, few Matt. L's. Luckily he didn't follow me back then, so it's if fine. You, what's... If, if wait, you got together I, I... Oh. All right, never mind. If you, what, Matt? if you got together with one of the uh, if you got together with one of the girls from women posting their L's um, and you guys got like married and had a kid, would you continue posting her L's? Hey, man, Ooh, if she's question. my wife and she her, keeps it posting it her L's, you bet your ass I'm going to fucking keep <laughs> no, that no, content no. going. So, it could be so, a good uh, <laughs> it could be a good psyop right there. So Twitter she, account mothers posting their L's. She she posts con- <laughs> she keeps posting L's that she makes up and gives me the content and uh it's just a vicious cycle like that. And, You'd have uh, to post the, the your wedding photo because that would be her. <laughs> <laughs> man. Oh, oh Beardson yeah, oh, posting man. the wedding photo Damn. on her Twitter. Beat me to it. I was gonna say something like that. <laughs> posting your L's by marrying the posting L's and guy. Le- you, you, yeah. leak, you leak the consummation. Like, look at this poor woman. <laughs> look, at he, look at who she had to fuck on her wedding night. <laughs> Best is if he marries like a very tall woman. And it's like him, like just fucking five foot nine next to like some tall chick. I'm he six foot, him. Geo, please. Six foot, sorry. I'm, I'm pardoned. A thousand pardons. The guy yeah, that. Well, well, Danny DeVito oh, managed to do it, tell. right? Danny DeVito's got a. Dude, his hot, wife hot is wife. like. His ex wife, rather, is like oh. an inch or two taller than him. Oh. <laughs> She's oh, also. Okay. Cri- that is kind of a short. stupid, like, I don't know. Like, I know the height thing is is a biological imperative, but it just, I don't know. It seems like. Something you can't change is height doesn't know. matter if you have money. That's all mm. that matters. Like that if you're tall you have and have, if you have no an money, attitude of money. If that. you're but, tall and have no money, it's better than if you're short and have your money. Because at least totally. if you're tall, you have yeah. something. To like <laughs> but here, here's a here's if you're controversial. Short and have money, you can put up with the shortness because you True. have the money. You know. But also, you can become rich. You can't become taller. <laughs> Well, oh, you can put true. yourself on the bed and then just yeah. crank it a little bit <laughs> they, every day. They do have know? the they do have those surgeries where they like break your bones and like reconstruct them. That, and shit. Oh, yeah. That, yeah, that was on Gattaca. But I like, got that with my penis. But you still need money for that. Like it's <laughs> okay. expensive. It's like a full body jelking that that goes on. I was gonna say that like jelking. <laughs> but, uh, but okay, this is gonna be a little bit controversial. But it's like when it comes to the guy who played Mini Me. So back to Austin Powers here. Mini Me, the guy who played Mini Me. Yeah, R. he R. he R. married Shore. somebody who was in a similar condition as him, and they had kids who were in a similar. No, was it him or the other guy? Because I don't know maybe it wasn't Vern Troyer. Maybe it was the guy who was uh, with uh, Ricky Gervais, who was uh, from Willow. You know who I'm talking about? You never watched Willow back in the day? No, yeah, short... he was also the guy that played R2D. Yes, yeah, I can't yes, yes, uh, not, yes. No, uh, played... Wicked no. from Star Wars. I can't. Oh, yeah, he was the furry guy in Star Wars. I don't remember the who Ewok he was. or Chewbacca? Ewok, yes. Yeah, we, yeah he, was, <laughs> Ewok. he was Wicked. Wicked, Terrence, the Ewok. Jesus. Yes, exactly. So, so anyway, like, they had kids, and their kids inherited the same condition of being small as the parents did. So when it comes to, like, you know, decisions that matter, it's like, you are bringing Eugenics people... talk, everyone! <laughs> you know, it's so funny that we're bringing this up, because my, my fiancé and I were oh. just talking about this recently. Oh, she didn't want to have kids with a retarded guy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Really enough, that's why she she's marrying me. <laughs> I, I, I specifically yeah. want retarded kids. She, she just, I, I mean, whoever ends up marrying me well, is gonna be a to, woman with a retard fetish. So. You need to get a two autistic, uh, autistic woman, autistic male, and you have to create a super, a, a super race of, uh, 
You have to that that will be the, the when Nietzsche you know Highly talks about the philosophers of the future. <laughs> you have to be careful who you ask though, because some people will say autistic women don't exist. Oh, they, oh, no, exist, they exist. They exist. The there's, there's there's people that that gatekeep autism. <laughs> I, I think they, don't they say that oh, yeah. autistic women are different though? Like they have almost like similar personalities to men. Then I mean, look at how much Jug talks about astrology. She's autistic, and I love her. Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> every well, the connection. Have, every fe- almost. Well, every astrology is aut- autism. Astrology is autism for women. Exactly. <laughs> well, yeah, how, how is you... racism That's for not, women? But oh yes. <laughs> now, how would you define autism? I know that there's like an official definition for autism, but it's been so you know besmirched by other definitions. So, what is the proper definition for autism? The proper there's definition like is when you definition. act like me or Terrence or Arsen or Matt or Beardson. I feel like the proper or definition. GM. No, I feel like the proper definition for autism is whenever a parent gets tired of you, you're autistic. <laughs> That's fair. So there's like a medical like, definition for autism, and then there's like the internet definition. Exactly the internet yeah. definition. Well, the, the internet definition like, for autism is just like like you can be autistic in a subject. You can be autistic, like you can be acting autistic without being autistic. You know, yeah, yeah. of course. There, there's a, a. I remember coming across this article. I forget. I think it might have been <laughs> Borzy. It might have been Borzy. I forget who. The internet makes you autistic. I think it was Borzy that said that. You know, one hundred percent fact. Yeah. It, it was that. Yeah, it was either Borzy or Bab, but it was uh, about the social dynamics that were created from the early internet. And even up until the 2010s, basically created what people refer to as internet autism in that because of uh, largely through anonymity, because of like through posting and through content that's generated from the lack of like social cues that are in meat space. This creates like a whole generation of kids who basically have autistic traits of obsessiveness, lack of social cues, but also this sort of weird fixations that can create things that are quite uh interesting but that being said it's like nowadays it seems that the internet is going towards this like they're going to colonize the the zoomers with it this like tiktok model of like well now we got to go back to dot you know having your face everywhere and having Mm. your real name and shit and it's uh the the fact that corporations want even more normies on the internet is sort of like getting rid of the original autistic ethos of what it was like to be on the internet back like i would say at least before maybe like 20 2010 or something now it's like all it's all bullshit it's all uh i think the furries are the last stronghold of like true internet (laughs) oh maybe maybe. Uh, they're the the last ones who've hung in there the longest like they haven't they haven't like whitewashed or like watered down their fucking movement at all they're just like nope we still just want to fuck dogs. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, to be fair, that's like, there are certain people within the furry community, like uh, uh, Kiro the Wolf and the Zoo Crew. But, uh, right. you know, we had furries on who were not about that, that but is, they were the about more... You know what that is makes me nervous. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, we have uh, we have Brittany Venti in the chat. She says she is here for Jess, so welcome, Brittany. I no was way. This, I, yeah, I was this close to meeting you at the uh, Skankfest uh, comedy festival back in the day, and your friend well, was making was too a lot nervous of nervous to go and talk to a girl IRL. I know I was in line. <laughs> I was in line, good sir. I was waiting. She was too to... pretty. I got nervous. <laughs> she is anyway, very pretty. Anyway, anyway Brittany knows just all a good the way like mine. that Apu Pepe with like his fucking pants all wet. <laughs> 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 shout out to by the way, shout out to my friend Julia who is friends with Brittany IRL. Queen so Julia, Julia is also a queen and I love her very nice. much. And yeah, uh, Cream on Wizard, four- hold on, five dollars, five dollars from Cream Wizard who says carbs are autism. Yes, Cream Wizard is my new chat best friend. We've been bonding over uh low carb diets. <laughs> and being a wizard oh. of creaming things. Well, that sounds a little degenerate. I don't know about all that. It's I mean, no, cream, cream is super, great. I got some raw cream, cream from the You just had to talk, uh, like, uh, mention it, James, and already in the chat, we have milk, booba, cream. <laughs> oh, <laughs> my God. Those, those are Beardson's Fuck. people. Sorry. <laughs> well, this this would be a good opportunity for me to make an you see, this is internet autism right here, because yes. the internet... Autistic people on the internet are creating a neo... Uh, a postmodern fertility cult 
around a booba and milkies and instagram no, they're not. <laughs> I mean, so I mean, just no and you've been on 4chan there's just nobody to like kick your ass for saying that in real life that's why they do it there's no, no one like curb stop uh, you're to say like that oh, in real life are you kidding me tits. i was gonna say you Terrence, hear him say that all the time Terrence talks about milkies every day of his life in our group chat <laughs> I, I, I just i just found out what they were a week ago internet autism personified but he the only difference is that he actually has social cues Guys, why does, why does the YouTube I'm chat say I'm timed out? Was I timed out? <laughs> what? Oh, that I don't know. I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to see what's going on there. Oh no, that is horrible. How how dare how dare the YouTube chat do that? I don't know what's oh. going on there. But uh, listen, guys, you have to go to uh, Miller'sBioFarm.com. They are not an official sponsor as of yet, but I really enjoy their milk. So go to Miller's Bio Farm. Uh, and order some raw milk. They have raw milk. They have raw cream. It's really good. I'm telling you. So, Brittany Venti, go go get some of this raw milk, and maybe they could be a sponsor for your show too. So, no, we and need it's, Ab it's Abigail, a nice cow, uh, right? L Abig this. The first milk company that hires Abigail Shapiro as a spokesperson. That's they're gonna go through the <laughs> on you. I'm buying well, she had a she had a breast reduction recently. Apparently. No, it was oh. not a breast reduction. No, no. 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 Listen to the expert come out. She had a, a non-cancerous <laughs> lump. Listen to the expert. Oh, it was just there a sister. Sister. Yeah. suicide yeah. of esoteric right wing shit posters if she got breast reduction. So, yeah, yeah it was I, a I wonder, I wonder, her, her I Andy wonder if Shapiro. Ben Shapiro knows like that the whole of the internet, like weirdo right wing people have like basically like thirst posted about his sister all this time. Okay, I mean, he must Twitter come across herself. it. He must. Have you seen her Facebook? She knowingly posts pictures where her feet are in the center of the picture <laughs> that's she does right. it on I have purpose seen I have seen she does it on purpose there's no way she's smart she does it it's not that she doesn't Yerson know has a whole she's... folder of that yeah <laughs> i mean if so, you so what you're it, saying is that she's living. asking she's for it is that what you're saying <laughs> saying... Said she asks him for it no I'm she's saying, she's saying she knows actively she's like well, we should do it. a we should get to the bottom of this by inviting Gabby Shapiro on the show with Jessix and Brittany. And I, listen, just I would never. We'll have another e-girl stream. On, yeah. I would never post my feet on social media at all because you know these people are out there. Don't yeah, worry, I've already got them. I've already got them. I before bef as soon as somebody tweeted out I was going to be on the show, I got like three DMs like, "Hey, here's her feet, by the way. You want those?" <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. I'll keep them on the download. Don't worry, yeah, brother. <laughs> Beardson oh, has like man. the black market of e-girl feet pick. I do. I got them all. Oh no. You guys have Pokemon card binders. I've got a binder full of feet over here. <laughs> <laughs> Somehow I'm not. Didn't surprised. that one chick uh, chicken out? She just posted with socks on. What's her name? Tara. That was uh, that was oh, no, no that was e-girl tournament. That was many moons ago. Yeah, I've got I've got the sockless version. If you want it, just DM me later. Oh, <laughs> nice. <laughs> Oh boy! And guys, Classic don't Gearson. forget right now that there's a gap. Don't forget to fucking like subscribe. In camp feet picks. <laughs> Brittany, subscribe to our show right now. And also, I would love to have you as a guest on the Sewing Discourse with Brittany Venti here. Check out some of our other videos. We do a lot of great. Uh, like Jessica, you've been here before. So, what is your opinion of BTR? What BTR has to offer to the world? It's all right, I guess. No, don't worry. I've, <laughs> I've talked to her. I'm trying to get her on here. Don't worry. I just oh. we have to go through. You know, there's a very rigorous process with her manager and all that. No, it's just a matter of like finding a time that's good for everyone. We'll figure it out. Excellent. And, and also, and while we're, we're shilling yet again, we'll have to shill. Yeah. MK Ultra Money podcast. Go Spotify, there right now. Maybe. Yeah. Where's Spotify. your Patreon, by the way? I'm pulling that up Twitter right anywhere. now. I was literally yeah, post that too. in the middle of doing that. Let's get some fucking let's get some fucking patience. Yeah, and where's my money, bitch? I've been on like three of your premium episodes. <laughs> You're not getting any of the money. Uh, <laughs> excuse me, I haven't seen any money. <laughs> and look at this beautiful what? logo over here. This was done by five. Yeah, ultra money, more like no money. <laughs> Matt, you're not seeing any of the money because it's going to all the fucking single Pokemon cards you've been buying throughout the last month and a half. Yeah, you're yeah, like, you're no like Chris Chan. I'm paying, like Chris I'm paying, Chan I'm paying with Legos. I bowed, dude. Yeah, I paid for that Bianca Full Art. I know I did. <laughs> Let's just go to James's house and kick his ass until he pays us what he owes. I, I had to recoup the cost of all the equipment, which I only just hit. That sounds okay. like a you or, problem. Or almost yeah, there. that does sound like it's a, a you problem. problem. I'm not going to lie. So, Oh, by the I'm way, sorry for the people... I spent close to a grand on equipment, guys. It's a podcast, not a movie. Equipment. What are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> 
By the way, for the people, great on uh, equipment. Buy, so, buying nice equipment like this and the mic and the arms and just, you know. Hang on, we're going to do we're going to do an evaluation here. How much is that? Arm? <laughs> <laughs> By the way, for the people who are wondering what the fuck is behind me, it's a nutcracker that my father created, Alexander Polyakov, and here you could see the nutcracker in his full glory. So uh, if you become a Patreon, patreon.com slash break the rules, he is going to make uh, wooden uh, magnets. Right now he is working on a definitely legit wooden magnet that's going to be done real soon and uh, other magnets as well. Uh, he's going to do a fat lioness. I'm not going to say Nala because it's legally speaking, it's not Nala. It has nothing to do with Lion King. It is a inflated n lioness wooden you magnet. You almost said Nala. <laughs> oh, fuck. <laughs> so, yeah. And uh, it'll be done, and maybe somebody will turn it into a beautiful medallion that they will proudly wear at the uh, real-life BTR meetup that we're right, going to so have. Just because of that, I'm not going to subscribe to the Patreon. <laughs> well, if you subscribe to the MK Ultra Money Patreon, no matter if the money goes to me, mm -hmm. Terrence, or Matt, it's all going to fund the same thing, and that is shiny cardboard, baby. Sorry, nice. yeah, I'm going to have to. I'm going to have to give that one a pass too. Yeah, we're going on, I'm going on strike, dude. Yeah. Our, um, <laughs> yes, calm down. It's better Pokemon cards than Funko Pops. Hold on, you guys remember this? This is the the Japanese Neo set over here. Hey! What the so, fuck? I got yeah. that. Yeah, this this brings back some memories, doesn't it? Look oh, at these guys over shit. here. Terrence, Martin said you still owe him a Patreon sketch since he's the $25 tier. Of what? I don't know. Martin, what do you want? Terrence is your little cock slave, so. I'm he getting the $25 set yeah. somewhere, though. What? That twenty-five dollars is getting to me somehow. I don't care if it's by you or Matt, but someone's giving me twenty-five dollars. <laughs> Terrence, suck a dick. Uh, uh, all right, yeah, that's awesome. Come up. Oh my god! Oh, the green screen. Uh. That peach so, is actually a playable card too. Yeah, that's uh, that's from the second uh, Neo's uh, promo. Uh, yeah. All I see is the Binder. fucking Nutcracker. I want to see Pokemon. Well, we already <laughs> talked about uh, autism, so. <laughs> Yeah. Matt, look, Terrence, look why, don't, why don't you guys talk about some of your uh, your favorite moments from the, the first season of making the podcast? Uh, uh, honestly, still to this day, uh, one I of can the... tell you what my least favorite one was. What? What? It What's your least my favorite? favorite? Uh, driving to the city. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Uh, Matt, we had some very heartfelt moments driving. Yeah, back heartfelt city moments of Terrence when just I was like, strong like bewilderingly bashing me with venom knowledge <laughs> I, yes i was venom explaining while you were while i was drunk yeah <laughs> go ahead Terrence. tell no, you tell, honestly, tell your favorite well, moment so, and I'll, I'll think of one one of my favorites is still that pokemon episode man it's just it was so good the first one we did for pokemon the first movie yeah that was an early episode too i uh, know that i think that was almost that was a, a what 2019 well yeah that's when uh, we started doing it terrence <laughs> i mean in november is what i meant to say november of 2019 yeah. um it was just just getting drunk that that was fun and i think that was the night where i actually because matt left uh matt left and i decided to stay and i think i left at like 12 or 1 but i actually for the first time and i know i'm getting old when that happened uh, I fell asleep on the fucking train, <laughs> and then I I woke up in fucking Babylon. So for uh, and for I took, explain that to people that don't know Long Island. I I was getting to the asshole. Uh, so I live on Long Island, and Babylon is almost all the way. Well, not all the way down, but it's pretty much from Babylon to New York is probably about I don't I want to say an hour and thirty minutes, and then. Uh, from where I live, uh, I had to take an Uber, and that call, and that's was like what another forty minutes, give or take. So it was literally the last station. I woke up. Uh, the one of the fucking conductors woke me up, so I had to pay for an Uber to take me all the way home, and that was that was fun. Now Classic I don't understand the naming of ba okay. So they have Babylon. They also have uh, Jericho. Now, Jericho was a city that was destroyed by the Hebrews in the, the Old Testament. Why would you name your town after that? <laughs> now, bro, I a don't lot, fucking know. It's just funny words. A lot of Long Island towns are named... A, no, Terrence, shut the fuck up. It's just a funny lot of, words. A lot of Long Island town names are named after um, 
Native American tribes that that settled on Long Island. That is same true. thing here in Florida. That's just, yeah. that's the same thing. Our, yeah, but that's our not a big lake is is named after a tribe. But that's not a tribe though. Babylon is not a tribe. It was an that's ancient biblical, city. Yeah. It's no, not. Got, it's not. I don't. Yeah. I don't no, know it, 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 it got to. Too, it got too big for its britches when it built that Tower of Babel, and then God struck it down and made everybody forget uh, the universal uh, Adamic language or whatever. So I don't know. Well, like, it, why would you name of, your city that? So Long Island is built up of two counties, Nassau County and Suffolk County, and Babylon is the town that's pretty much all the way at the end of Nassau County. Uh, it's actually one of the last, if not the last town in Nassau before you go into Suffolk. Terrence, Babylon is Suffolk. Oh, it is? <laughs> yeah. All Hold right. On, let let well, me take a look. Suffolk for, County. For, for the people who care about Long Island geography. <laughs> <laughs> I think they named by it the way, By the way, Francis E. Deck was also from Nassau County. That's where he was disbarred yeah. from being a lawyer in Nassau County in Hempstead, New York. Mm. Uh, and oh, Hempstead's by the way, shithole. Hempstead's great if you want to get robbed. <laughs> Well, he yeah, called it. He fun. called it a, uh, and a quote, low, deadly, n-word town, old house that he lived in. So, uh, and and it's gone now. Like if you go to Google Maps and try to find that house, it's just yeah, it's uh, been demolished. Yes. By the way, check out my podcast I did it with Jeffrey uh, Schulberg, Schulenberger. Well, um, so where I talk about Francis E. Deck. <laughs> um, Long Island does this awesome thing that when a town gets too ghetto, they just rename it. Wait, really? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, um, similar to Hempstead, there's this another terrible, uh, uh, another terrible town on Long Island. It's called Wine Dance. That they, oh, recently they renamed, renamed it Wheatley West Heights to try to sound fancy. Wait, what? No, no, no. Wine Dance. They renamed Wheatley Heights. Oh, what the fuck? Yeah. I didn't know about that. Uh huh. I, I don't know if the whole town, but I know like the the absolute shitty part, like on the south. They renamed Wheatley Heights. Oh, that man. sounds so much nicer than Wine Dance. Yeah, well, if you drive through there, you're like, oh, Wheatley Heights, that sounds so nice. And then, like, you get robbed Sight. at gunpoint at a stop sign. Wait, so yeah. so which are the bad neighborhoods in Babylon? I mean, in, um, in yeah. Long Island? Like, yeah. which are the ones Wine you avoid? Dance, Brentwood, Hempstead. Um, a good chunk of Nassau County. Um, the whole like, fucking place H- Huntington is Station, <laughs> even though Huntington has some of the nicest parts of Long Island, Huntington mm. Station specifically is dog shit. But then when you go forward to Suffolk County, like, I don't know, the Hamptons or whatever, that area is pretty safe. It's just a bunch, of old, yeah, just so a bunch of old white people. It's just them rich white folks. Yeah. And it's what too about far like, out. Uh, like, I never even yeah. go out. I've been to the Hamptons, like, twice. Like, once for a party in high school and then once for the film festival. The, and, like, other than that, I think I went, I went out on North Shore far out once with one of my friends um and then other than that it's just like it's way too far out that there's no reason to go that that deep on long island yeah the, yeah. Hamptons, the hamptons is really nice but like there's no there's not even cell phone service out there it's like the fucking no. sticks like it, it sucks because every, at the end of like uh the beginning of the summer i would always go to bond Soak with my folks and like the place is beautiful it's you know it's good beach area it's great food but yeah it's nothing but like woods uh, cell phone service, you get dick. It's nothing, but it's it's nice to look at. But you know, that's that's about it. I, I I couldn't live there. I missed out on going to Barty Born when I was like early twenties, uh, which you went to do quite Barty Born after after uh, <laughs> after yeah after the the virus that shall not be named. Um, they're they're never gonna reopen. Ever. No way, Matt. You want to explain to them what Barty no Barn is? Yeah, so Bordy Barn is this uh, is this Long Island spot out in Hampton Bays in Suffolk County where they only open for the summer and they're only open on the weekends. So they're only open Saturday, Sunday from June to the first two weeks of September. And it's an outdoor bar, essentially, on like a sand pit that you just you have to get there at like eight o'clock in the morning to stand on line until noon when they open to even get a spot inside you pay 20 bucks and then it's two dollar bud lights the entire entire time that you're in there and every, everyone is just absolutely wasted covered uh, in smiley face they stickers yeah covered in these sticks so they give you these reams of stickers when you walk in of smiley faces and you're so pretty much the the basics of the stickers are is you're supposed to go up to to people of the or 
I was going to say the opposite sex with the people, the people that you're attracted to put a sticker on them, make out with them and then go to the next person. And the person that has the most stickers is quote unquote, the hottest person in the bar. <laughs> I feel like this can't exist anymore for obvious reasons. And well, yeah. yeah. well the, the problem is, is that you had to wait so long online and it's like the middle of the summer. It's like fucking 95 degrees degrees outside you're drinking on the party bus that you took with 50 of your friends there and before you even walk through the door you're blackout drunk i'm so oh. pissed i missed out on that <laughs> I'm noah so hugbox well, did you miss out on that or i mean you're pretty much at the age well, right like, now I, where it's, uh, it's weird how new york I think I just just to talk about yeah. new york all the time what's up noah what's <laughs> up fellas it's been two weeks it's been one week okay i'm not gonna yeah, yeah. <laughs> the whole thing that Although thought, I did, were you talking about mind. getting blackout oh, yeah. drunk? Is that what we were talking about? <laughs> no, we were we were talking about this place on Long Island uh, that will never exist again because of uh, Chinese epidemic. But uh, it's called Bordy Barn, where pretty much um, you just get super blackout drunk at and take a party bus to in the Hamptons and pure degeneracy. But it's like really just people in their early twenties that do it mm. for the most part. And with with how close everyone is in proximity, there will just never open up again. Oh, absolutely not. Mm. They actually, they, they, so there's a disclaimer when you walk through the door uh, that all the, all like the bus drivers and all the security guards say to you that if you're here without your significant other and you have a significant other, text them and break up with them now. <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah. Oh, man. I also like looking at some of the big mansions around, like, uh, East Hampton. There's this one mansion, which I call the Fuck You Mansion, which is built by this guy who has a, you know, very bad job history as far as, you know, polluting and doing all kinds of seedy stuff. But this mansion, the neighbors complain because it has a helicopter pad, so he lands his fucking helicopter there and just makes a lot of noise for everybody, but he doesn't give a fuck. You know, there are some people out there like that, so... Uh... That's how I want to be. Like, what's, what's the point yeah. of having neighbors except like getting them to fucking hate you exactly, oh, exactly. and he, he's he's distance enough that i think uh, he doesn't even mind that like his entire let me see if i could load that up but while i'm loading that up once again all new people don't forget to subscribe right fucking now what are you doing not subscribing this is the greatest show in the internet history and we are so honored to have all these beautiful people I mean, it's here. definitely not that but it's yes it is fuck you it is that this is your day it's supposed hilarious. to be yes and uh noah hugbox how have you been my friend what have you been up to while i'm searching for this mansion i've been excellent i've been working on a stupendous new video lately that i'm very excited for what is, excited. This, is this what is this video <laughs> it's about dream oh uh, he we're, didn't we're attack you on culture. reddit first he didn't attack you on reddit first huh <laughs> I was watching that stream today. Bro, oh, I I'm was literally, like, I literally... I've been watching this whole thing because obviously, like, I'm mutual with all of them, like John Swan and Nick and yeah. stuff. And he just went fucking off on his stream today, but in like the worst way. His stream was terrible. He didn't, uh, I don't know, whatever. I, anyway. I was, what, I was what watching is that stream and that about? sounded like he did this stream where, like, he went after this dude, John Swan, who I think that he came. Either he or Nick came after me in the past, and I like it was didn't... it was Nick, yeah. Nick yeah, I didn't passed. even because like... of the Carson thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I like didn't even give a fuck to respond that much at my size. And then this dude with like sixteen million, whatever, whatever he has, decides to go yeah. and do a fucking stream about it, where he's yeah. like, I infiltrated their Discord server and I had spies all around. Like, <laughs> what the fuck is wrong with you, dude? And the entire time he's talking like this kind of like like kind of like what a kid you're playing a game and like he doesn't know how to insult you you know what i mean like <laughs> i was like i was watching this and i was this is last night i started typing the script to this video unbeknownst to me that this was going on and then i woke up today and i watched that stream and i was literally in tears like i was literally laughing so fucking hard because yep. i was like what the hell is going on is it like what yep. is this discourse yeah it, Wait, it what is bad. this in re reference to though like what what is this uh thing somebody about? made like a fake account of dream that was like spamming the n-word to people 
No, it okay, was, listen. So like, basically, how was our send doing it? Actually, <laughs> basically, and, um, and I'm gonna do it 200 more times today. Basically, uh, John Swan was was making is helping somebody make a video about Dream. So Dream saw that and decided to like slander him on some small subreddit, saying that he did this and that, which there isn't a whole lot of proof for. Basically, he accused John Swan of impersonating Dream and DMs with people. Sending multiple fans of Dream the N word and all kinds of sexual oh, solicitations wow. and stuff like that. But then the receipts that he pulled out on Dream didn't show any N word. It showed one, he said the word sex once, but it wasn't like a sexual comment. You know what I mean? Stuff like that. He was that. just so talking about all the gay sex he has. Yeah, essentially. <laughs> with, I with, guess. Uh, with people of the African American community. <laughs> yeah. So it's, it's weird. And then Dreams, Dreams, uh, stream about it was like you know it's his his fans are the type of fans where you you know he could say pretty much anything and they're gonna agree with him you know it's just one of those relationships with his fans so, so he, he can, can make start- one point that sounds good and then none of the other points have to make any sense and they'll just act like it's all so jess what good. you're telling me is that he has an army of 18 million 14 year olds 14 year olds exactly that yes. he can turn into the biggest racist of all time he yes. also and the, minute, the minute that there's a face to i wish i had turns out he is probably ugly then they're probably not going to be a fan of him anymore yeah how are you like, like, apparently... 18 million and haven't been face docs wait who insane. is dream though maybe i'm just a he's, minecraft he's YouTuber. yeah he's, he's this minecraft dude that okay. says he's like i figured out how to exploit the algorithm perfectly so i would grow yeah. and i always knew yeah. that I, i'm like it's, he's a very intense competitive oh. youtube kind of guy is what i get but he also said in that stream which absolutely slayed me was he was saying that uh, whatever 12, 14 year olds, whatever, like whatever John Swan was claiming, like hijacked his account. He was implying like, that they were well, stupid. I, yeah, he was, he was like 12 and 14 year olds don't know what the TOS is. They can't they use- They don't know what coding is. Oh yeah, I was like, <laughs> was like, what are you talking about? That's your entire hey, audience. That's exactly what I tweeted. I was like, Dream literally just insulted 95% of his audience by implying <laughs> that they don't know what coding and TOS oh. is. Yeah, like, like if you're gonna, gonna make fun of your sex, audience, like, you have to like have an audience that like from the start you're making fun of. It's, exactly, it's, it's, you have to yeah, have a make fun true. of audience. Because like that's he calls his fucking... audience kittens. He says that they're sweet, adorable kittens. Like Comptown and Red Scare have been like ripping on their audiences <laughs> like since they started, and that's like the way to go. <laughs> well, you should loathe anybody that idolizes you. False idolatry is a sin. That's right. That's true. Worship Jesus Christ, baby. You have to really install in your audience a sort of an air that you can change on a dime and that they have to uh, expect the unexpected or else it's not going to go well. It's kind of like bands that change their sound. It's like, you know, I just don't want them to get pissed off if I get like arrested for drunk driving again. (laughs) Can't do an episode for like two Mm. weeks. Yeah, I mean, but, look, if you get arrested like for drunk driving, I'm just be like, relationships he's Albanian. What do you expect, guys? <laughs> yeah. By the way, he just called that driving there. So yeah, this exactly. Is the, <laughs> this is the East Hampton mansion over here. This is the entire thing from what I gather. Damn. How many, how many children have Yo, been raped in that Xavier? mansion? Is this Professor Xavier's mansion? <laughs> there's, a, <laughs> there's a weird, there's a weird, uh, que- the, like the Riddler, like question mark thing over here that goes into it. It's right yeah, by yeah. the Riddle beach me as this, well. Batman. What is both thirteen and yeah. fifty at the same time, Batman? <laughs> this is like this thing looks foreboding, like that. Um, you know that fucking, you know that jump scare video where it's like, like the camera pan yeah. or footage of yeah. like the green grassland, and then the little zombie comes in from the corner. Dude, that thing was terrifying as a kid, man. Oh, yeah, for sure. Kids will never know true fear growing up now, because that was true fear. Albanians aren't white, dude. I don't know what point you're trying to make. (laughs) The guy in the stream thinking he's made some fucking discovery. (laughs) Are we sure sure that that mansion's on Long Island? Because that water is way too fucking blue. No, that is the Hamptons. And this is him. This is Ira. This is Ira Rennard over here. This is in the Wikipedia. Oh, you know that guy has raped so many kids. Well, Yo, in can, Minecraft, we, eye, no, yeah. allegedly. In real life. We can't, Yo, I got to I gotta, I gotta hand got... it to whoever's making the fucking suits for the lizard people. They get better and better every year. <laughs> almost look human now. 
Dude, now, uh, Mitch McConnell eyelids. Yeah. <laughs> now his, his biography yeah. over here. Okay, so he did a uh, junk bond financing, which I'm not particularly oh. sure what exactly it is, but it doesn't sound legit. It sounds totally on the up and up. So There's his no strategy for building his company was to acquire all shares of struggling companies and to finance the acquisition by issuing junk bonds. Along the way, mm -hmm. Renner paid substantial dividends out of the business to himself. In a series of junk bond issues since '95, Renco subsidiaries have borrowed an estimated 1.5 1.1 billion and transferred 322 million 29 percent to renko group according to documents filed with the u.s securities and exchange commission uh blah 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 <laughs> uh 60 million in debt payable over eight year period uh blah 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 okay here we go uh what i want to get to environmental track record here we go so the renko group's environmental record in the u.s related to doe run provides a good example of this development uh blah 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 i'm um, trying to get to the good stuff over here uh magnesium uh, emissions uh there was some stuff about oh environmental issues in uh, missouri uh they made substantial improvements well that's nice over here so U.S. Magnesium, third largest magnesium producer in the world, uh, blah, 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 EPA, blah, blah, blah. Okay, hazardous air pollutants, something Let's of that nature. get to the part about one of them raping children. I'm, I'm trying here. It's hard. I can't. I yeah, can't. Uh... Where's this rape cave? Listen, guys. I, I, I don't rape, think Wikipedia rape, rape has things this. Are a, rape things are a story, not an event. You know, you got to watch the buildup. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's it's like a it's a yeah. It's like you have to. Sex. You got to wait for the buildup to uh, to get to the climax. You got to wait you for the buildup before out. the finishing move. Then it's over. Yeah, yeah. So. So look, look, I'm gonna hand it to the guy. At least they're making improvements in their uh, in their child sex rape dungeons track record. <laughs> Yeah, that's got, by the way. That's the, also uh, we've got the lowest pollution out of any child sex rate. <laughs> <laughs> right by the way, that's every time Mitt I see a property. How, uh, oh, go ahead. No, no, that's how Mitt Romney made his millions by becoming a corporate I'm garbage dump on venture capital. Oh, that no, I don't know about that. I mean, but he's no, a, he was basically he's a a mind is full of children. Yeah. He, the oh, reason he, he didn't get elected was because he didn't molest enough children. Well, unlike because Obama. he was part of the Mormon elites, and they don't have they have a yeah. different notion of molesting children than uh, the regular elites. They That's why he didn't. Well, there, there, was, there was that offshoot of the Mormons, the uh, fundamental church of Latter Day Saints, where they had uh, Jeffs Warren Jeffs and his father Rulon. Oh Jeffs. yes, By the way, yes, that is yeah. a great that is a great name for like a Mormon Mormon patriarchal elder Rulon. Right? Imagine like naming your on Rulon, like of course he's gonna rule things, you know. Well, the, Rulon, the Mormons they have more power than people think. They're all over the yeah, uh, yeah. intelligence agency. Mormons uh, and Nation of Islam are both like very like undercover influential groups. Yes, like, people don't talk oh. about how much influence. But my, Nation of Islam is why Michael Jackson's kids like still kept all of his fucking estate money because like the, all the all yeah. the fucking vultures surrounding him while they while they assassinated him. The Nation of Islam is like what fucking kept all that shit together. So his kids this, this is Rulon, by the way. This the is him with his uh, wife, Michael Jackson estate. One of yeah, his she wives. looks like she looks like a front younger. for the child that's hid, hiding underneath the dress. <laughs> yeah, 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 she, yeah. she like, looks. Like, nah, see, I'm a regular old guy. Younger. I just like fucking hide young women, not kids. But it, he yeah, has, he has actually it. three kids stacked on top of each but other. But he has multiple <laughs> wives. This is the thing. Say that. Look how small her hands are. Come on now. But he has multiple wives or had multiple wives. And he would. What he would do. Is this was like total Pareto, like old, like ancient uh, Pareto patriarchy style, where he would totally cuck every other uh, male, powerful male in the group. He would denounce the other powerful elders, and he would just take over their wives in mass marriages. So that's like how he did it. Look at the look at that the expression gangster. on his face in that picture. <laughs> I mean, honestly, he knows what the, he did. The, the woman at the top right, her face is actually very horrifying. <laughs> Here's another one. Here's another picture with uh, oh, God. two gals. Oh, soy facing. This is, bro, these are, <laughs> well, these are mean, the fucking twins from The Shining. Yeah, well, well yeah, Mormons have he, like an insane that's amount they, of money you make when you rape your children with a Funko Pop. <laughs> God. I can't that, believe I'm on there a is a picture of him. Said this. There, um, okay. there is a picture of him, yeah, by the way, with all his computer. with all his wives over here. So let me see. Here are all Straight of Rulon Jeff's of Jeff's wives over here. Here, here they are. There's a mass. No, there's more what's, than that. There was God. God. Which is it's really weird that he managed to find each and single one of them when they were nine years old. <laughs> Imagine the nagging, though. I mean. <laughs> 
it's but like a you don't take the you don't take the trash out. There's a whole fucking chorus of women there just to fucking every bitch at you. Every five minutes, getting asked if you fix and the then, fucking leak under the and, sink. Yeah. Did you piss on the toilet seat? <laughs> And get this, when his son took over, he just like basically like named all of uh, his father's wives to him. So he just like took over his father's uh, child brides yeah, when uh, the original shit. Jeffs died. Yeah, and, and let me show you the other Jeffs. So Warren Jeffs, famous for being on the FBI's most wanted list, by the way. That's how. So, a lot oh, of... so is this entire stream. <laughs> <laughs> but I, but no, but I gotta say that. Um, Th this sect of Mormons, they broke off. They were from the OG, uh, the sect of Mormons that were hiding from the federal government Mormon. back in the 1800s, yeah. where they were chased them into the hills of Arizona. So Is yeah, that that's Warren? that's Warren Jeffs. Yeah, Bruh. look at that creepy motherfucker. They have, like, they have the same. Oh. It's like, we dude, talked it's like, about this last time. That is 100% the pedophile smile. Bro, yeah, 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 that, yeah that, bro. bro. It's like they took a whole family and were like, yeah, our look is going to be Kim Jong Il. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what they would do is because he was claiming so many wives, every like young men by the time they hit the age of 16, they would just send them off to like in Utah and they became like homeless kids or they would like try to build a life or whatever. They would basically just unperson them, like they would they call them, shun them. Yeah. So they'd like send them down the highway with like 20 bucks in their pocket. Like, here you go. You have no we have no wives for you because uh Warren Jeffs just fucking married all of them. So uh yeah, oh, that, that man, one oh, picture man, there, he looks like he looks like Ripley from like Alien Resurrection right there. Like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> By the way, now that we're talking about, well, I know you rebranded from Be Bell Filmcast, but what is your favorite Alien movie? Everyone, oh, I mean, I, I'm not too big on the franchise, but definitely the first one. I haven't yeah, rewatched Aliens yeah. though in like forever. So, what was the last one they made? The very not before Prometheus. like Prometheus. No, before uh, that with, with uh, Sigourney it, Weaver. Yeah, I forgot what the. The, like the last one that came out, you mean? Resurrection. Resurrection. Yeah, Resurrection. Yeah. That was pretty good. Yeah, that, right. that was pretty good. Alien Where they were on that base? It was like the that best was movie in sixth grade. Mm. To be fair, I really like Prometheus. I think that movie's underrated as well. Yeah, it is, it is, I is loved that when I saw it in the theaters. Yeah, the only thing they but, fucked up yeah, with Prometheus is that the, the fucking things that were supposed to be xenomorphs in the movie, they said like, no, actually, these are a completely different thing. It's like, yeah. why? That's fucking yeah. stupid. And I can't, I can't stand... As much as I watch, I like Prometheus, I can't stand it because they, like, Ridley Scott's comp corporation basically fucked over H.R. Geiger before he died. They, like, he didn't make a penny off of those movies, Dude, which is so it. fucking I sad. I didn't know that. That's fine. Ridley Scott yeah. is, like, the most incompetently successful film director of all time because he makes these awesome things and he has no understanding of why they're awesome. It was like him yeah. and Blade Runner. He's like, no, we're going to make uh, Harrison Ford a, a, a fucking robot. And everyone's like, oh. <laughs> like, why? Yeah. Like, can we just leave it kind of like, a, no, no, we're going to like put a fucking unicorn in here. So, you know, he's a robot. Yeah. And he's like, well, no, Ridley, like, let's just keep it up for the audience. It's no, he's a fucking robot. He's going to be a robot. And you're going to yeah. know it. The problem the first... is the, the wrong Scott brother died. Yeah. Oh, let's be real. Yeah. The first alien was successful uh, because of the people that really Scott surrounded himself with. Like he, he basically picked the bones off of the Phil Dune project from Jodorowsky. So he, he got O'Bannon, which was his cinematographer and he got HR Geiger doing all the concept art along with Mobius. So really Scott basically had to do nothing, but apart from like actually direct but when it's debatable, whether he even did a lot of that because he had some very competent studio hands so yeah, you're right, Beardson. It's uh, Ridley Scott. I don't know. He's made some great movies. Don't get me wrong. Yeah, but he is. Yeah. He just he does not well, understand. He's, what he's kind of like a uh, Michael Bay in a uh, in a sense. Mm. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Like, Michael Bay is a true auteur, man. Uh, listen, Michael Bay is a god of cinema. Ridley Scott is just a guy that don't gets don't the work me, done. But the Transformers. I'm sorry. You got the Transformers. You guys, sick men. Okay. I think I'm about to talk shit. Uh, Michael Bay discussion got real heated. I don't. Okay, I don't like well, the Transformers. No, oh, James designs. just tries to fucking talk Michael, over me, but he Michael doesn't realize Bay's that I'm louder than him. Smegma of American cinema. Okay, <laughs> Michael Bay is the apart from the Marvel bullshit. Michael Bay is like the culture industry's face of like here's this mindless bullshit that you're gonna feed. Well, but here's, I'm here's sorry, where he James. Redeems I'm himself. Sorry. Here's where here's where Michael Bay <laughs> redeems himself is that the the his editing and all of that shit. Yeah, that's yeah. is unmatched. It's fucking unmatched. Yeah, like nobody can even come. Any of you seen 13 hours in Benghazi? 
Bad Boys oh, 2 is arguably is one of the greatest great works oh, yeah. of art across I every fucking medium. Yeah. You will not get a funnier gay joke than the fucking uh when they're in the fucking uh the electronic store together and their uh, <laughs> their conversation is on all yeah. the TVs and like everyone thinks that they're a fucking gay couple. Peak gay jokes. It's never getting better than that. Well, especially well there was all there was one in Rush Hour Three where uh, where uh, Chris Tucker's about to like have sex with that French woman, and she's like, "I've never been with an American man before," and he's like, "Me neither." <laughs> That's also a great line. Well, I love the Rush Hour movies too, man. I'm fucking goddamn. But Bad Boys 2 specifically is like the apex of Michael Bay because his just style is on yeah. full force. Yep. The chemistry between fucking uh, Will Smith and Martin Lawrence is unmatched. Agreed. They're so fucking funny. The action is just, <laughs> it's peak early 2000s. It's, it will never be topped. It's, it will forever be that Michael Bay's true. best That is true. It is an early 2000s. It is cemented within that cultural moment of you yeah the but, honestly i don't the know the reason michael bay gets a bad rep is because of the transformers movies and it's like yeah transformers one is boring fucking dog shit um two three four all f- uh five That's all have enough one. great moments of greatness in it even if they're bloated messes with ugly looking transformers that there's like still like you see his style in there um and it's really if you take out transformers his only real weak link in the filmography is um is uh pearl harbor at that point which is actually his only movie i haven't seen but i know everyone pearl harbor was shit i just didn't like it yeah and it's not even an action movie really so um compared to like his other action movies which is weird because that's the one you'd expect to be the action movie right (laughs) you know you know what's not shit by the way they couldn't get too racist that's probably why they're like ah this is gonna we're gonna, with Michael Bay doing it, no, like you're you're using you're using a nuclear arm when you need a scalpel for this situation. What about this recent Michael Bay one where it's about the 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 more mutated version of? Uh, I think like that was a huge psyop that film. I don't know what happened what? to it. Did people what, just the forget COVID about it? Which film? Yeah, the 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 Wu Flu film. When I saw that, I was like, already? Oh, but oh, he he's already COVID gonna make film? a new movie. <laughs> like, He's not directing that. He's producing it, so it doesn't count. Oh, he produced it, yeah. He produces a ton of garbage. Like, you can can never, like, count what these directors produce because that, they're just making the money. But, like... Yeah, it's kind of like the Weinsteins produced, basically, like, cinema masterpieces, but we all know about the Weinstein bros. A lot of stuff. By the way, you know what doesn't suck? I'll go as far as to say that Michael Bay is not dumb, though. Like, you look at Painting Mm Game, and that's, like, one of the smartest films of last decade, and also one of the best... I hated that movie. Well, you're retarded. You're, Wait, you're he Albanian. directed that one? Yeah, yeah, he did. Oh shit! I didn't. I didn't hate that because of. I didn't hate that movie because of Michael Bay. I hated it because Mark Wahlberg sucked in that fucking movie. Uh, I, it's Mark it. Wahlberg being racist. I thought that's what would be. Uh, you know, yeah, <laughs> but it's not. Not in the right way. Not in the right. See, way. it's not even the racism though with Mark Wahlberg that gets me. It's the fact that he almost killed a guy back in the day, and people just uh, brush that aside yeah. as if it's nothing. I don't know. That's yeah, a pretty Marky Mark. When we were when we were when they were out there in Vietnam, they said the trees have eyes. Not if I was there, I guarantee it. <laughs> <laughs> um, by so the way, am you I know, the it... only one? Am I the only one here who doesn't know anything about movies? Just want to make sure. I know like a woman not knowing anything movies. about movies. I know five I know movies absolutely and three of them nothing. are the Lord If you were to click the top the ten time. most popular movies, I promise you I haven't seen a single one of them. Well, the only <laughs> reason Terrence knows anything he does about movies is because we've forced him to be on this podcast. Okay, fair enough. So. <laughs> I guess I will. <clears throat> well, so what, about, what about you, it. Noah? And by the way, mm-hmm. I just want to acknowledge the fact that both Noah and Beardson are wearing a very similar uh, style yeah. of shirt. We are. That's why I kept asking in chat. I was like, how short is Beardson? I must know. <laughs> I'm 5'7". Okay, I'm pretty short, but, you know. Perfectly you. respectable. <laughs> I'm Indeed. average. I'm right in the average. And, and, you know, and you know what else is perfectly respectable? Uh, becoming subscribers on DLive. <laughs> For those who don't know, we also have a DLive channel that is currently streaming this exact same program. So, Beardson, I know you have a channel on DLive, and if there are people who are watching this right now who come from you, guys, we only have 73 fucking followers on DLive. This has to change. Go oh, there step right it now. Up. Because we're focused yes, so on YouTube. Step it up, to, guys. Uh, Pathetic. Step up on DLive. Exactly. Yes. DLive is important. All these different streams are important. I want to do a TikTok channel. I want to take all the best of BTR, put it in 
vertical mode and expose that to the TikTok kids, except for the Chinese ones. And we should be having a China stream on Thursday with a member of the Falun Gong. <laughs> and uh, she's also a writer Damn. for Did you uh, manage the to get Spandrel on that stream, by the way? Uh, let me l let me try. Right now, I'm, uh, there's a lot of things that I got to do, but l let me see. I, I should be able to get them on. And... Uh, Yes, China stream and then Raw Egg National stream. That's coming on Friday right after. Ooh, sorry about that. All, all the chicken. This is really delicious chicken, by the way. Look how look how nice it is and how warm it is. You know, warm for my Wait, belly. Michael Bay did The Rock. That was a good yep, film. Yep, he that did was The Rock. Yeah. Um, honestly, the TikToks should just be Jules drunk doing fucking <laughs> schizo posting. <laughs> <laughs> that's Dude, literally, so Jules has been on, uh, I think, two episodes now for season two. Um both nice. with Arsene there. Terrence was there for one of them. And like, it will just be like me and Arsene trying to do bits. And like, t Jules just in the middle just starts schizo posting about yeah. like, just random fucking like- Oh, he has some really serious, serious topic while right? I'm talking about how smelly my balls are that day. And I'm like, all right, this is good. <laughs> but honestly, it fits the MK Ultra It's fun, uh, no, it's awesome, well. I love it. Is, yeah, is Jules schizo posting and us Jules being retarded. The, Jules is the straight man. I'm yeah, when, when it's the when three it's of us, a... he's definitely the straight man. By the way, wanna... no Bavona, thank you so much for subscribing on D Live. I really appreciate it, brother. Thank you so much. Yeah, I need to come back on now that it's on a film cast because the last time I came on, James was like, "All right, so what movie do you want to talk about?" And I'm like, uh, "I don't know, Life Aquatic, I guess." And I went and watched the Life Aquatic like right before the 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 podcast, and we didn't even fucking talk about the movie at all. It's like, oh, awesome. <laughs> I mean, that's uh, like a good amount of episodes. <laughs> yeah that, but that's but. also like why i rebrand it too and it's just like you know we there there's some episodes where we talk about the whole time but then there's so many that it's just we don't and i figured it just made more sense so it's like let's just cut the fucking film focus and still do film episodes when we actually want to do it yeah, yeah what, we, more enjoyable what, we, for me. what we what we really want to do is a pokemon podcast but that's yeah, yeah. exactly well, look, I'm going to try my best, no promises, but I did go to school with Sarah Natachini, who is the voice of Ash Ketchum. So oh, let me did? see if I For can. Sure. Yeah, I, I used oh, to go to the fuck. Lee Strasberg Theater Institute back in the day. So I went to school with her. I went to school with Zena Gray, who was the daughter of Alex Gray, who, if you don't know who he is, he's the guy who makes all this psychedelic art. And um, who else did I go to school with? I, d I think Lady Gaga was one of the teacher's assistants back when I was at Lee Strasberg. Because oh, Yvette, oh, who was one of our teachers, used to call everybody monster. And, you know, Yvette, I think she's still there. But I think Lady Gaga picked that up from Yvette and started calling everybody monster. That's where that whole thing came from. So well, I was around... Lady Gaga, we have to get Marina Abramovic on the stream yes. right away. Absolutely, we must. True. we must. A dream and by the come way, true. <laughs> Beardson, fill me in. Who is one Wally? I've just become fascinated with his posts. He's very similar in his posting style to uh, Nehmal, if you know N Nemal Cutie on Twitter. But uh, who is one Wally? Because I'm kind of curious about him. I have no idea. <laughs> okay, all right. I, 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 I have I, no clue. Okay, that 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 is perfectly fine. Must have been a miss, uh, miss, uh, miscommunication because I thought that swing uh, and a miss. Yes, I thought you were on. following him, whatever. But he's maybe. Interesting... Let me see. Hang on. Let me check. I maybe. Yeah. I'm, I'm an old man. My daughtering old man. You're, 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 also you're the same age as I am, so no no, no excuses. No, but yeah, I don't, I, don't, yeah, I don't follow that guy. I have no yeah, idea. Which means you're old too. But but, he, <laughs> but he's an interesting fellow. He's got this. Uh, Profile picture of Wally, -E, you know, from Disney's Wally, -E, Android Frog, Christian, uh, in interesting guy. You know, he has this nice love of friends, Jesus's love thing over here on his uh, profile picture. So, uh, yeah, pretty it's cool. All right, man, don't worry about it. Just yeah. <laughs> and guys, once again, don't forget to keep subscribing. We have hits, we have misses, but your subscriptions. And you have me outside the... your house watching you exactly. not subscribe. Your subscriptions and Zen Zen for Nord just followed on D Live. Thank you so much, Zen for Nord. I love you. I appreciate it so much. And again, I don't love you in the way that I personally know you. I love you in the way that I expect the very best out of our BTR. He loves community. you in a way that he expects you to DM him feet pics. So exactly, yeah. the feet feet kind of love. <laughs> yes. No, Booba, Fita. It's all. It's all Gouda. And uh, okay. Anyway. Enough of uh, enough of that bullshit. Matt, you never uh, you never came up with a favorite moment from the podcast. Did you think of one? Oh shit. Uh, hmm. 
<laughs> I kind of forgot that we were talking about that. Um, I guess my I don't really have a I don't really have a favorite one. It's kind of just um, just being able to do the podcast, honestly, because it's fun to just like come cop hang out, out with you and Terrence. <laughs> I mean, yeah, Beardson, it is a cop out. Fuck you. <laughs> I, uh, no. I will have to agree though on that point because, like, honestly, getting to do the podcast just means I get to spend more time with Matt and Terrence. I was already seeing like every week, so that didn't really like change anything. But um, yeah, and honestly, know. being able to spend more time with like Steele and Anthony and like just like bullshit. And, and well, I, I said you first. Calm down. Yeah, yeah, just just making sure. Um, but uh, yeah, that was kind of the best. That was that's probably the best part of the podcast is just being able to like talk about nonsense. And there's a lot of times that we would do the show that I would forget that I was even holding a mic in my hand, and that was kind of uh, the good shit. Yeah, it's that like the the first episode that we have releasing at midnight. By the way, season two drops at midnight EST, um, Spotify, iTunes, uh, Google Play. Um, but yeah, that first episode for season two is just such a, a fun time because it's it's literally me terrence matt and anthony who unfortunately just moved out of my building back to michigan but that is like the the core, the core three is me matt terrence and then the extension of that is anthony who is my neighbor and steel who is my roommate who moved out and uh it really sucks that we're not gonna get to have them on as often for season two but just all of us together getting drunk is just it's it's the perfect flow. Those those are honestly our best episodes. Like we can have the coolest guests That's in right. the world, and it still won't be as yeah. fun for me as just the four. You know, any of, combination of us just dicking around being retards. I mean, one of my favorite episodes and experiences was the Tokyo Drift episode where we were blackout drunk for, and that Great was Anthony one. on there. <laughs> yeah. And that was uh, a good time. But um, some of my favorite moments. I think uh, actually, okay, hold on. I'm, I'll be more. I'll be my be more specific real quick and then you can go back to yours. Okay. One of my one of my favorite episodes that we did was the knock knock episode at my house right before I had 40 people over for a house party. <laughs> and Brie, my fiance, is literally yelling at me from the other room because people are coming to the house that she doesn't doesn't know to entertain. And James, me, and Terrence are recording an episode in a spare room. <laughs> <laughs> that was great. <laughs> yeah, that was pretty fucking funny. One of, one of uh, the definitely the most surreal thing to happen on the podcast was when we had John McAfee on, which was like that dude was no joke, drunk, high on weed. And I'm um, like 90 percent sure high on heroin because he said it was one other thing, which he alluded to heroin. Did he talk to you about PCP? I don't think he did. <laughs> I know that he loves PCP. Yeah. I've seen a few interviews with him where oh, he talks God. about how one more granule would destroy your fucking mind and things like that. <laughs> like, dude, he he came on for the Wicker Man. That he we didn't even give him the movies to choose from. He gave us a list of movies to choose from, and we're like, oh, all right. And the two that stuck out the most. Uh, shout out to Christian, by the way, in the chat. He was on that episode. He's uh, Matt's sister's boyfriend, uh, fan and patron. Uh, but yeah, he was there for that episode and, uh, <clears throat> dude, it was one. You just couldn't even get a, in a word with the guy. He was just so intimidating and, uh, radiant alpha energy that, uh, it's just like, you know, hard to, to speak over and, uh, very incoherent too. Like I just, I've watched that stream again or that podcast again. And I'm like, I still don't know what the fuck he was talking about for like, 90% of it. <laughs> now, Every uh, time I, I see him, he's up to something like that. Every single time. It, it was a once... In a, well, I was going to say once in a lifetime experience, but uh, if he gets out of jail, a second in a lifetime experience, because his wife emailed me literally like a week before he got arrested saying that John wanted to come back on the pod. Uh, he's that back is so in nice. jail? What happened? He's been in jail. What happened? Yeah, I don't fucking know, man. They, they but finally, uh, they finally got jail. him on the tax evasion. Yeah, I don't know how he tweets from jail, but he does. He's constantly tweeting from jail. Oh, they they hoop cell phones all the time. If you know what that means. Yeah, yeah. Well, you should do that with uh, so. Ted Kaczynski potentially. Like, I don't know if it'll work or not. Will he uh, to get him on BTR? Dude, yeah, I would love yeah. to have yeah. Ted on here. Yeah, I'm sure Ted Kaczynski would love using a cell phone. <laughs> <laughs> You know, you show him a smartphone and he's like, you know what? This is actually kind of cool. 
<laughs> and then you just ruin his whole fucking ideology <laughs> because of that. Oh. And you see all the people that worship him on Twitter and he just becomes like a Twitter shit poster. And it's like, then everyone begins to resent him for reversing his ideology. <laughs> Yeah, he's not cool anymore. What, what is that quote? Like, die a hero or live long, long enough, enough to, to see, see yourself. yourself become a villain. Yeah, exactly. exactly. <laughs> Literally that. He's like way out of date, too. He's like posting rage comics and shit. <laughs> <laughs> he's just catching up. No, no, even older. He's posting the dancing baby. Like, <laughs> <laughs> he's posting Numa Numa. <laughs> <laughs> or, or better yet, he gets the cell phone and then yeah, he just makes a phone call real quick. It's like the activation code is three yeah. C Delta Five or Nine. <laughs> just, you get a ring of shit just blowing up. Oh, uh, by the way, uh, we've been uh, getting requests, uh, Noah, for you to talk about I I Yuri. Now we did not mention this, even though he was in the fucking uh, thumbnail for our last episode, Yuri Bezmanov. I mean, we talked about him before, but. I think people just want to hear you talk about Yuri. I think that that's really what it is. Well, what actually happened was I discovered that guy just from like one of his interviews. It wasn't even like that lecture where he just goes in on like all kinds of the way that propaganda works and all these different things of manipulation and all these, all these interesting things. It was just an interview where he was talking about like the U S and the Soviet union. And I was like, wow, you know what I wish I wish this was played for me in a history class. That's what I wish, right? And then that video gets taken down. It gets taken down again. And then I finally come back and I see like his hour long lecture. And he just seemed like he was, uh, yeah, he just kind of does. I talked about him in one of my videos in, in through the lens of like not even talking about the Soviet Union necessarily or anything, but just like, even if you don't believe him, even if you don't believe what he's saying, you can't deny that everything he talks about with like, like even even like the most simple stuff, like the art of war and like deception being like the most like if, the way that you actually want to win is by not fighting and everything like that, where like manipulation is the favorable weapon to use. And you can't deny that that is just inherently true. And if you start looking at the world that way, you go, hmm, I wonder what this is pushing me towards. You know what I mean? That's, yeah, that's but you, my... you start to go insane after a while if you do that. There is exactly. a point. There is a point where you have to participate in the illusion. Exactly. Because otherwise, like, you will just fucking lose it. Absolutely. I mean, it, it's like, that was honestly one of the most bitter red pills I've swallowed in my entire life, was watching that lecture. Because I was like, <laughs> no. it's all shit that you suspect and all shit that you pick up on your life. But then to have somebody just lay it out there like that, where it has clearly been so thought out, you're like, oh, Jesus. You know what I mean? So are we in the period of normalization, you'd say? Or... Hyper-normalization. <laughs> yeah. I'd, I'd say we're pretty far in to normalization. We're pretty far in. Like, it, well, no. Are you watching the new uh, Adam Curtis documentary at all? No. I know it's like fucking four hours long, but um, I highly recommend it. Uh, it's it's one of his best works. Uh, that that and like I mean, of course, like his other ones that are more like known, like uh, Centuries of the South and all that. But it goes into quite a bit of what you talk about in your video about, but but more of the angle that society could be controlled by impersonal forces of reason through various c computational codes and algorithms and how uh, this sort of crumbling of empires comes about this like terrifying managerial state that can just basically corral all of human existence into a series of very narrow confines and it's like literally everything that we're seeing nowadays it's like this is uh a huge there's a huge genealogy behind it now there are people that speculate specifically about yuri that he wasn't actually a glow in the dark like he was he just like made a lot of shit up but like i don't know it's still compelling either way there are people that mm -hmm. speculate that he didn't actually work for the kgb but that's I mean, that's i think i even dark. get it that in my I'm, i might be wrong but i think i even get it that in my video where i was mm -hmm. like i literally don't even care if he was or was not part of the kgb yeah. the important yeah. thing is what he's saying is so like obviously true and then you juxtapose like that's being said in like I think it was the 80s, maybe late 70s, early 80s. And then like you have, you have television at that time, which are just basic like it, the when you look at it in the context of time, it's like, oh, yeah, television was bombs and the Internet is a fucking WMD. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like for that yeah. exact kind of. Well, the Internet was created from from DARPA, DARPA. technology that yep. was for the the nuclear bomb to coordinate bomb sites. Mm -hmm. And but that's the thing. It's sort of like what. uh what Julius Evola said about a certain book that I will not mention. If it isn't, if it isn't true, it might as well be. So I think it's, that's uh, 
do not research what book that is, by the way. But uh, um, but do you, <laughs> but do you guys think something that about the, uh... something about certain elders? I don't know. It's just, yeah yeah yeah. Never mind. Never mind. Listen, I'm picking up what you're putting down. <laughs> do you guys? Okay, so do, do you I guys? I also go on those websites. <laughs> Do you guys think that there may be a pushback coming from, let's say, there was this recent article in Arc Digital talking about the uh, Slate Star Codex, for those who are mm. aware of what happened uh, there. Oh, and by the way, Cream Wizard, five US dollars. Thank you so much, Cream Wizard. You are the cream of the crop. Uh, and he wrote, is it possible to the live no. phoneless yeah. in 2021 as a college student? No, although I did see some phones like there was there was that j jitterbug phone back in the day for the old people, and now there are also these minimalist phones with an e ink screen. But anyway, so I'd the kill, story. I'd kill to have like a fucking like Nextel Motorola Razor again, or like mm. that one. You remember that fucking clamshell one that had the little button on the hinge that would like flip mm. it up. That was a yeah, fucking. That was, the that was the best sidekick with the. No, no, no. It wasn't, a sidekick. It, it wasn't a sidekick. No, no. It was like it was a fucking. It was a flip phone. But it had this little, I forget what the name was called, but it had this little like button right on the hinge. And so you click it and it would flip the whole phone up. The sidekick opened up like this. And the yeah, sidekick I like the one was, that uh, yeah. slid up. Like the the phone like every girl that sucked dick in middle school. I like the one you could slide up and you could slide it to the side and then you could slide it up and to the side at the yes. same time. Yeah, yeah. There was some cool, yeah. dude. Phones used to that be so much one. fucking cooler. Like during, during that like period between like 03 and like before the iPhone drop, like from 03 yeah. to like 07, 08. Because everybody was experimenting. You'd see like wild, crazy shit from every single company. You remember the uh, Apple engage? just standardize it. Yeah, dude. Fuck oh, yeah. I had an engage. Fuck dude. yeah, dude. I like yeah. the juke. It was like an MP3 player. And the juke was tight too. The juke that was lit. Yeah. That was like. I thought you like said you were a Jew for a second. <laughs> no, no, there was no? there was so many fucking like that was like a. Uh, <laughs> it was it, it coincided with the like same period of like heavy experimentation on the internet it was kind of like unshredded waters and so everybody was like yeah. trying to figure it out but now it's all just been optimized to fucking death and it's just here's a yeah. fucking glass sandwich with a metal with a fucking metal frame and well it's like the internet in general it's been standardized yeah. to such an extent through social well, media it's, sites yeah, it's yeah. also uh from 2001 the space odyssey this is the monolith that's right here that's the monolith yeah <laughs> yeah. yeah so it, it may be leading us to, like, it is, in a way, a black mirror, you could say. You know, there's that series, Black Mirror, and we are staring at black mirrors our entire life. And the question is, does but, something but, but start growing from that? Really, that's so deep, dude. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, no, I was gonna, no, but that's a good point. But, Jeff, that's a great point. And this is, like, I should do, like, the Zizek voice. Well, you know, the subversion, you know. No, but uh, I can't do it. Um, <laughs> yes, the point so is that you got like We have the phone, yes, it's is obvious. And we watch the pornography on it, yes. Of course, this is we know porn? This. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> the point being is, and by yes, the, the way. Chi I, the Chinese lady in the back. Hello, yeah. I, I went, I paid 90 fucking dollars just to have the privilege to live tweet the Peterson Zizek debate. I fucking own myself. Anyways, uh, <laughs> the, the point, the point being is that the subversion, like the, um, the critique of that particular form of reification is like, that becomes the cringe meme. Like the, even the critique of the culture industry becomes like the meme itself. It becomes like black mirror is the meme. Like Millhouse is not a meme is a meme sort of deal. It's like even just mentioning black mirror. It's like, everyone knows like the connotation of like the basic bitch, like, Oh, they're going to critique it's our, it's our modern day twilight zone. Yeah, yeah exactly. Uh, it's basically, yeah. It's basically couple, a couple shout outs real zone. quick. It's the zeitgeist of like yeah. weird fucking, but, but it's like, shit. It's it, it's a way to sidestep the truth in a lot of at least the earlier Black Up Mirror episodes, but it's like mm. the Jeffrey Epstein didn't kill himself meme. It's like it's yeah. a way to neutralize Soften the blow. Mm -hmm. Guys, yeah, exactly. couple shout outs real quick. Um, one thank you to the lovely Jess X for a five dollar patron, oh, and also oh, shout nice. out to whoever Rabid Weasel is for the fifteen dollar patron. Oh, um, Rabid whoa. Weasel, Jess, I love you. You're the best. Why, why you gotta why you gotta call me out like that? I don't need my people know I'm simping over here. Yeah, that was fun. <laughs> that, that's a fucked up move, bro. Jesus. And uh, right, that, I don't know what's going on with women But I, I thank and I love you. So it literally like would have been better optics if you if you said she sent you nudes than to say that she subscribed <laughs> to your page. Right? No, not better optics for me. I'm a good woman, okay? I'm a good Catholic girl. I would never. Yeah, that's but you right. subscribe to <laughs> 
I feel I feel like you shouldn't mention the donations from people on the stream. Something about it just seems wrong. It seems like we're padding the numbers by uh, mentioning. Well, no, we got we got to pad our Patreon it's only numbers. Padding the numbers. Enron, and baby, subscribing Enron. to <laughs> BTR. Yeah, guys. Now that you have become a patron of James. Use that extra money that you have to become patrons of BTR. So you can become a twin patron of James and BTR. So go to patreon.com slash break the that? Yo, that's why I don't right now. trust Russians. Well, I would that's say why I don't trust Russians, yo. They do, you, they do shit like this. He's trying to poach your fucking subs right now. <laughs> that's, that's, that's some no, KGB shit, thing is, dude. That's I don't why know, I don't If you can promise me that remember? all of the Break the Rules patron money goes towards Pokemon cards, I might consider it. There you go. <laughs> oh, boy. Well, remember that video, Lev, when we were in development and it was like these people in China up, were becoming... Hey, guys, how you doing? Hey. I'm just sort of sliding in. <laughs> so th there was a video we watched together about uh, like influencers in China and the way they became influencers was the fact that someone gave them like $2 million. So they had zero following at all. And then someone gave them $2 million and that was the clout they needed. They didn't need, because suddenly they yeah. show up and they're like, yo, I just got $2 million. And then people are, start listening because you have lots of money. Yeah. So sometimes there's like a cart before the horse thing, or maybe it's the horse before the no, cart. You can also like, you, you can use that as clout with like advertisers and shit too. And be like, Hey, look, man, we've already got $2 million invested. So you're it's telling you me to create a $2 million get better team. equipment. What? I'm I'm saying I'm <laughs> saying that if you like break the rules, if you want things to get super funky, super weird, if you want better visuals, if you want better guests, or not just better guests, but if you just want like, you know, guest death matches, and you want you know special guests and people to like give us uh, like previews to movies or have different displays, I think that we can really soup this thing up but we also need proof of concept like i think people in my office are peripherally aware and becoming more and more aware of our show and sometimes i feel like they're almost inviting proof of concept from us but sometimes it seems like they would want us to hire them right okay, like sometimes yeah. it seems like the office is like yo you could hire us well, we need what well, jules we need and we need death you. matches i or mean would they, exploding do, by the way by the way by the way, by the way jessix five dollar patron jessix you did it i cannot <laughs> believe it jessix. thank you no, can you guys, can you guys set up a, People are going to think I have more money than I have. They won't can you guys set up a death more. match between me and that guy who puts those fucking shitty balloons up on the wall? I don't know what it's yes! fucking I, I no! just, It's just an episode yes! where I tie, exclusive him, video. I, tie, I tie him to the to a chair and like beat the living shit out of him with brass knuckles. <laughs> Not like in Minecraft. It'd be, it'd be in like real life. No, no, no. Like in, in, in real life. I'll in real life, for sure. I will waterboard it'd be like when It'd be like the Royal Rumble where The Rock had like a handcuffed Mick Foley and just kept feeding him chair shots. No, I'm going to pass it. It's going to be the Passion of the Christ. Oh. I'm going to crucify him and just shiv him with a spear for two and a half oh hours. Goodness. I like, uh, yes, I like, Jacob, I like, I like Jacob Stern's uh, comments. He's, he says He's a probably literal... the cringiest motherfucker on the internet. And that's a he big sucks. fucking thing. He really sucks. Wait, I refuse to learn his this shitty this ass is, name. This is some fucking uh, guy that puts up these balloons. Jamie, that pull that say up. Radlib fucking <laughs> Yo, that's my horrible. line. It's be like everything's going to be is this, okay. Or, is this the guy up. that fuck nude? Send me your therapy receipt. Oh, like, is that yeah. the guy that did the uh, therapy balloon? Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. Oh, oh. Yeah, no, he makes me he makes me like he he like completely activates my lizard brain like fight or flight response. This is there, like, I just want to like I want to watch a, the light If anyone's seen eyes Under the strangling. Silver Lake, there's a scene where someone gets their skull crushed in and it's very brutal with the guitar the, and honestly is, i would pay great money to see arsene do that to him yeah this is the essence of a concept i i call neoliberal catch it's basically like banksy in that type of uh, art world slock that gets popular in instagram yeah wait wait That's which like guy are we talking about here right how do i find his work who is this balloon man that you guys Just, are talking yeah, I'm, about? I'm, type in uh, that uh, type in uh on twitter um <laughs> Something like that, wear mask balloon or something like that. Yeah. All right, let's mm -hmm. see. 
Yeah, I've, I've no idea. Type retarded famous. homosexual or king of the retarded <laughs> homosexuals. But uh, while while he's doing that, um, uh, Gio, I wanted to like circle back on that uh, uh, all the internet shit that we were just talking about. There's this mm-hmm. great book by uh, Shoshana Zuboff called The Age of Surveillance Capitalism. Yes, yeah, I have, have that you book. read that? Yes. that it is, is a fucking, great book. I love yes. that because it go, it talks through the whole shit of like, and it, it's kind of like. It's kind of uh, like prophetic of like why our economies are going to fail, not because like mm. capitalism is necessarily going to fail, but because it's like what our raw materials are now for production yeah. is the human experience that we just like take and package into content. And like, like everything now is like a fucking like thing that's catered to you rather than like a horrible fucking life event, you know? It's like what, it's what Alexander Bard calls the informationalism in the attention economy. Yeah. Friend of the show who's been on multiple Definitely. times. I think and he that will book, be back. Yeah, I think it'd be interesting if we could actually get uh, her on a stream with Alexander Bard. I think that would be like, uh, that would be something else because surveillance capitalism, uh, I know people critique it and they say that it's like poorly written or whatever, but it's, it's, but it it's is all great. true. It is true. It's a great yeah. book. And it's something that even people on the political right can get involved with. I found, yeah, by yeah. the way, Lev, I found, I will link the balloon guy. This guy says, fuck nudes. Send me a dated invoice from your therapist Prison. so I know you're working <laughs> on yourself. Prison, Prison dude. This is so These people, <laughs> the, 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 people, the people who want communism, the people who want communism, if I was the communist dictator of that country, these are the first people to get the firing squad. Are oh, you kidding me? Yeah. Are you it's fucking kidding because- me? Like as a woman, Why my spidey they, sense like, goes off with this kind of guy. Like he just that just seems like the typical like male feminist, but well, you don't have to worry about him. He's gay. Pervert. So, he's gay so, is he gay? Yeah, yeah is he gay. literally. I mean, that sucks for the shocked. gay community. I'm, I'm sorry. Oh, that, that, that that's the balloon man. He just set back gay the rights. Gay oh, king. I've seen that. I mean, if we're, <laughs> if you were to talk about the calling this guy one of your own, are you kidding? I'd fucking kill myself if he was one of me. <laughs> fucking shameful if you're That's gay like and you're listening to this podcast minecraft. and you want to meet up and do some redacted things to this guy in minecraft hit me up you know that, that lush <laughs> sex guy you. i mean like, I, I, don't, I, I don't understand his expression over here and i would love to have lush sucks on by the way uh the show but uh i don't understand this expression over here that this guy is making it's a small is image he That's... can't get the fucking dick out of his ass it's <laughs> oh, like it's the, the jim helper dude guys. that's the jim helper the... this is like it's like the, yeah, like this the disappointed that's the face of a man like who took viagra but didn't disappointed. this is like the public performative art version of that weird soulless like globalist corporate art is what I'm yeah. getting right well, here. Like, yeah. it's, it's, like, the, it's the it's the Helvetica of performance art. Yes. <laughs> if you know I, anything about that. I thought he'd uh, yes. he'd at least he'd at least make some balloon animals, you know, like uh yeah, yeah. that, that I, would be pretty I nice. Have, I no, have but that tweet. would require talent, dude. I, I just fired off a tweet about it about how this is a big part of neoliberal kitsch is that the text, and this is a very big trend in the art world, the text literally has to overwrite the work of art. So the text becomes the work of art yeah. because they have to keep driving a very narrow political message. Like this yeah. whole thing, this is like total uh medicalization of all life, like psychomedicalization it's of all life. It's propaganda. So, yeah. For, it's for propaganda. therapy, like yeah. th- therapy is a, a mode of normalization that has to, uh, yeah. like the whole, like, the, like I forget who said it. It might've been James actually that said it first, or it might've been someone else on the show that said, uh, Therapy is when, the ongoing MK Ultra. No, no, but like that when women when women on on Twitter say um, go to therapy, it's just like a more polite way of them saying go kill yourself. Yeah. So yeah, it's yeah. like that's well, the it's way the they do it's it. the liberal way of saying I'll pray for you. Exactly. Wait, someone yes. someone needs to do that fucking um the the meme format with the guy having the thought going and says kill yourself then it says twitter terms of service and then coming out of his mouth go to therapy <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah that's perfect yeah i'll but tell him is... to go make that one and post it right now but there's so that's, much that's a perfect menace post like it this is. is the aesthetic of like grammable kitsch this is like the bubbly letters the neon lights the the pink pastel millennial aesthetic it's all there and they have to mm. use the color block it's fucking well, even without the colors even without the colors when yeah. i was walking around new york city i saw 
lot of people who are wearing these fully just like black shirts with white text on it. And it has uh, some Future's kind of female? Political... Future's female? Is that well, not just that one, one but there were other yeah. statements within the same you know ballpark. So, oh, like uh... the Hassan Piker one, where it's like the fucking oh, oh, I mean, man. racist heroes yeah. of yeah. 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 You just activated me by saying that. Man. You just activated <laughs> me. If someone the could throw up... has been activated. If someone could throw up in the BTS chat, the Hassan off. Piker. That's what just shirt. happened right there. That's Let's fucking go! Wait, Jules. <laughs> Jules. Well, I remember when, around the time we were watching Lionel videos, we did a we recorded an episode we did not publish when we talked about propaganda. I think you were asking about my no negative side effects T-shirt, which I used as promo for my film, The Vigilante. Uh, that's when I started saying like I'm a propagandist, but that was because of my own megalomania in terms of my confidence and my ability to like incept very strong uh, narrative uh, for other people to hitch on to. Uh, I think what, I mean, I've, I've been around some people like, what do you guys think of uh, AA? I'm not sure, this should not be a sensitive topic, but I'm very curious about like when people talk about therapy, like is AA therapy or what no, okay so i have a unique perspective on this because my mom just got her counseling license and she's been in recovery for uh six years seven years so she's actually a counselor she can run aa meetings and stuff like that it's not necessarily therapy i mean it's a form of group therapy but the person that runs it isn't always a therapist like therapy to me feels very one-on-one -on -one, and even when it's group therapy i've been to group therapy before it like it comes from a different place, I would say, than yeah, AA or NA yeah. does. I, it is I definitely can, different. I, I, There's like I, therapeutic I, elements to it, but it's not necessarily therapy. Well, it's gotta be therapy. It's gotta be um some fucking hack that's shoving meds down your throat to help the pharmaceutical country uh, yeah. industry. So. Well, that's what happened with a, an ex of mine where uh, she was in NYU and uh, she just had a bad day, went to the, her assigned therapist, and since that day she was on antidepressants. And it's like, what the fuck, man? You know, like they get, they, they get them early on and there's no reason to go through that whole rigmarole. It's not like she had some kind of a traumatic experience that, uh, you know, would have precipitated that, you know, just like- I got a great day. story about this People actually. People push, push them on you. And it could be yeah, like, yeah. It, it, and usually it's not just a therapist. It's, it's gonna be a collection of friends, family, and then therapists. Uh, right? I'll, I'll, on top of that, school administrators. Cause I remember, I remember when I was a kid, yes. like my fucking, my, uh, cause I was a, I was a rowdy boy. And my uh, my fucking guidance counselor or whatever, she like called my parents and stuff to like talk to all of us and like, oh, we're concerned about his behavior and stuff. Have you, you know, have you considered like seeking therapy for him? Like, I think, uh, you know, like ADHD medications would be helpful for him. I was like 11. I'm like, yo, like you're trying to get me like uh, hopped up on uppers before my balls have dropped. Like, what the fuck is wrong with you? <laughs> you're was, fucking, I, uh, you're, it's like and, and, sickening. No yeah. And then Noah, you say you have a story well, related well, to that. Well, Beard said something to say then, oh, Noah's story. Yes. Oh, yeah, yeah. Go for it. Oh, no, go ahead. Go ahead, Noah. Uh, okay. So I had really, really horrible insomnia for a long time, like to the point where like I would literally go like two, three days, and then I would have that like mandatory my body is failing time to sleep thing. Yeah. And I, I whatever went to my doctor about it, and originally they were like, you have ADHD, take Vyvanse. And I was like... That oh, they give me make... good stuff, man. Yeah, I was like, that doesn't make any sense. Didn't really help me. Uh, then I go back to whatever this psychiatrist, I think it was, and he goes to me, or actually, I don't go back to the psychiatrist. My doctor uh, prescribed me the Vyvanse, stopped taking it like almost immediately because I was like, this isn't helping me. Then I get sent to a psychiatrist who, within 15 seconds of me walking into his office and sitting down, tells me that I am depressed. Not true. I was literally like, no, I just can't sleep. He's like, no, no, no. You're depressed. Try these pills, right? <laughs> and, he, and, he get, and I'm like, what the fuck, man? And like, I'm already like skeptical about this. Is probably like when I was like 16 or something, right? Then this yeah. guy, whatever it was they had me taking, I took it for like a week, and I just started having horrible hand tremors. Like I'd be driving. And Colored I'd be like, me shocked. Yeah, and then it's I go back. They figure like, oh, like ahead, sleep yeah. deprivation is a sign of depression, so they figure like. That's obviously teen depression because it's sleep. You're having insomnia. Yeah. Uh, so oh, yeah. Then I, I get these shakes. I go back to his office and I'm like, dude, 
what you just gave me is straight up giving me like Parkinson's tear shakes. Like what is going on? And then yeah. he's like, that's impossible. And I literally go on Google and I look up the drug and I look at its list of side effects. And like the first one listed says hand tremors. <laughs> and I held up to him and I was like, what are you talking about? This is impossible. Left his office, never came back. Yeah. Wow. No, I, I was I, like, I was like, what? Like, dude, like, literally 15 seconds after walking to his office, he's like, you're depressed. Here are the pills, leave. And I'm like, what a great job. I, I had a friend that they gave like, uh, they gave him lithium because he had like depression and shit. And uh, like, he just like couldn't get hard after, after that. So he got like depressed again. Cause now it's like, well, do I want to be depressed and get a boner or like not, <laughs> not get a fucking boner? Bro, and so I, he's like, he stopped taking his meds and he's just like down wait. all the time. It's like, yeah, but dude, like, I mean, <laughs> like this is fucking terrible. What do you mean? Yeah, I mean, like, I went when I was like, I think I was like 18 or 19. I went to a doctor. It's kind of a similar experience. And it's like, I, you know, I'm sleeping like four hours a night. Like, this isn't normal, you know? Like, yeah. I've been doing this for like six months. I've been sleeping like four hours a night, you know? And like, I got like five, a new doctor. I'm like five seconds into what I'm saying. And he's like, well, here, I'm going to give you some ambient and I'm going to send you to a therapist because you're depressed. I'm like, oh, I'm not really depressed, man. I'm living pretty good, you know? Got a girlfriend. She's hot. Like, life's pretty good go to this therapist. I'm there for like 30 minutes. And he's like, well, I'm going to put you on Lexipro. And I'm like, oh, okay, cool. So I get it or whatever. And I, I didn't start taking the Ambien yet. I was like, well, I'll, I'll, I'll try the fucking like Lexipro or whatever first. Maybe I am depressed. Maybe I'm just too stupid. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> These guys make a bunch of money. They know. And I started taking this Lexipro and I didn't sleep for like almost two weeks straight. Like almost, it was like, I was sleep. I would sleep like 30 minutes a night. And I'm like, I, it's gotten, I go, so I go back and I'm like, it's gotten worse. Like I'm now I'm not sleeping at all. Like, Oh, well that's not like a little side effect. You know, it's That's really interesting. Yeah. And I'm like, no, it's gotten worse. Like, well, he's like, well, but it's not a little side effect. And I'm like, well, I don't know what the fuck it is, but this is what's happening to me. Like, I, you know, you think I'm fucking lying to you? Like, give me more Lexipro. Give me more shit. That, like, I'm, I'm, I'm so depressed. I want like double the dosage. No, this is awful. Well, just keep taking it for a few more weeks. I'm like, I'm, I like, I'm strung out. I, I look like a fucking Ooh. meth addict. Like, I'm like, I like yeah. John. Dude, like I'm not fucking sleeping. This is yeah. this is like an I don't know if it's an evil cartel or whether people are such NPCs that are in these positions that they just accept the dogma of yes, you have to take this for that, and you know it's kind of in the it's not even in the back Depends of their on mind. The training, like their, their it, medical it's training. It's part. Really. It's partially also that like culturally we view it like because it's a pill, like uh, yeah. it's it's like a fucking shortcut to to betterment, right? So like. Like one of the guys in the in the chat right now who's saying like how do you deal with your fucking ADHD and it's like have a disciplined schedule. I mean if you don't organize like especially if you have like even if you don't have like attention problems, but especially if you do, you need to be, have like a strict like laid out. I'm up at this fucking hour. I'm doing this by this time. I'm doing this by this time. Because Fix your diet. You, yeah, exactly, yep. dude. Yeah. Like literally, because I'll be like sometimes I'll feel like shit and like. I'll ha like I'm like oh yeah of course I feel like shit I had McDonald's for fucking three days in a row like you're not so, like yeah you're gonna feel like shit I, but it's but it's about you know, you know what I had today I by one, the way you know what well, I had today that is amazing a, a warning, go, for, go, like, go for it Gia go no for it. just like really quickly I'm not a say, medical professional by the way like yeah. don't listen to fucking anything I say. I'll <laughs> no, say I what's say worked that for me for people like just so we're not irresponsible for people that do have severe forms of depression that need it I think psychopharmacology has helped them. But yeah. I think that these things are so broadly applied within a medical industrial complex that, especially with ADHD, I feel that a lot of kids, the way the education system is just doesn't structure, especially young men in a certain way. So therefore they have to drug them into oblivion. Yeah, yeah and, of course. Like, what? Well, yeah. oh man, I have to fucking, I'm going to a place where I'm not allowed to bounce off the walls all the time. Now while, it's I'm sitting on my I'm fucking computer puberty. for five hours. Again. Yeah, and like, of course you're going to be yeah. off the fucking walls. Come on. Like, there's, yeah. Yeah. it's maddening, dude. It's fucking like, maddening. Have you ever seen the documentary on YouTube? I know it's one of the more, like, specifically for like youtube made documentaries that are high quality you ever seen the documentary oxiana no it's it's about the one county in um mississippi or alabama where it has the highest percentage rate of uh oxy and uh fentanyl abuse in like all of mississippi or it was mississippi or alabama um and they talk about how it's because of the side effect of um, the attitude towards medication that yeah. a lot of the Appalachian 
um, mine workers had, where the companies that would later then offshore their futures, as the documentary pointed out, these companies say, well, these, you know, these fucking hicks in the South, they have to work. So these workers would literally go in the mines and they would have uh, all sorts of injuries that would accumulate over a lifetime. So they would just basically take pills, like they would take pain medication. So pills were seen as just a natural thing. So yeah. now you have the no economic output whatsoever because these corporations largely based in the uh, American, you know, periphery in the coastal cities, uh, yeah. they were offshored from the Appalachians. And uh, basically these kids take fucking pills and get strung up and there's whole generations basically lost to a uh, fentanyl and Oxycontin that are and, all made and, in China. And whole economies. I mean, you're, when mm-hmm. you're talking about like what, what could like truly ravage a community, like mm-hmm. doing heroin will probably fuck a uh, fuck up a, a good amount of like mm-hmm. any productivity that you can draw out of a person. When, when has a this heroin uh... epidemic on Long Island too? Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Uh, I mean, I'm in Kentucky, school. so. But yeah. when has this not been the case throughout history? Maybe to, well, obviously to a lesser extent without the oxys but there have been like throughout history like the history of the 20th century uh you know epidemics oh, of shit. let's say there was you know the drug that you like geo you know the fancy one you know well, the, i've never uh, had opium, opium. but opium. <laughs> opium i would say is a lot better than t- at least in terms of an aesthetic is a lot better than heroin. yeah but then there was or, the whole uh, op- opium fentanyl. wars opium wars going on with china you're doing and opium then- i'm calling you chinese <laughs> we, need the Nick, was... we need Nick Mullen to come in right now just to say uh, you're Chinese. Yeah. Yeah. So... Yeah, sound clip of him. Yo, wait. The but... best is um, shout out to uh, Jinx Production. This um, the one that he did of uh, Nick Mullen pointing out of the movie theater. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's my it's fucking a, it's a classic. <laughs> well, uh, uh, le- love to, to to talk about that a little bit. As far as like uh, opioids in general are concerned, there was up until like uh, the eighties. From from the 20s to the 80s, there was like an like a positive trend in uh, in the United States regarding like the prescription and usage of opioids because there were like the dangers like when heroin was prescribed as a fucking painkiller, the dangers became immediately apparent to people, and so doctors were like, "Hey, uh, let's not fucking do that. That's bad." And it all started it all started up again back in like late 80s, early 90s because like specifically of Purdue Pharma, they 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 went on like a coordinated campaign, like a war path using using every resource that they had available to them to basically shift the entire mindset of how we view pain, right? Because at first, like this was only for for, for fucking cancer patients and people yeah. who were terminally ill. And yeah. then it became like, is your back sore at work? Do heroin about it. Whereas <laughs> before, before, like for a long time, like pain was viewed as part of the healing process. It was viewed as part of the body, like, getting stronger and so doctors would tell you like yeah man just tough it out stop being a fucking bitch about it what do you like want me to if say? you have a sprained ankle or yeah like just had, fucking just yeah. rest don't walk and, and that applies to days. the whole that applies to the whole shebang that applies to having bad days at work or at school and not right. having to resort to taking a happy pill in order to get rid of that feeling well, i've had it. i've had sciatica for years and i've you know knock on wood i haven't had an attack in, all, in two years because i started a stretching regime Excellent. and uh shit like that you know like good I for think, you man that yeah. is so important but when yeah. it, but when it comes to let's say villages that used to exist you know even back in the middle ages like i wonder if our perception of what we have right now is a green is grass uh, what am i saying grass is green greener on the other side type of thing Whoa. when it comes to let's say how many people ended up getting drunk a blackout shit face drunk on a daily basis back in those villages in the middle ages and how much problems were there with drugs let's say uh in uh urban communities like uh, back in the 20s 30s 40s like the years that we would really look at as being you know much more resilient and tough and all that like i just don't know like what are maybe some missing things here for us I don't have like exact numbers, so I'm like talking off the dome a little bit. But it, it, from like what we see, it comes and goes in phases. Like there is a period where people are like overindulging, and then there's the kind of like a moral panic that occurs, where like overly stringent regulations and laws are passed that like put a bunch of people in fucking prison, and then it goes away for a while, and then it comes back. Like like coke wasn't that fucking cool, whatever, 20 years ago. Now everybody does it. 20 years before that, it was cool again. Like it's just all of this yeah. shit like it comes and goes. Same thing. You like even with... even middle ages stuff. I mean, uh, 
in Russia, like the fucking the 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 like ruling family like had a monopoly on the vodka market that they used yeah. to like basically like apply thumb screws to the populace. Like every 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 working man was and this was like through the Soviet Union as well. They basically just like yeah. kept people fucking drunk and stupid. Well and uh, it's also really interesting. Since, uh, I, I was just gonna quickly say since the fall of the Soviet Union Putin has continued doing that with drugs yeah. where he was responsible for smuggling coke through uh, St. Petersburg yeah. Harbor and uh, resurrecting that whole drug trade there. Uh, Jules, go for it. It's really interesting that they just legalized all drugs in Oregon. Not legalized, legalized or decriminalized? Decriminalized. Yeah, decrim decriminalized. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I was about okay. to say, I might, I might actually consider moving there. A little there bit of a <laughs> but, that's the right, but that's the right language for any time they decriminalize something. Because you never technically legalize anything, right? You just decriminalize it. But oh, no, I mean, I alcohol is fully legal. I think there's a culture thing <laughs> that, you know, people are taught in public school to trust their government a lot. Like these days, yeah, everyone kind of takes for granted that the government, the way it is, it's a necessary evil or there's no other way to do it. There's no alternative. But oh, there's, I think there's, there's an kind of, I think there's well there's always alternatives but i think that there's a um a, a sort of nanny mindset where we need the government to look out for us it's it's what almost we need too to do scary is at the start of every day of every news cycle we say the names and addresses of every high-ranking government official, and then we start with the news. Whoa! Chill, chill, chill. No. Chill. no. Chill, chill, chill. no. I know somebody that got suspended far, on Twitter far. for that. Yeah. Too far. Yeah. Don't post. In Minecraft. Look at Their this. Their address is in Minecraft. Their IP address is in Minecraft. You said, James, 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 you really have to Unironically, like, James, James, don't. James, you sent me a tweet to report, bro. You were like, someone... Okay. Well, okay, that's like... That's like... That's different. You're a snitch. Jewel, <laughs> you're yeah, a James, someone James, doxing me. That's me all the time. Yeah, that's a. Uh... You gotta leave. Oh, okay, yeah. okay, doxing James and doxing public officials who waste millions of our tax yeah, dollars every year on, is a little bit different in Minecraft. Well, well uh, wait, to change, the, to change the, the subject, what you're saying, Jules. Uh, we're not changing the subject. We haven't talked about the DEA yet. Yeah, but I want to show <laughs> off this. Do you guys my, remember Warrior my Land? My girlfriend's too? family works for the DEA. Really? My girlfriend's, like, yeah, my girlfriend's family. Sorry, like let me DEA. just uh, leave. Let me leave this chat real quick. Is it my girlfriend's true, like the, uh, the 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 brewing like, laws of whatever, like thirteen something? Hell. Weren't like all beers brewed with some kind of fucking mushroom before that? There was some like there was crazy some ear got in some of the yeah yeah yeah. There was, but it was it wasn't just it wasn't just that there was like some specific kind of mushroom that they outlawed because they're like it's making everybody trip out all the time I oh remember, that's right they yeah. would have these uh villages that they would have like what they call dancing disease mm -hmm. or fits or something dancing plagues yeah yeah dancing plagues yeah, yeah. and they would they say it's from either it was either mushrooms or air got po well no air got poisoning was uh there's this theory that every revolution in europe was like peasant revolts was because the grain was infected by ergot, which, uh, by the way, is where uh, Hoffman synthesized LSD from. Speaking of LSD, look at that Pokemon card. Holy shit. Yeah. Oh my You're God. tripping balls right legalize now. All this, stuff. this is one of my favorite... All this stuff. This, I think this we is should... one of my favorite artists of all time right. in the Pokemon Legalized series. Pokemon I used yeah. to think I was about to that... Say that. No, no, we I, have to. We have to. I, 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 I used to think Pokemon that this lower a controlled substance, in my opinion. Yes. Yeah. So I used to think this will lower. Go crazy. Hmm. You see this yeah. lower part of Scyther? I used to think these were his mandibles. I these didn't are... realize that this was actually his chest because it does look kind of like these creepy mandibles, you know, rushing at you over here. And on the uh, posing side, I have over here Kabutops. Another beautiful card. I wish the green screen didn't uh, do what it does. But uh, anyway, you see Kabutops over here. Another very beautiful artwork. I don't know who this guy is. Let's see. It should say who this guy is. Kimiya Masago. Let me see if I can get Kimiya-san on our uh, show. I think that would oh, be really cool. Sure. I will. I will try it out. I have not had luck getting Japanese uh, artists on the show, but we'll see what happens. And also, well, yeah, there's are... so, there's something like a language barrier. Yeah, it's because they're Chinese. Sure. <laughs> uh, close, so, close. So, so, the greatest so, so, conspiracy of all. So you guys were <laughs> all saying, Japanese uh, people are really Chinese. The industry is run by Chinese <laughs> people, not J Japanese people. Yeah. Matt, how exactly. many? Uh, Matt, let's talk about how much Shining Fates you have pre-ordered right now. 
let's let's not <laughs> <laughs> this uh this audience does not need to know how much money i spend on pokemon cards here's the jumbo card That's a the big uh... card what damn dude yeah this Mom, is Matt, the, we're uh, talking about Pokemon. You don't want to discuss. That reminds me of my giant how many thousands pins. of dollars you're dropping for this new set. Uh. <laughs> Legendary Burbs over here. <laughs> James, we can save it for Saturday. <laughs> yeah, Here's I don't know. The, does, uh, does anyone here care? I actually have that card. Does anyone here care care about uh, Pokemon cards? Not even a little bit. Current Pokemon cards. <laughs> yeah, I didn't think so. Everybody, everybody I mean, Lev was brought in, bringing the Pokemon cards out. I thought that was his cue yeah. for you to start talking about Pokemon. I was exactly, gonna say. Yeah. I mean, I could go get some cards to show you guys. Yeah, I I like the background over here too. This combination of uh, orange and uh, blue, and then yellow over here. It's a nice, it's a nice color combo. And I love this card over here. I know it's not a card that a lot of people tend to uh regard in the pokemon universe but uh look at it for a second this uh fortress card i think neo discovery was one oh. of my favorite sets of all time and God, just that card's so ugly fuck you <laughs> it's beautiful look, look, Yo, look at this look, look at this texture over well, here what pokemon Minimal... is this this is fortress, fortress. fortress. yes fortress. it's like a cocoon bagworm type thing which evolves from a fucking pine cone but uh i just love the minimalism over here just in the uh in the artwork uh, and this, uh, you know, it's nice. And also here's Ditto, Koga's Ditto to yeah. be precise. And I like like how much space they used over here for this guy, you it's, know, and how little I mean, holographic paper. I mean, that thing is just bubble gum. Exactly. <laughs> it's just He's gum that got stuck on your shoe. It's it's uh, um, right it's, it's it's uh, pink gum. Actually, uh, Lev, it's it's kind of funny that you uh, that you said you like me. You know, Discovery as one of your favorite Pokemon sets because mm -hmm. that is that is arguably one of the most hated sets from the Watson really? era. Really. Yeah. It w okay, the reason why I like Neo Discovery so fucking much is because it was the very first card that I got of the Neo series. So keep in mind, this is like when I was a, you know, I was like um, 12 or 11 years old, probably 11. And I had no idea that these new Pokemon even existed. You know, I had no idea about Neo Genesis, nothing. And so one day I just go into this Chinese store and I just see th this booster pack with these Pokemon I don't recognize. I open it up, and the first card that I see is Houndoom, a holographic Ooh, nice. Houndoom. And I was like, what the oh, fuck yeah, is that's this? That's a great card. So that was a Japanese I had no... pack then if the holo was at the front. Yeah. Yeah, it was yeah a also there pack. was there was a hollow in every Japanese pack. That's and that's amazing. why I fucking hated the American cards, because yeah. like, what the fuck? We always, get, are... we always get fucked. Yeah. Exactly. Like the Japanese, they knew that whatever happens, I will have a, at least I will have a holographic card. You know, at least I will be able to go back to my town and, you know, everything will be neatly organized. The trains are going to run on time. You know, at least <laughs> there is going to be some structure, you know, in society that will ensure that everything's going to be nice and clean. Nobody's going to rob my shit. You know, at least all of that with the hollow as well what i'm basically saying is that i yearn for there to be a little bit of japanese you know uh togetherness in america and it's probably not going to happen but uh you know among do, do you feel like japan is that together it. though i feel like japan is like chronically repressed like when i look at the their like fetish trends I'm over there retarded. and how they're all I'll take isolated i feel like everyone over there is basically living in Kaiwai prison cells and they're not dating each other they're not having sex with each other it's they're pronounced all pronounced kawaii i mean they have having a, sex they, with they have pillows. a forest where you they're get off yourself they're literally buying pillows and having sex <laughs> with pillows no you're right that's security, not right. Sanity don't prison. talk about terrence so, like I, that. I was about to say don't but, I don't, think, <laughs> but I don't but i don't think japan is a exemplary of like sense of community like maybe there japan no it, it depends on what you look like it, it depends on what you look at though you're right absolutely jules that those areas are not ones that i would want to bring in here but for example there oh was it's a coming here though that's the thing well, there there was a documentary they about the japanese culture is pretty much going to become more sure no but among japan other has things, like a lot like... of shame like they won't even laugh like they like they don't even want to laugh in front of you sure like, yeah yeah because but... they're taught shame but on oh, the flip side, they have a teeth. train system where, you know, <laughs> no, I'm everybody... Serious. Is no, that that's true? British people. That's not... Well, well, I'm I'm okay, okay. Like, the Japanese, on... too. They have it the worst of all the Asians, teeth-wise. Yeah. Well, 
when it's kind of cute though sometimes you know the girls have like the little the little demon teeth anyway when it comes when it comes to the oh Esmond god they, they have, they have to go there's a no theater ghost teeth. as this when goes on to... i like you more and more oh i appreciate that thank you so when it comes to the uh when it comes to the yeah. japanese train system there is a certain you know air of politeness that you uh that's kind of instilled in you like you don't want to do something that's gonna fuck the day of the people around you so you're not gonna play loud music you're not gonna talk overly loudly you know like there are certain things that japanese learn from a young age not to do for the sake of not making other people around them feel weird or uncomfortable from molesting or disturbing people them. on the train they still haven't learned that one yeah, yeah I mean, again it's up. like i don't want to take the whole package i'm just saying like there are certain things you can take and there are certain things you can leave behind no reason to take the whole thing no, but course, let's see why why the good things work? Why is it that they are think, able to have these honestly, systems? Work? I think I think I've been because noticing they're playing problem. music on the subway. I'm sorry, I'm taking the subway a lot, and people have been playing really positive music. I'm I'm just saying, like, I'm not sure if these people are like undercover, and they're like, listen, everyone's miserable. Like, you need to like go on the subway and just play happy, euphoric music all day. But it, it's it's at the point where the last five times I was on the subway with the exception of me just coming home, someone played, I'm talking euphoric music, euphoric. And it didn't feel offensive. If I wow, was offended, I probably could have, I could have gone to a different, well, you know, I could see a grading on I've someone's nerves. I could see a grading on someone's nerves, but the thing is, you know. Well, well, in no, New York, you I'm, learn to tune that shit out. That's the, that's I, the I, difference. I'm saying you tune a lot of stuff out here. Because every time I go on the subway, there's always some homeless person rambling to himself, some person yeah. just you know jumping on the tracks like a chimp, or just some guy who just Easy smells there. so much. Easy. <laughs> you know, one of my very first, one of my very first New phrasing, York subway, phrasing. one of my very first New York subway experiences was actually like, so I don't remember if we were in Brooklyn or Manhattan, but we were getting on the train, and there was you know there was like. Like, that's not a full sex doll, but it's just like the lower half from the waist down, from like the hip, the waist down and the thighs up. You know what I mean? Just that bottom chunk, part. just a whole one of those <laughs> just sitting on the tracks. And I was confused because those are pretty expensive, I would assume, right? I mean, I've never bought one, but I would assume it it's not just your average, you know, it was, it was just sitting there in the middle of the tracks. I was like, is it going to get Are you sure over? it was that? It wasn't like, someone's torso it? that got no, shredded by the train? No, I took a picture with it. I took a <laughs> selfie with it. I, I looked very closely in that picture. That's one of those things shocked. that you see it, and you have to, like, mentally retrace, like, all right, how could that have gotten there? Yeah, yeah. so I saw that and before you I ever saw a rat in the subway. That's what in, I saw first. What? Oh. Didn't Trump... Oh, the rats didn't are everywhere. Looking. Didn't Trump give $10,000 to hey, someone? Hey, ancient Mew. Got that one too. That jumped so, on the, someone nice. jumped on the tracks. Someone fell in. An old person fell into the tracks and had a seizure. And then someone jumped into the track and like yeah, laid yeah, and on like held, held the them up against the fucking platform and let the train go over both of them. Holy I think shit. Trump gave that guy ten thousand mm. dollars. I that's think tight. that's like an old school like New York story. I was gonna yeah. say it's a very New York story, right there. Yeah. Everything about it is a New York story. Yeah, that's only in New York. People that's like old, no, no, but that, that's old school New York. If people, people saw that shit New today, they just shit. be like, oh, "By the way, what, what happened?" And New Yorkers are the one that'll jump on the tracks and are having a seizure. Like, not even they're just like, "Oh shit, I guess I have to do this." Like, well, well I, I saw a post well. that said. Um, People on the West Coast are nice, nice but not kind, and people on the East Coast are kind but not nice. That's a good one. One hundred percent accurate. Yeah, yeah. that's 100%. definitely that's definitely true. And like an example I saw in the thread was like, they someone will help you carry a stroller down the stairs without saying a single word to you or glancing at you, and yeah. they just go about their business. Yeah, there's no yeah. there's no need to there. You don't there's no need for an exchange of words. You're never gonna yeah. talk yeah. to this fucking person. Same thing again. happened with my grandma. Like when she came here to the U.S., she came a. Uh, couple of months after we came uh, around like 93 and uh, she did not speak a lick of English but she was able to be helped out by people who were you know just random strangers good Samaritans you know uh, to uh, get her uh, you know give her directions I, I hope that's still happening in New York I haven't checked I haven't seen like the other old ladies who go around like whether you know they get helped or not I hope it's still it going on though depends on the neighborhood you're in yeah, we were around. We were living around Foster Avenue at that time, which was kind of a dangerous neighborhood. But uh, 
Yeah, still. And that's the other thing. I don't know, like, is New York becoming... I mean, Jules, you are our man on the inside. So is New York becoming more dangerous right now? Or you know, I, really, think, uh... I think it's no. honestly... It's it's probably like the guardrails might be off in terms of like if you're bowling and you want the extra safeties, uh, like you might not have the same preventative measures from going into the gutters. But ultimately, if like you're street smart, you grew up in New York, like you're not going to have any problems. Right. I think yeah. people in New York are pretty sharp uh you know to have a healthy skepticism and otherwise if you bring good energy that's what people want right that's what people vibe with don't, don't flex just, your shit if, if you're dress walking looking around, as poor as possible just, yeah if you're don't don't around, flex your holographic first edition uh machamp you, everyone has a first flex edition your... machamp it was uh, <laughs> fucking that in the deck yeah but you know what they yeah. you know what you know everyone doesn't have uh psa 10 uh, well, that, but also a, a first edition Machamp uh, fourth print that was only available in Australia. Mm. Australia. Yeah, I don't know well. what any of that means. <laughs> well, well, okay, one of the things James wanted to talk about Pokemon, so I'm, I'm, I'm. We're, we're, we're oh, gonna, I just gonna, bought that card. I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna take like, it. Oh, 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 you want to? Oh, you want to flex <laughs> promos? You want to flex promos, dude? Okay, before we start uh, here, doing this, let me just say I have to head out. It was a pleasure yeah, being on here. I'm not saying this is a meme, but I'm being serious. Yeah, it's been. A little, a little long of a stream, but Thank it's fine. You, Jess. Yes. Thank you, Jess. Thank you so, so much fun. for coming in. Jessica. Oh, oh and by the way, nice. guys, hold on, hold on. I want to plug you. I want to plug Jessix. So, guys, go to the following place to get Jessix uh, information. One second over here. I thought that I had she it. She has front it of on me. her screen right there. She's Let's dying. zoom out. Oh, my yes. God. Yes, Jessix. Don't worry about me. I'll zoom out later. So, Jessix <laughs> TV, this is where you go to, but also you have a YouTube channel. And can you just tell us quickly what your YouTube channel is about? What kind of videos you put on there? You know. Wholesome Catholic stuff. girl stuff. Not quite. Oh. <laughs> well, here is no, here is the YouTube channel. And then my VOD stay up. That's pretty much it. I'm not like here, a YouTuber, no, you know. I just I'm a Twitch. I'm a Twitch. What's the word I'm looking for? What do you call those people? Defector. I'm a Twitch defector. So here, on follow YouTube. follow Jessix over here Good and uh, be sure to follow her on uh, on Twitter as well. Twitter.com slash Jessix TV. So Jessix, thank you so much for being here. No I problem. Really appreciate thank you it. for having me. This for having me. This wow. was a lot of fun. I enjoyed it. Okay, the bye best. chat. Bye everybody. Bye bye. Bye Jess. Nice to see you again. Goodbye. Bye. Well, actually so, I gotta cut out two boys and gals while the gal left. So uh, I see you. Uh, yeah. James, James is still, is still here. here. James is still here. James <laughs> <laughs> James is the queen of the hour. So. That's right, baby. Indeed. I'm the so dancing was... queen, bitch. So uh, so I'm actually going to bounce, too, because uh, my headphone batteries actually died, and I just have certain shit to do. So I'm just well, uh, going to Terrence, before, before you bounce, here is where people could follow Ultra you. Zoom. So you have <laughs> Sonic Night W 7 at wixsite.com. So go there, everybody, and also which portfolio. I don't think you use, right? See, that's just my portfolio. If you just want to follow me for shit, always just look up uh, the Terrence ninety four at Twitter or Instagram. The Terrence ninety four, and that's Guys, Terrence do... with one R and an E. Do that right it's a now. Hard R. <laughs> a hard R. <laughs> and I love your uh, I love your photo. This is like one of the ice Pokemon, right? Hold on, let's see where it is. Yeah, this one right right over here. So this is an ice Pokemon. The calm What's brain the... Pokemon. Exactly. Yes. And uh, yes, follow, right. follow him and also buy his stuff. You're still selling your stuff, right? On a uh, portfolio T public. I mean, it, it's more of a portfolio site, but I do have prints to buy. So pretty much whatever you see you like. Yeah. I mean, that, look, okay, if you want, Ter you can any of the, the art that Terrence has on Instagram. You could buy a print from him. I know you had a couple shirts you were doing. Um, and then Terrence also does commissions as well. Nice. And, there you know, I, I I can stand by Terrence's art, not just because he's my best friend, but also because I have a ton of it on my walls. So it's fantastic. Terrence, how much for a commission of me ripping James's head off of his body? And then just like <laughs> drinking You'll do the that blood. one for free. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I'll do that for free. <laughs> It'll be up later tonight. <laughs> <laughs> That's going to oh, be what Terrence jerks off to tonight. <laughs> <laughs> He's just going to put a nice big pair of titties on me. <laughs> <Right. laughs> 
All right, I'm gonna leave and throw up now. So <laughs> all right, man. Bye. Bye, Bye, buddy. Later, Gators. Good night. Take man. care. Goodbye. So this this card over here I really like too, because I know this is the Pokemon uh time right now. So you recognize this guy, right? Hopefully the green screen is not gonna be terrible. Tyranitar. Yeah. And what I love, and I find this a lot in Japanese art in general, is this um, combination of red and green. This is such a nice color combination. I mean, just take a look at this. And with the slight pink over here on this side, you see that. Like, I, I feel like I'm, I'm talking to Patrick Bateman describing the... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> yes, oh my God. You like the Pokemon oh theme song? Oh my God. <laughs> uh, I don't know. I mean... Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes, this one too. Have you guys seen, have you guys seen that fucking video Muck. where they do? Uh, they're doing the fucking. Um, All right, um, hold on. I'm, I'm gonna. Card scene. I'm gonna go get some cards. I'll be right back. For for yes. what? The, uh, for it's an American Psycho. They're doing the business card scene, yeah. but the guy just edited in fucking Pokemon cards instead. Oh yeah, I stopped. <laughs> That's an old one. And this one too. Look at the color combination between the slight yellow, orange, and purple. It's such yeah, it's a, a lot good of color compliment. Combo. It's complementary colors. Yeah. Like yellow, and, yellow, purple, red, green. Those are all like opposite each other on the color. I wheel. mean, like this one over here, it's all right, but it's not my favorite. And I don't know, like it's just regular, you know, like sky, ground. Love, if you're ever trying to sell off any of your collection, me, hit me or Matt up. <laughs> Maybe. I mean, I've got a lot of, uh, you know, I have this Mew card over here. This is, is this snow? It's not first, but it is a promo though. This one over here. Yeah. Well, this, you, uh, Beardson, you have a ton of those. The non -hollow. I've got. I've got a ton of Someone in the chat asked for a mill tank GF commission. <laughs> Seek help, sir. I just <laughs> I've been inspired. I'm getting business. No, cards don't seek now. help. Seek Terrence. Yeah, that's what I meant. <laughs> <laughs> seek help for finding someone to draw it, not like psychiatric help. Can't, can't it be both? Well, he can seek psychiatric <laughs> oh. help after Terrence. After, after, after you pay pay yeah, Terrence yeah, first yeah. and then go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, go and you see this card over here. You're one of the people who should go to therapy, maybe. <laughs> uh, this card this card is one of the kids wb promos i wonder if this makes it rare i don't know see it has the kids wb sign over here so i don't yeah, know yeah i mean the kids wb cards are uh, harder to find than you think they are how do i how do i take my background off so i could show these cards this is a it's like i've discovered a whole new underworld today i i knew nothing about pokemon before today oh man no you want to get into some fucking addictions man i'm always Ooh. down for addiction you well, like we'll playing drag you down with us baby yeah. Ooh, that laddie sex is nice yeah. La laddie of sex <laughs> we'll go back to that one yeah i'm, I'm looking for a laddie of sex right now <laughs> Oh, sir, What's I think up? the card is called Latios EX. No, I'm looking for Lat. Lat I'm looking for a lot of sex right now. Latio like sex. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I this, don't know uh, you... oh. oh, hold on. No, no, you got to turn off your virtual background. But, yeah, uh, how do I do that? <laughs> uh, you have to go into settings and turn off virtual background. And Love, by the way, like this comically zoomed in right now. It's this, fucking uh, hilarious. This, this nine tails over here was given to me, this exact card, by this kid named Lionel in Catholic school. And he was the same kid who before like said something bad about my mom. So I came up to him and I shoved his desk over. And that was a really proud moment for me and my friend <laughs> in the background. He gave me a thumbs up of approval for doing that. I was like, fuck yeah. You know, that was good. It felt good to stand up, to stand up for your principles. And I did get in trouble afterwards, of course, you know, uh, with the principal, but it was it was worth it. It was well worth it. You know? No, did you play any Pokemon growing up or did you kind of miss the boat on that a little bit? Being totally the missed the boat. Oh. Totally missed the boat. The only Pokemon I ever played was actually a Leaf Green for the Game Boy Advanced. That's a great my, one. My only Pokemon experience, and I fucking love that game. I think I played through that game like four times or something like that. All Dude, right. honestly, you should Love. play uh, uh, no, no, play to Emerald, guy. and you no, should check out uh, Emerald, <laughs> Heart Gold, Soul Silver, and then Black and White too, because I, I think those tend to be. I'd, especially... Honestly, I'd stream it if I could figure out a way to do it for sure. That's, it's that... pretty easy. They're pretty easy to emulate all of them. And I play. Um, I prefer playing the ROM hacks now, just because they they make the game more difficult, and they do some quality of life stuff, and let you get. You know all the Pokemon that were out at the time and whatnot. So, mm, yeah, no, that that shit blew my mind when I was a kid. It's like it's like a little kids RPG, and I was like, this is amazing. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I, was like, I was like, this is blowing my mind. And then I got <laughs> into Oblivion, and it all just. <laughs> oh man! Oblivion, though, I wasn't, holy fuck! I wasn't that impressed that with. Uh, 
I know with with Oblivion and before that with uh, what was the other uh, uh, Morrowind. Yeah, Morrowind. Like I don't know. For me, the Japanese graphics I like them a lot better. Just the way that they can do faces and even just like simple oh my icons. God. Oh like, yeah, no, of course yeah. it looks. It Those looks RPGs horrible. Those yeah. RPGs look god awful. They look yeah. god awful. But, but I started with Kotor, so I'm used to people having like a 2D face, yeah, yeah, like yeah. horribly yeah. distorted. Yeah. Dude, Kotor two, uh, one of my all time favorite. I I actually I had I, Kotor was my first RPG. I played it when I was like five or six, and I was like, this is like my favorite type of game. I had yeah. no idea there was a Kotor two until I was like 17. Jesus. And I only played Kotor 2 for the first time last fucking year. And what did you think? <laughs> it was great, right? <laughs> Arguably better than the first one. I was it definitely it's amazing. Is. I haven't played Kotor 2 yet. Apparently oh they're making a new one, and I don't know how it. that's going to Make go. sure with the restored content mod. Mm -hmm. Well, Noah, didn't you do a video when you were comparing the Star Wars games and the new ones were really crappy even though they look much better graphic-wise? Yeah. Like, I, I would honestly, like, even today, people say that, like, even the OG KOTOR, they're like, that doesn't hold up and shit. Oh, Maybe it it's does. just nostalgia for oh, me. I, I've no, literally, I've played up. through the first KOTOR, honestly, probably, like, every year since I first played it. Like, it's, I, I played them, the shit. I, love I played them for the first time, I don't know, maybe, like, 2016, 2017, and they held up perfectly for me. Yeah, I mean, it's turn-based, yeah. like, what? Yeah. What can they like? Yeah, <laughs> it did just works guys, the way it works. Like, did you guys play a mist back in the day? Yes, I've no. heard so much. I've never played it. It was a really creepy game. At least, like, I don't know, Beardson. You remember when you went down into this purple room and this music started up, and I was like, da 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 da. It was so fucking creepy. I mean, yeah, the whole, the whole atmosphere of that game was creepy because it's just like, really, like when I played it, I was like really young and. You know, you boot it up and you're like on this island and it's just like everything's so like lifelike looking at the time, at least. You know what I mean? Because it's all like yeah. painted and everything. And it's just like, I don't know, it was very bizarre. And then you're like investigating and solving like puzzles and this whole like little mystery starts to kind of unravel. And yeah, I don't know. It was it was it was great. But yeah, it was super creepy. Yeah. You guys Another ever play the uh, I have no mouth and I must scream game? Yes. That no, game but is crazy. Yeah, yeah, stories of one of my favorite short stories of all time. But yeah. if not, they made a game out of it. And I was like, and the game has the author. It has narrating. It's such for a good short yeah. story. Yeah. yeah. Did you play? Uh, you play Deus Ex, the original? Oh. Yeah. Have I played of Deus Ex? Come on, man. <laughs> <laughs> that, that is actually the Deus Ex franchise is like competing in my top three favorite franchises of all time. I actually got into it with uh, Human Revolution when I was like 10. I think mm. that came out when I was like 10 or 11. I remember wow. seeing the trailers and it was about all this like crazy transhumanist shit. And I was like, this looks insane. And so, then I played it and I was like, that was insane. So <laughs> I played the original, um, I think 2010, because uh, Human Revolution came out 2011. Yeah. And I remember being, Human Revolution was my most hyped game. And then, uh, you know, V was, of course, you know, worried about it because, you know, new, new devs and all that shit. And then somehow an early build of the game got leaked that I think was up to the first boss fight. Which was like mm -hmm. seven hours or so. That's or pretty far. Hours. Yeah, you only yeah. fight you fight Barrett a good decent way in. Yeah. yeah, and so that leaked online months before the game came out, and all of us were playing it on V, and every single person was like, "Holy shit, they actually fucking did it!" Like, yep, they lived up to the hype. Dude, yeah. my my experience with Deus Ex, how I got started to, I actually played Invisible War first. I got Invisible <laughs> War for Christmas, and That's I played it. Dude, I played it and I was like, this game's awesome. Like I can like kill people, like pick up bodies and stuff. Uh, then I was like, oh, there's another one. I'll, I'll go back and play the first one. And I played the first one. I was like, Invisible War was dog shit. Like what the <laughs> fuck was like, you know what I mean? Like, why was I enjoying that so much? Yeah. That was yeah. what was crazy to me was I played Human Revolution. Awesome. And I was like, that was awesome. And I played the original and I was like, that is dated as shit, but that is better. And that's crazy. Like Human yeah. Revolution, like honestly, like an 8.5, 9 out of 10. OG Deus Ex, 9.5 to a 10. Like, well, the, the problem with Perfect Human game. Revolution is the writing is shit. Exactly. Yeah. If the writing was good, it would have been better than the original. But like, it's just the writing and the original and the music and everything. It's just like, you know, 
it just ascends even if the gameplay is better in human revolution mm -hmm. yeah. you know i have i have a confession to make i have I never played deus ex now, i know I did we've play, been telling you to play it. now pills, i did play no here's what i want to do though i'm considering doing a live stream on maybe um uh, my channel or on uh, the um um the thing we use what is it called uh discord <laughs> what the fuck is wrong with me <laughs> yes yeah, so on the vtr discord guys go into the description of this youtube video and you will see the discord link go there i'm gonna paste it in the chat as well uh become members and patrons get access to the btr chat so they can type in the btr chat uh in here unlike all the plebs anyway uh and when if it anyone wants to join the mk ultra money uh discord I posted a link on it earlier on Twitter today, Hell which yeah. I'll keep up for like one more day, maybe. And uh, when it comes to uh, this game, what I want to do is I want to do a stream of me playing because I figure kill two birds with one stone, play the game, interact with people while playing the game, while discovering the magic that is Deus Ex. And it'll, from what I've been hearing, it's going to be a magical moment for me to experience this game. Dude, I replayed it, it February of last year, and i am just been like thinking, I'm like... I kind of want to replay it again. Yep. I would replay mm -hmm. it if I had a PC, like for sure. You but just, I, I have it in Steam, but I can't play it on... Lev, I gave you my whole Steam library. I know. Thank you, and I appreciate that. And I, and I have the game. I will play it as soon as possible. I just got a new computer right now, so I plan on playing the game. I plan on doing some drawing finally on this thing and uh, doing some VR drawing as well, but I just got to figure out the uh, mechanics there so I could see the, the Zoom chat at the same time. But anyway, this is our Discord. Look at this beautiful... This is done also by FODCORP. The Look at this beautiful FODCorp. spinning... Just for that, that was no, inspired it's funny because like you see the logo normally and it just looks be fine, but then when you love. see the gif of it, like yes. it looks so cool animated. Well, it's 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 inspired by Deus Ex. I was about so to say it has the Deus Ex feel to, be, to it. That was exactly it. So, yeah, it's like I heard the fucking Deus Ex theme in my in my head as soon as I saw it. <laughs> right, immediate association. <laughs> And that's it, actually how I'm starting my my dream videos with the fucking Deus Ex theme. That's gonna base. be what's playing over my initial <laughs> narration. Any, uh, Final Fantasy VI fans in the house? Yes, yeah. yes, absolutely. That's, no, that's the best one. Sorry, wait, I'm, okay, I'm wait, a wait, 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 like wait, 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 wait. To be clear, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on, hold on. Final Fantasy is that the one with Kefka? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, yes, yeah, that one that's is the best fucking final. I fantasy love, game. I love that scene right at the end. That tower that's made up Whoa. of all this garbage and metal, and you yeah. know, yeah, yeah, dude, they, they they knocked it out of the fucking park with that. I was tight, I was tight that they did like a fucking. I mean, I understand why they did it of uh, seven that they did a remake, but like mm. they should have done one of six. I would love if they do one of six. Yes. Yeah. I've and been told I, to play that game my entire life since I was 13 years old. And dude, I've you can, never you can gone play back it like on your phone. If you have an Android, just get a fucking emulator. You can play it I on mean, your phone. For don't, free. don't look at the screen it's right so now because this may be this may be a spoiler, but uh this is the uh tower over here. Yeah, yeah. And and again, like the colors, you know, they had a limited palette that they worked with, like they even had to mirror dude, the to the save the soundtrack memory. in this game is insane. Oh my god, it's like, so what amazing. They, what they managed to do with, with with how little they had was fucking wild. And I also love the fact that they brought back dinosaurs and you fought yeah, like yeah, yeah. these like the uh what was it? The uh Bra the Brancosaurus, which was like one of the strongest enemies in the entire game. And that is just, yeah. I don't know, it's just really amazing, like how evil that Brankosaurus looked too. You know, like, we think, uh, sorry, we think of them as like a plant eaters, but go on. No, so I like what they did with the combats is they went like more of like a, like a Chrono Trigger direction where like it wasn't just like, you know, push A to attack. Like there was like specific fucking character inputs that you had to do for the attack. You had timers. So if you like knew what you were doing and you moved quick, you could attack like two or three times before yeah. so like it incentivized it to be more of than just like you know kicking back on heroin and pressing a <laughs> and like actually being a fucking game exactly well chrono trigger i love that game as well and the thing that i yeah. love about that game is that like have you guys all pr played chrono trigger or... yeah chrono i've played chrono chrono halfway cross. through chrono it like cross. three times and never finished it what about you? No, have fucking you played, masterpiece uh, game. Have you played Chrono Trigger yet? Always been recommended to me. Never played it. I think is it if it's on Steam. I think the I shitty own versions it. on Steam. Yeah, I think I own that. I've never launched. Yeah, it. 
Yeah. It is it is a beautiful game. It's definitely worth uh, worth your time. But the yeah. thing about Chrono Trigger is that there is um, a level there where it's up in the sky. It's like the land of the uh, uh, land of the sky, like this kingdom called Zeal, where. Man, see, I don't even want to say it for, because you haven't played it yet, but I did want to say one bit just because I'm not going to reveal any of the plot. I'm not going to reveal anything of the plot, but I just want to say what these people live like. So they get technologically and magically to such an advanced state that they spend most of their time in the astral realm where they don't even bother. Like they live in the fucking sky and that's not even good enough for them. They have these motherfuckers. They have to sleep in bed all day. They just sleep in their beds and they just go off into their dreamscape, like their astral realm, magic-assisted dream worlds. And that's where they spend their time. So who even knows what the fuck they're doing, you know, in that dreams. But, you know, they're just sleeping there. That's all they're doing. So that's probably going to be the future, too. They're just probably going to be people who are just going to sleep all day and go into the ass. Which, it's not the worst thing, but at the same time, it's like, I think we're all from the astral realm. I think we're all from that whole realm I'm of from creativity my being... Tummy. Well, your mommy, and my daddy's ball sack. But your mommy's tummy and your daddy's ball sack were once in the astral realm too. So my point is, is that oh, gross. <laughs> <laughs> no, you can make anything happen in the astral realm. But the idea here is that it's like, I think that when we die, and I know that you know, uh, I know Jules, you disagree with me on what happens after you die, and that's absolutely fine. Uh, my my personal take is when we die, we go to so we go to the baby. Well, that's a part of it, sure. But another part of it would be maybe we go into the sun. And maybe the sun is like this giant spiritual uh, area. It's like a localized spirit cluster where we go in there and then we can experience a timeless land based on like the deeds that we did here on Earth. We would be rewarded or punished, you know, based on our own karma and get to experience certain things we didn't really get to experience on Earth for a certain amount of time. And then if we need more training, which I'm pretty sure all of us do, then we go back and we experience again. I believe this that's like... Story, yeah. you have this is that short story of the egg. This is no, that story of the egg. I don't know if you've ever read that, but it's like... What story? It's called The Egg. I'll find it for you. I'll, I'll, I'll send it mm -hmm. to you. But it's like literally what you just said, where it's like a... Like when uh, the, the, the main character dies, like he, he continues to like reincarnate until he's lived out like every possible human. Oh, life. wait, is that that movie with Jared Leto? No. That's Mr. Nobody. Yeah, yeah, yeah that Nobody. one. Yeah. Similar though. Similar concept. I think. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, but yeah, so it's because like basically like your your soul is basically like it, like uh, an infant of the like race of creatures that like it, like one of them is raising you right now and the way that you're being raised is by constantly living through like every possible iteration so you're you're hitler, like and, you were hitler and you were jesus and you're you and you're me and you're the crackhead asking you for the time that's about to rob you and you're the guy ignoring the crackhead yeah. asking you about for the time that's about to rob you well that, that seems more practical to me just because when it comes to certain people being born like without yeah by andrew, arms andrew or weir with, I'll, I'll, yep. I'll DM it to you. You can uh, you can post it in the Discord in case anybody else wants to. I, I, I would love I to take a look. I just believe in God. That's that's where I'm at. I hope I hope we all go to hell. I hope we all go to hell and the like, all of the Judeo Christian faiths or the Abrahamic faiths. Let's say because let's not leave out the the Muslims. But so <laughs> like God God is actually the devil and he's just trolling you by thinking there's a fucking concept of heaven. But everybody just dies and burns forever in hell. That's what I hope. <laughs> oh, oh man, that's such a that's a very like that. Gnostic way of looking at reality. Yeah, I, that, I just don't care. I like don't fucking let religion that. like I, I'm not like whatever like agnostic or yeah. fucking oh, like I don't get I just don't give a You're shit. I don't. I'm just yeah. No, I mean I mean <laughs> in, in in a sense yeah because like I just don't let it fucking like like enter like i don't let those thoughts even enter my mind for the most part i was just like what i don't care like i i don't care I my think rent, my rent, big fan whether i'm going to heaven or i'm going to hell my rent is still due next week and if i <laughs> and if i and if i die and if i die before i pay my rent my landlord is going to be sending an invoice to my fucking family well, I've always been a big fashion. fan of what marcus aurelius said whatever the uh the roman emperor where he was basically like look dude live a good life if there are just gods They'll be cool with that. If they were unjust gods, there's nothing you could do. No anymore. reason in trying to please them. Yeah, exactly. Basically. That's yeah. a great, that's a great fucking mentality. Mm. But what I do like about um, the uh, Christianity and just like that whole uh, 
that whole Abrahamic movement for all the problems that occurred is that it did kind of, and this was a point that was brought up by the distributors, and I kind of agree with it, that before with the pagan religions, is it was more of a might makes right type of deal with the gods, where it's like, you know, you could you, you would pray to the gods, and but if they want to do something differently, it's not a moral reasoning that would make, uh, you know, them do something. So there wouldn't be a universal norm for yeah. what is defined as good and evil. Mm. And no, yeah, I it's lean like, on... who sacrificed the best goat this week? Yeah, exactly. So that's why I definitely lean on that aspect of it being very important. But at the same time, I can't leave it to any, me personally speaking, I can't leave it to any uh, revelation that anybody has ever had, even if it's like an all-encompassing, you know, um, like if we're talking about the Torah or the Bible uh, or the Quran, if it's something that people would say, like, this encompasses so many different things that have occurred and it talks so much about human psychology and all of our struggles and it references things that happen later. It's like, sure, absolutely. But at the same time, I think that we human beings are at such a low level in comparison to what else may be out there that when it comes to revelations that we experience, I don't know where they come from. And I'm not sure that the people who received the revelations knew where they came from either. I mean, again, whether they're real or not, if they weren't real, then it's a whole other thing. But if they were real, if people did experience these is specific real. things, is this guy, exactly this guy, yeah. this guy in the chat is saying that I, um, I'm upset. I'm not upset, dude. I, I like it's fine. I'm upset. <laughs> he said, uh, you're mad, bro. <laughs> He's, I'm the Sorry, Coomer, yeah, you're I'm the Coomer meme. <laughs> <laughs> No, Yo, you have a blessed day, my man. <laughs> <laughs> that was a good one. Thanks. I needed that. The Coomer meme so, was good. That's yes. hysterical. We should have that guy on the show. We should have the original Coomer man, like the guy yeah, who yeah. was. <laughs> oh, that's that's <laughs> me. That's me right here. We have a bodybuilding competition that's just Coomers, and we can yeah. all just flex like our fucking... You use the, your primary <laughs> you uh, jerking yeah, you, you, fly, you flex arm. your jerk arm. You see who has the best one. <laughs> I mean, I mean, Beardson, look, I that know you tense. have the beard, but I don't get the soy boy vibe from you at fucking all. It just well, I doesn't appreciate work. That. I appreciate that. Most other people do. I don't know. I get it all the time. They're like, you're a, you're a fucking soy boy. And I'm like, I, well, like Beardson, they, you got to remember, people go after looks when they literally have nothing else to go at you for. That's true. That's true. I am too intelligent it, to for them to uh, disarm me with their wit, you know? Like the minute, like Which if you're way? not, people like, don't know what to say half the time. If you're not a nine or a ten, P and they people have no other ammo, they're immediately gonna go after your looks. So wait, you're saying I'm not a nine or a ten? Is that what you're telling me? <laughs> it's even in uh, my you're five experience. seven. Of course you're not. <laughs> I've always gotten people are like, they're like you, you fucking you, generic. ugly. They always go, you generic looking motherfucker. You look like anybody. And I'm like, you look like every other <laughs> fucking white hey, guy. Thank you. Yeah, I'm like, thanks, man. You really got me. You look like anybody. Ooh, well, so, sometimes you know I mean? it's like, just someone wanting to hurt your feelings is yeah. what hurts your feelings. It's not no. even that they said something that yeah. insightful or like close the, to home. The idea it's of being just disliked. Like, this mm -hmm. person. Oh, yeah wants to hurt my feelings that's it yeah well, the, that's, that's really yeah. what rubs you the wrong way it's the, the disrespect like you can't, of it yeah. if you if you want to achieve any level of fame whether it be you know 160,000 followers on fucking twitter or 200,000 subscribers on youtube or if you want to go to the big range of like being a fucking celebrity or being you know PewDiePie or shit like that. Like you're gonna get haters no matter what. Even like even someone as uh wholesome Yo, this guy, as this guy um, General Friend is funny, dude. What? This guy General Friend is funny. I like him. Who okay, who <laughs> yeah. is General Friend from? Is, in, is he from you Beardson or Noah? I have no idea, dude. No fucking so, clue, but tell us so, fans, so it's like... I'm assuming it's Beardson. <laughs> If you say why, why like as it has general friend, friend it, it's general, general friend, Beardson. tell us how you discovered BTR and don't forget to subscribe right now, bitch. Subscribe, everybody, fucking subscribe right subscribe, now. You I've little had it up. Have, uh, I've had since, it up to here. Since he's, at, to since here. he's asking, let's have a moment of uh, silence for George Floyd. <laughs> oh, I told the worst joke the today. Oh my god. Oh my god. Hold on. I have a more. Oh no. Oh no. 
So oh, no. hold on. So I'm okay. Hey, so okay. So it's a joke that I've heard a million times because like I remember going to Europe and going to France and seeing how amazing their subways were. And I went to London and they had amazing subways. And I was talking to my dad. It was I'm so going fresh. like, man, the subways are amazing in Europe. And he goes, yeah, well, that's the benefit of having your entire city bombed in World War II. And I was like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I was like right? He's like, because we did the same subways since like 1920 or something. It's, they're just or even earlier. Like there was shit that was up in like fucking like before the 1900s. So I so I was with someone uh, wasn't someone from work but it was uh, someone was visiting the office and he's wait like, just to be clear this partner. isn't this isn't gonna get the stream down the joke is it no okay no, okay of course not. okay okay Jesus. just 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 making sure I just told the joke no no, no, no I, th- joke. I thought the joke oh, oh that was the joke I thought that okay was now I'm telling you about my horrible time okay. <laughs> now I'm telling you, I thought you were leading into the joke. I Woo! thought that was like the pre-joke for okay. Woo! Okay, okay. Lev, you're just retarded. That's he was so just simple. like you're just he was retarded. just so focused on like, is this gonna get me banned? That he wasn't even listening to the joke itself. He was just like sweating bullets. He's like, oh man, I don't know like where this is going. See, that's the best part about doing a podcast and not a stream is that every time Jules says the gamer word on fucking MK Ultra Money, it's like, oh good, this is in audacity. Bleep. Cut it out. Dude, listen, I know how to do it. Watch. I could do it anywhere, but it doesn't matter. You just have to know exactly the the semantics and order of operations and then just use your deftness and read the room. Anyway. You just went black preacher on me, dude. You need to know the semantics and liberation of the Thank you, thank you, thank you. No, what let's about not a get preacher in semantics. blackface? Let's not, so hold on. So hold on. Holy shit. So, so. I'm on the subway leaving work and I'm with uh, so so one of someone very happy at the office. His partner was visiting because it was just like a nice place to spend time and, and he's like an opera singer and he has this beautiful voice and we're talking he's asking about the art show and I showed him a little bit and he's like complimenting me and he told me he was from Lebanon. And this was like at the beginning of the subway ride. And I was like, oh, my God, we had like this really sensitive moment. And he was telling me about how he spent time there, like helping his family rebuild because they had like the big explosion. And then it was like, you know, 20 minutes later or something, we're talking about the subways. And he was like, oh, they should really make a subway to go from the east side to the west side. And that's when I tell this horrible, like joke about not having your subways like blown. I was like oh that's the benefit of you know having your city blown up and then I was just like oh my god like what the hell is wrong with my timing and I just like <laughs> it, like immediately it came out of my mouth and I'm like are you like where is your fucking brain right now I you're was saying just we like, need like oh multiple we need a few more like, 9-11s <laughs> I was like oh my fucking god I was just, just to like, that is not even the score we need, a, we, we need a whole like, week of that shit it's like shark oh week oh my god <laughs> <laughs> uh, so anyway but no but no but he he knew he got and then like it was like and then we just like we maintained the back and forth and I really hope he's back in the office soon so I can just like make sure he's not like looking at me like it's like oh there's the he guy who break the rules <laughs> it's like <laughs> all right folks I never, have to get never. off because I've got some other obligations that I need to Jeff thank you so much for coming in and I am going to show your Twitter right now do you have anything else uh, yeah, that you would Twitter. like me to show just Twitter. okay I, I don't do any art or anything yeah, but you are you are a beautiful man. You are uh, living oh, art. He's just yeah. Albanian. Yeah, you are a piece of living <laughs> art. So, thank you so much, Jeff, for coming in. Thanks Jefferson, for me, guys. Jefferson yeah. Poland. This is how you will find him. And uh, I like your uh, Twitter uh, handle. It's Burlington Throat Fuckery. <laughs> thank you, man. I appreciate that. All right, so, folks. Have a good night. And, and if you enjoy Arsen, he uh, will be on the podcast quite a bit in season two. So nice. Yeah. And it's and on what the is, first Patreon episode. And what, and what is, is the first Patreon episode about? If you can clue people into <laughs> uh, it, so they the can. The first Patreon episode is about uh, <laughs> Arsene. We got a, we got a pretty wide spread, yo. We 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 it, talked about all the races on that. Yeah, home. it's it's Arsene oh. covering every single race and doing a ton of impressions, but making them gay and racist. Yeah. Interesting. Is that and is King, that the one I'm King, on? Am I on so, that one? So <laughs> yeah, I'm so glad I'm not on any of these. I said I was a potato <laughs> N word. That yeah, was so like that's the one, big that's reveal. something I had I was to like, cut oh, out. I'm a potato N word. 
and that's then something like, I had to cut James out. was, oh my goodness. Um, Yo, James, funny, uh, like, I expected that more from Arsene than you, but Jules is secretly the Olivia, basest person. No, here. I told that to Olivia and she laughed so hard. She called her whole family and told them and she like, <laughs> you can't stop telling everyone. She's like, Jules is the funniest thing ever. Has she She's never heard that phrase N-word. before? She says it all the time now. She just like, <laughs> she says it all the time. <laughs> Well, all right. Oh that's God, a great. That's a great on? place for me to exit. So have a good night, folks. I love you all. Have a good night. Thank you so much. And Stay by the way, touch. so so Jules, the the first Patreon episode is literally three kimchi, episodes. Kimchi. It's it's three episodes. I cut down from three hours to an hour and twenty minutes because there's just so much incoherent babble and us just being like too retarded to like even enjoy. So I'm like, fuck it. I'm just gonna you know cut because like. I cut two episodes. One was like 26 minutes. One was 20. And then like I had one more and I had time to edit. I'm like, all right, let me just edit one more before they get here. And then that one was like 35 minutes. And I'm like, I'm just combining the the core parts into one episode. And they all have the same energy because it's like you're on two of them. I'm on all of them. Our sends on all of them. And then it just it flows together so perfectly that it feels like it's one episode. So it's it's a it's a best of unreleased episodes, pretty much. Oh yeah. All right. Well, so, I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna hop off too with uh, with Arsene leaving. So I'll catch you guys later. All right. Good night, Matt. Matt nice where where can we find you? I want yeah, I want to show too, your stuff as well. So is there um, anything? I don't really have anything. To chill. Uh, it's basically just the podcast. That's that's the only internet involvement I really have, to be honest with you, because I work like a motherfucker. Yeah, you barely post on Twitter or yeah. Instagram. Usually, so, you only post on Twitter to complain about uh, some company or that, to retweet the the episode. That is usually what I do. So uh, it wouldn't be very enjoyable to people to follow. Well, either I mean, way, follow him like on to, Twitter. But I guarantee you, you won't like it. Oh yeah, you have to change it now from bad film cast to uh, MK Ultra Money in your bio. Yeah, I might just delete it entirely. <laughs> <laughs> Literally, the end of the first uh, free episode is Matt being like, "Really? That's what you're calling it now?" <laughs> <laughs> Which I think is the perfect way to end that episode. You know what's funny? So I'm trying. I'm trying to get on this guy's uh, uh, on this guy's uh, Pokemon stream that I like, and I gave him the name of our podcast, and I'm like, "Fuck, James changed the name," and I don't want to tell him that that's what it's called now. <laughs> There's no way he's gonna let me on anymore. MK Ultra Money's hot. That's hot. Exactly. Uh, that, it's yeah. works. Sick. that works. That And Fodcorp Cor- Fod Corp's <laughs> art is insane. It's so good. Oh, the art. No, the art is sick. It looks great. Uh, yeah, I do. It's like very it. slick. No, it's. Yeah. I think it's very slick, and it, and it harps on. It's like doesn't have this like over refinement culture feel to it. It feels. Like, like the crap. era that it's. It feels imitated. like a person made it because like now all this stuff it looks like. I could do it, right? Like, yeah. it looks like I could go in there and I just use the magic selection tool in Photoshop and voila, you get a perfect selection. Like, FODCORP stuff looks like, like, no computer algorithm made this. A it's person soul. made So much this. soul is Pure in. soul. Pure soul. And he's just, again, amazing. Dude kept calling me Commander with a K throughout our whole DMs. It was great. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, I'll, I'll cut you boys later. All right, good night, Matt. Take care, Matt. Love it. Nice you. Uh, we have a great comment over here from Buff. Uh, Beardson did work people take for granted nowadays. Real legend. So there you go, Beardson. Oh, Buff's cool. a Buff's a good man. He's a, he's know. been around here for a long time. I know we disagree when it comes to the Russian government, but uh, be that as it may, you know, I'm I'm not gonna hold that against the guy. And uh, I just want to say uh, I want to celebrate James today, James. Uh, we uh, found you. <laughs> we discovered Somehow, you under counter. that bus. <laughs> under that bus. Yes. Yeah, uh, I, I, I love that sketch, by the way, because it had a real Game of Thrones vibe. Like uh, when when the two uh, uh, when Sam. I love was that I can there. say found under that bus, and you immediately know. <laughs> yes, yes. Well, that lady that that was Sam's wife in the sketch. She looked so much to me, at least, like Sansa Stark from Game of Thrones. A little, yeah. Yeah. And, um, I don't know, just the whole thing, it had a medieval vibe to it. But anyway, James, you yeah. are a legend in the making. I mean, you already are a legend, but you are going to go incredibly far in Thank the you, streaming just because you have this energy about you that just, you know, it 
it unites everybody in merriment. And it is a very special quality that you possess. And I really appreciate us being able to get together here and uh, talk with you and uh, and do this. Thank you, man. And I appreciate so much having this platform to come on to every week and act like a retard, especially in this absence of uh, the podcast since it was on hiatus. So it was nice to have this as a, uh, not a substitute, but complimentary to it. And, uh, you know, to just meet awesome people like you and get to meet people like Noah and Jugs and uh, Geo and on a personal level, Charles and Afina and just so many great people uh, on here. It's just, I, I'm so blessed and happy to be here without sounding like a gamer word, a You're homosexual here. gamer word. And uh, before we go, are there any, uh, let's say, recommendations to uh, people who want to start doing these podcasts, you know, who are watching us right now? I mean, it's a very basic bitch question to ask, but it's no, like... No, no, my number one it. recommendation do is uh, do not start a podcast unless, uh, one, you have just two amazing people to start it with um, that you're really close with and have great chemistry. I mean, Matt is... Besides my parents and my uh, grandparents, Matt is, you know, my closest and favorite relative. And uh, Terrence is my best friend. And uh, they've also been friends for years now. And that's why <laughs> that's why we can do the podcast and have fans and, you know, have people like Martin in the chat and Christian, even if he's semi related to Matt. But uh, and uh, my other fr uh, another guy, James, I was in here earlier that uh, just, you know, love the, the pod so much because we just have. I think just great chemistry. And if uh, you like a bunch of retards getting drunk and talking about movies and Pokemon and, you know, whatever else and shit posting, then uh, you, you'll like us. And Absolutely. they're a lot more lively than uh, than they were on the stream. So, <laughs> they have, so they have guys, a, they have a lot of personality that really shines when it's the, the three of us together or the three of us with uh, our friends, Anthony or Steele. Make sure you subscribe to mk ultra money podcast i don't know why the fucking spotify link never shows up i know when i put it in the chat annoying. it sucks but post your patreon one more time for the people yes. to know this is where they will put their income once they become patrons of break the rules so you become patron of break the rules then you become patron of mk ultra money and That's it all right. it all works out we it need all, all out, the baby. patrons of, of break the rules to subscribe to mk ultra money and all the patrons of uh, mk ultra money to subscribe to break the rules Exacto mundo, Telemundo. Yeah, you gotta get that double dipping. Yeah, we need the double dip. And, and, uh, and also, I love that aesthetic right there. What? I love that aesthetic right there. Thank it's you. Beautiful. That's Fodcorp, Yeah, the baby. Fodcorp. Yeah, Dude, and, very, uh, very beautiful. He's, he's Russian, by the way, as well. That looks so, like uh, Reboot. That looks like yeah. Reboot a little bit. I like Reboot. That's a good, good, good series from Canada back in the day. They were the same ones who did uh, Beast Wars, if you guys remember Beast Wars. Mm. Oh, yeah. <laughs> No, I when, that, I was, uh, when I was telling yeah. Fodcorp what I wanted for the art, I was, like, mentioning Deus Ex. Like, the reason the globe was there, because I, I literally showed him the scene from the opening of Deus Ex with, the, you know, the hand in the globe and shit mm -hmm. like that. And uh, it just, it has such big, uh, you know, I was expecting more Matrix vibes when I was describing it. But then looking at the, I think pr probably the banner has a bit more Matrix vibes, but this... The cover art itself is like really well, it's very like like late late 90s aesthetic which yeah uh, that's what yeah. we were going for so people people Hell definitely yeah. uh, need, need more of that and uh beardson where can people find you my friend you are on twitter at cool hetero gamer so here is your twitter over here and yeah. you are also on d live beardson yeah. beardly I'm not really streaming there anymore. I've kind of bounced mm. out. I've been on uh, Trovo. I've been checking that out for the past mm, like, uh, month or so. It's like another shitty yeah. fucking streaming site that I'm probably going to get banned from in three months, you know? Did you get banned from DLive? <laughs> well, kind of, sort of. What happened? It, well, all right. <laughs> I didn't get banned. Like, I'm still there, but, yeah. like, they demonetized me. I made, a, I made a joke about, like, AOC or something, and they, like, came into my chat and they're like, uh, sorry, if you're going to talk about politics, uh, then you need to X tag your channel. I'm like, I'm not talking about politics. I made a, I made a fucking joke, like one joke. And they're like, oh, you're going to, we're going to X tag your channel. So I may have went on a rampage of. Wait, wait, wait. What is X tag? Like X tag. So basically it's like this like thing, like you X tag your channel and it's like, uh, I don't know. It's like a, like a, like a maturity filter sort of. Right. 
and uh, uh, they want you to do that, but you can't earn any, any donations while you're X tagged. Like you can, you just can't earn money at all. That's on the D Live. Yeah. Now, what about lemons? Can you earn lemons or no? Is that like the... no lemons. Yeah, yeah. You can't earn the lemons or the fucking the little ninja whatever. Yeah. What 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 a what, right. what a jip. That that fucking yeah. sucks. But yeah. uh, are there any? I think that Chris Tan T. Harris, friend of the show, Chris Tan, uh, he did a uh, stream, I believe, if I'm saying it correctly, on uh, Odyssey. I've heard so, of that. So Odyssey, we had the founder of Odyssey on, uh, and um, it's based on library, or library, I don't really know how to, uh, pre- uh, how to write that, but if you go to odyssey.com slash break the rules here, I'm going to post the Odyssey one as well, so you guys subscribe there. But uh, it automatically takes all of our content and puts it on Odyssey. So it's a good thing to have as a backup. But I think they may already start some streaming of their own. So I'm going to have to check in. But basically, we are out there right now trying to find what are the next things that are coming along that are going to be able to be a free speech platform for live streaming. Because, again, like uh, we want to take precautions. We want to spread out as much as possible. And uh, yeah. are there any ones that you have heard of just being in development stages right now? Um, no, I mean, not really. I mean, I, you know, like I said, I'm just, I've been using Trovo for a minute and I haven't had any troubles there. I mean, I'm not like that edgy of a guy, really. Everyone thinks I'm like this super edgy guy or whatever. I'm not really, I, you know, you know I play video games for a living. I've dude, just seen, but... I've been following you for a while. I've just seen you get your account boned a couple of times. I'm like, where'd it go? How many murder <laughs> friends have you bought now, Beardson? Well, okay, okay, maybe, maybe I'm a little bit of an edgy guy, but like on stream, though, <laughs> on stream, like I, I keep it pretty. I don't care about Twitter. It's whatever. I'm yeah. already on like a hundred accounts, whatever. Who cares? No, yeah, I've, I've seen you so. stream a few times, and you know, you weren't really edgy on stream. It's more of like when you get into it with fucking uh, girls and soy boys on Twitter. <laughs> yeah, that's all I remember is I just I'm like, oh, there he goes. He's feuding with an e girl. Oh, it's gone. <laughs> so here here yeah. is our odyssey side over here odyssey break the rules so guys follow us on odyssey as well and i will take a look at what happens we were speaking before with uh, jeremy kaufman who is the head of odyssey so yeah i don't know like see if you can get in touch and figure out maybe this could be a way out and this is like all on the blockchain i think so the videos never even go away you know they're always awesome. going to be there so yeah i'll definitely check it out that's awesome for sure but yeah, I mean, in the meantime, I'm on Trovo, which is yeah. what, trovo.live slash Beards and Beardly. So. All right, I'm going to put that in trovo.live slash Beards and Beardly. And by the way, guys, subscribe right now. I don't know what you're doing, why you're not subscribing, but you should subscribe. Because I'm we are the greatest, most. Uh, yeah, this is just an illusion that there is a background, you know, in James's apartment. It's all the latest the green CIA that- tech. That Jules is, uh, yeah, yeah, the CIA tech that Jules' girlfriend has uh, provided us with. So, exactly. Now it's I got be- It's called the agency. <laughs> it's called. They call it the agency. <laughs> all right, people that know the CIA, none of them call it the CIA. They all call it the agency, and they all train on the farm. I call it the League of Retarded Homosexuals. <laughs> is that like oh, the man. League of Nations? <laughs> is there any difference? I think it's the same. That's a working yeah. title. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. All right, here we go. Well, I hope to have some uh, UN people on too, but they're a little bit uh, skittish of coming on anything. Actually, like it would have to be somebody. Yeah, you that's can't have UN. me on an episode with the UN because I'm gonna fed post by accident, and then I'm just gonna get fucking. <laughs> yeah, but uh, okay. I'm trying to Beardson. Can you type it in the chat? Because I want to put it out there. I'm just having a hell of a time typing in Beards and Beardsley. So I may be typing something incorrectly here. So I don't just know, dude. The, the hype. Don't even worry about it, dude. I don't care. It's fine. Like, just uh, if, if you, follow, you follow me on Twitter, you'll find it, you know. Okay. Because, yes. like, they've been having a weird, like, issue with, like, hyperlinks and stuff, too. I've been having the same issue, so. Yeah, so, guys, follow it. follow Beardson on Cool Hetero Gamer. Here it is. And Noah. Follow Noah on uh, Noah's Hug Box. So I'm going to put that in as well. Wonderful live streamer, YouTuber. I don't know, like, uh, what? A, how would you want us to refer to you as? Your majesty? I, like, king. what's the... Uh, well, that's, that's the thing. I just call myself the king. That's part of my rebrand that I'm doing right now. My name will be changed very soon. I'm bringing uh, Hug Box. is just going to be the name of my gaming channel. I've mm. got a different name that I'm going to be adopting for what I'm changing my main channel into. That'll be very nice. We love a strong rebrand, baby. Hell I'm yeah. just, I'm, <laughs> I've wanted to rebrand for like two years and I'm like, all right, I'm just going deep with this one. This Dude, is going to be a good one. Dude, hit up FODCORP. Have them do your I'm art. I'm going to. 
Yeah. You, yes. Uh, yeah. Are you actually? <laughs> yeah, I, I, I am actually going to. Absolutely. Yes. Holy shit. I, want the, I, want the, I, want, I know who Jules, I want the profile did? pick by, and I know who I want the banner by, and I want the banner by Fodcorp. Oh yeah, my god. Just get on, get on uh, a call with Fodcorp. He he speaks a little in character when you're texting, but like I was de- calling him, it was like, oh, perfect, and he got exactly what I wanted. So this is amazing. J- Jules, do you see what we did? Like through Fodcorp, we're now making his career happen no, it's a, I don't it's a know. beautiful that's thing Corp, though i mean look, i lo- i like this i like that we were there first yeah i like that we were on the ground floor of the fod corp train but fod corp is like his own he's a unit he's yeah a unit, but also you, know? you guys got to give yourself credit because i found fod corp because of you noah found that's fod corp because of us well lev i mean it's i mean lev i i really i'm really like the sidekick here for the last couple of months here. So I think we really have to give our, give credit where credit's due here. And I, I want to tip my hat to Lev because I wouldn't have found Fod Corp if I wasn't following, uh, I think it was Confi. Right? Yeah, Confi oh, really? was the guy who oh, talked I about it. You were telling me like, I'm worried this Confi guy is going to get like kicked off of Twitter. And I was like, well, I, I think I just sort of autistically shadowed his Twitter. And I was just trying to get him to be like, pay attention to me and be positive and then somehow he brought me onto his uh podcast he was like fine oh you were on confot's pod he had a fan episode that's how much i simped for (laughs) confot okay (laughs) i simped for confot so much as lev's like i'm afraid this guy's gonna get kicked off of twitter man and i think there's like something to it and i I was like i don't remember you got it i was like so i was like I'm like comp. I'm like all in immediately. Like yeah. Lev just like I I don't remember me. Si- I don't I remember like, me saying that. Go. But uh, okay. I I don't remember. I was I, like, I, let's go. Okay. So I simp his I simp his account for like a year. He brings me on his episode at for the fan episode, and Fod Corp was there too. And Fod Corp had won an autism competition. Yes. And he DM'd both <laughs> of us. So Confot said, "Listen, it was almost like contingent." He was like, "Listen, I'm not even sure I want you on my show, but." If you want me to come on your show, you guys should hire Fodcorp. That's so funny. So Confot was the uh, was the original mastermind. Yeah, is Confot gone now? I do. I no, just he's still there. No, he's gone. But he, uh, oh, he ended he's up, getting uh, into fights yeah. with like everyone. That's yeah. what I saw. Is I was just like that was the last I left off. Yeah, like, I, not, I know Dasha of blocked fighting. him. Uh, Jack from the Perfume Nationalist, I think, had a falling out with him. I blocked uh, him, and I've known the guy for years. You blocked him? He was just picking fights with me. And I was like, dude, I've known you for like four years. Like we've been friends, we've talked, and like I was like, I'm just I'm just gonna block you so it's yeah. like it doesn't go into like a weird situation. Yeah. You know what I mean? It was like That's it's probably for the, best. For the best. I don't hold anything against the guy. I still love the guy to death, but yeah, yeah it's like yeah, I'm not dealing can with he that. still call can he still call you on the phone so it's like a public blocking or it's like no, he's actually eighty six. I mean he knows how to he knows how to reach out to me, you know. If he really needs to, but yeah, no. And guys, also for uh, also for Jules over here, we got Jules's Twitter and JulesPHamilton.com. If you want to keep in touch on all the latest Jules news and things that are going on in Jules land, Jules. I was talking about. I was talking about uh, w- with people in the office because I said I'm really into performance art, and they said, "Well, what kind of performance art are you into?" And I said, well, "I'm really interested in social media as this new plane." for like a neo street art, right? Because so many people spend times on their phone, right? Like social media kind of exists in the astral plane. So you can like do street art without doing any vandalism, like right on your social media. And there's a Dadaism component to it. So if you are familiar with Paul Feyerabend's Against Method, he says true science isn't about anarchy, it's about Dadaism. And if anyone's familiar with like Marcel Duchamp and Dadaism, he literally took a urinal that in a ju- from a junkyard and put it in the museum and said, I found this. Now this is art basically because I say so. And so that was this found art movement. So I'm very interested in social media performance art and how you can consider it like a neo street art with uh, like a deep uh, and meshing with Dadaism. And that's from the Paul Feyerabend tradition of against method science and also the Marcel Duchamp, like found art. Beautiful. And guys, go to uh, my YouTube channel as well. Love Polyakov. I have animations there. And also, let me just post over here only love. 
This was an animation that I did back back in the day. This in, is uh, before OnlyFans. Yeah, this is before OnlyFans. It is about a dictator and a rebel who um, uh, tries to assassinate him. So here is just some of the animation. Uh, so you guys see, because look, I rarely, I rarely plug my shit. And I know, I think, shockingly enough. Yes, and I think it's about time that I did a little bit of shit plugging. So here is the animation for Only Love. Here's this uh, chicken over here. It gets angry and it gets run over by a car. And let me, uh, let me. I honestly, forward. I forget to plug the Patreon on the podcast, on my own podcast, like all the time. <laughs> like I'm like editing all these episodes for season two. And I'm like, I did not chill the Patreon at all <laughs> on any of them. Here was a nightmare sequence with the uh, dictator. This is kind of spoiling things, but, uh, you know, we have these zombies over here. And this is a pretty big project. Like, I had a team of animators that I was working uh, on this with. And this is, like, back in, what was it, like, 2008? Something crazy like that. So I want to keep doing animations. Dude, and this looks way better this? than anything I've seen from SVA animation students. Well, again, this was like it's a incredible. team. This was a team project, and uh, you know, much respect. But still, to you were like what eighteen? Worked on it, yeah. And none of the people who worked on this were in SVA except for me. So I. Oh basically, well, that makes sense then. Yes, yeah, so I basically got. Uh, <laughs> I was like seventeen, I think. So let's go over here a little bit. Uh, da, 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 da. Uh, yeah, yeah. So there's like a really nice fighting scene over here, and again, this kind of spoils things. But uh, you know, Dick, uh, the generals over here, they get fried by the angel and they uh end up charging at him here's like the lightning bolts and uh this guy's running away and yeah, this, this is a press great. photographer yeah, this is crazy i was just yeah. through so, it myself i was like damn and look at this, yeah, this you one, have my to watch it. one of my favorite scenes this guy makes like a ford out of the guards and uses the guard as a periscope okay so i'm not gonna spoil anything else guys watch only love subscribe to me on youtube as well and also subscribe to me on uh twitter twitter.com slash lovepo let me load that up real quick for you and um i want to keep doing animations badly the thing is is that we got to grow right now we got to grow what we're doing with btr so that we are going to be able to get to the next level and create our own community of um creativity and entrepreneurship because I don't think that we're going to be able to rely on the powers that be right now to do it. I think that we can do it through a group effort. And there are people who are dissenters right now from the powers that be. Like there was that article that was criticizing uh, the uh, outing, the doxing of the guy from Slater Star Codex by the New York Times. And people got pissed off. People started unsubscribing uh, from the New York Times. So I do see that there being a shift away from people who are like, look, I consider myself to be liberal. And I think, you know, I'm mixed when it comes to different political opinions. Like, I try to make in my mind like a system that I see would be like the best out of the worst possible choices that we have available. But uh, at the end of the day, I am always going to be on the side of people who support the arts, who want to see things, you know, uh, being created that, you know, don't put any restriction on what exactly you're creating. I don't want there to be some kind of a board that you have to answer to that'll tell you yes or no on what you can uh, create. So I'm always going to be for that kind of stuff. That is the uh, creative spirit. And again, I don't mind working under certain limitations as well. I think certain limitations are good. They actually pump up the creativity. But in general, I just hate this cancel culture, nanny state, shithole mentality that a lot of people are in right now that are pretending to, you know, like certain things just because everybody else likes them. But really, everybody knows this bullshit. And I want to create the next renaissance. And thanks to all of your guys' help, this is definitely going to be done. I feel the will to power course through my fucking veins as i'm doing this thing with you and james happy oh. not birthday but happy sewing discourse day to the great james mk ultra money everybody subscribe to mk ultra money you can find it on the patreon you could find it on uh blah blah blah, blah, blah. Spotify. You spotify exactly shout out also to martin and christian for Hell sticking yeah. through the whole thing Hell yeah both patrons and friends. That is important to note that they're not just pay pigs. They are yes, friends. exactly. <laughs> and, and shout out to Beardson and Noah and Jules and everybody for being a great part of this. I love you all. You are you have infinite potential to grow, and uh, I believe that we're all going to grow together. Mwah! Take care, everybody. Bye bye. See you guys. Good night.
is 